Hello everybody and welcome to the Hardcore Iron Man, where we plan on keeping it that way. I'm Dirty Bob, and this is Iron Man. Starting off like everybody else, we're going to Tutorial Island, and uh, picking a name only reserved for absolute champions, Dirty Bobby. Now, this is something I and many people actually take for granted quite often. I start an account and uh, make myself look like a bot which is a huge oversight. Like, come on, make yourself look fancy, what are you doing? Get a little flavor in there, make it spicy. But uh, other than that, I'd say we've got ourselves one handsome looking fella. Now that we're looking fancy as can be, here's the game plan. So it's gonna be tutorial only Iron Man. Tutorial Island has a lot of things that you can get from it, and a lot of people don't really know that you can get all the way up to level 3 in any one of the skills that you're trying to train. So that's what we're gonna do. Cooking is next on this absolutely massive grind, and we're actually able to achieve it in half an inventory of shrimp. Now we're on to the two skills that don't really count as skills in any other game but this one. Fire making and wood cutting. Now I know you guys are probably going to be asking me, you just got three cooking, you're already maxed for your area, what are you doing with some bread? Combat training. This is when I had it in my head that I was going to be able to get as much bread as I could to be able to fight the rats. And it's totally not a bad plan, but uh, something gets in our way a little later and I'll show you guys in just a minute. But quick side note, level three cooking we burn like every single bread, come on. The next major challenge in our way is the mining grind, which quickly comes to a close because on our way to the mining grind, we start the smithing grind as well. And that's actually going to get us level three smithing in the bag before we move on to the next area. The next area is the combat arena. And I have to say this is the saddest 20 seconds of my life. The tutorial only account has failed. I cannot get level 3 before moving on, so we need to find something easier. Screw it. Let's go be a hardcore Iron Man. Also, I just want to point out, they really really tell you not to do this in a YouTube school, but I did it anyway. A damn near 3 minute intro. So I'm gonna go ahead and be starting off with fishing, pretty much like I do with every account that I have. And uh, this is just the easiest one you can do to uh, sit back and chill for about 30 minutes until you unlock your first teleport to Taverly. After I get a full inventory, I'm just going to go ahead and walk them all the way up to the Lumbridge Castle. And uh, we have free logs here, so you just go ahead, light a fire, and get to cooking. We got a full inventory of shrimp, and cooking them all down, that'll end up with six cooking. And... Also, from any of the logs that are left over here, we're going to be doing fire making as well, so just light them on fire, and that gets us all the way up to level 5. So after grinding for about an hour or two, we were able to get 15 fishing, which unlocks our first teleport of the account to Port Kazarad. And in addition, we got 16 fire making and 20 cooking too. So, clearly, as a level 3 hardcore Iron Man account, there's only one option for you to start your account off right, and that's to chance it in the stronghold of security. So I think this right here is when the account really sets in for you when you start it. I didn't even really think this was gonna be a chance or anything like that, but here we are making my butt pucker. I'd say this right here is probably the worst part of a brand new account or even a Iron Man account with limited teleports. No run energy. Okay, so we're making our way downtown. Walking fast, faces past, and we're homebound. So I had totally built myself up for this moment right here thinking this was gonna be the big one. Nope, easy. With the only real choice of boot in our inventory safe and sound, I say we can finally start this account off right. But instead of doing something smart like that, we're actually just going to blow all our money at the fishing trawler. In under 10 games, we've gotten two trawler pieces. Give me that hardcore spoon, everybody. But at the same time, we have no money. 
But hey, with all of the fish caught at the fishing trawler, we were able to pull out 27 cooking too. I just want to go ahead and take a second to appreciate the Easter event real quick. Now, Jagex does this for pretty much every holiday, and uh, no, this one doesn't necessarily have like must have collectibles like the birthday event outfit or you know it doesn't really get you a bunch of money like the christmas event but it is actually still a really fun event which you guys should probably give a try and also it gives you this really awesome easter basket and it makes you skip everywhere first quest on the hardcore and it's gonna be sheep shear we get a uh, crafting level out of it as well bringing us all the way up to four crafting. And here's what everyone's first quest pretty much should be. Cook's assistant in the bag. Bouncing around back and forth, we're actually starting up on the mining grind. And interrupted by our absolutely favorite quiz master. And because I'm an Iron Man now, I'm actually gonna choose the money. Grinding all the way down to 15 mining and we're actually able to start moving on to for rock for some iron ore. Freaking rats. Sorry to interrupt your regularly scheduled mining grind, but we just completed rune mysteries. And not only that, we got ourselves a beginner clue scroll. We picked up a full inventory of rune essence because we were on the way to Falador anyway. So I figured I'd make us a couple of uh, air runes. And honestly, air runes seem like a very, very easy grind that we might actually undertake. Here we go, one step casket, give me that spoon. But let's go ahead and open it up and see if we can't get anything important. We're looking for, well, law runes mainly. <laughs> Perfect. Unique on the very first casket. We seriously need to make a unique in runescape. It's called the Silver Spoon, and you can hang it in your house as long as you've gone under drop rate for whatever you're looking for. I'm sure someone can make that sound like a good idea in the comments. While we're out in Falador, we might as well buy ourselves a new pick to keep things going. The bronze pick doesn't exactly uh, help anything. Thinking real, real hard about actually doing some rune crafting, and we pulled out 21 mining. So totally sick of getting smacked around because I'm basically a skiller and the uh, skiller dream is all but died now because we're 10 attack, defense, and 10 strength with some cow hides in the bank too. Probably gonna be some crafting experience. Let's cut some trees behind Lumbridge to get 24 wood cutting and 10 fletching. Well, we're chopping so we might as well get to burning too. And up to 30 for willow logs always love when someone wants to come out of literally nowhere and help you skill by skilling on the trees that you're skilling on i mean honestly does anyone in this game know how to world hop but hey in the meantime we were actually able to get 23 fletching and we were also able to pull out 38 wood cutting during our fletching grind Moving on to bigger fish to fry, that's willow logs. And the fact that we just trained our combat level really helps around all of these dark wizards. With a long grind all but behind us, we've got enough logs now so that way we can get to 50 fire making. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Because at level 50 fire making, that unlocks every Iron Man's wet dream which is Winter Todd, the most overpowered Iron Man tool you can find. Now that Winter Todd is currently in the bag and all we have to do is worry about warm clothing, we're gonna start on working towards Tempros, the newest boss. It's kind of like a Winter Todd analog, but basically it's gonna be my food supply. And here we go, two very important levels coming in. 34, meaning we can actually wear the angler's outfit, and 35, meaning we can unlock Temporos. And our food supply, honestly, we may even be able to get some rune armor off of him too, so plus plus. After that, we gotta sell our haul of fish, of course, and uh, unlike the shrimp, which we absolutely should have sold, because I'm really not gonna be able to use shrimp for very long, 
or really at all, they're not useful to me right now. <laughs> but let's see how much money we can get for all the shrimp, or all the fish we got. Done and over selling everything and we're walking away with just a little bit over 2k. Not exactly a giant haul, but you know what, I'm proud of it. I mean, freak, it's hard to get money as an Iron Man. Uh, look at we got here. Jagex's new installment, that's Shooting Stars. They're not exactly lucrative for experience, but what we're looking for here is the Crush Stardust. It's actually pretty good for recoloring the uh, Prospector outfit, and you can also get a Celestial Ring that lets you get double ore whenever you're mining. And pulling in a 26 mining level at the exact same time, might as well go for it. Especially if it's right outside the bank. You guys probably could have guessed from the shooting star, but our next grind is actually going to be unlocking Mother Load Mine. It's uh, another one of those things like Temporos or Winter Todd. It's going to be supplying pretty much all of our ores, and it's the absolute easiest place to get coal in the entire game. After mining, of course, comes smithing, and uh, this is something we really need to get out of the way. It's uh, pretty necessary for us to create our own armor as an Iron Man, or at the very least, earn armor ourselves. And most of the time, that requires a weapon or some sort of armor that you can actually kill something with. So that's what we're working on. Also, we actually just had to smelt all this bronze before we could smelt any of the iron stuff that we just got. So we're working on our smithing level, which is 13 right now. We're working towards 15. To finally push us over that smithing edge, we had to smith a few things into bronze arrow tips, which got us all the way up to 15 smithing. Smelting all of the iron from our 30 mining grind, we are actually able to get all the way up to level 19 smithing. After getting everything all smelted up, it's time to smith them. And uh, I chose arrowhead tips, but uh, you probably could have done something like, I don't know, nails or something to get yourself uh, all the way up to 24 smithing. But other than that, I think I'll be able to use the ammunition that I have, and if I don't, oh well, maybe I'll sell it. There's one more overlooked early game necessity that you absolutely have to do, and that's getting Nine Slayer and Hunter for basically free at the Varrock Museum. So now, it's time to craft up all of these arrows to get 27 fletching to end it all off. And uh, truthfully, I just need some feathers. So we're going to be going on a chicken's killing spree very, very soon. And you'll probably see that in the next episode. Last time on Iron Man. We unlocked three very important Iron Man tools. And in this episode, we're going to use them. Making our way to the Temporos boat. I'm going to show you guys how to start Temporos with no supplies. You're going to go in and start looking at those boxes behind you. Grab all of that shit, as much as you can get. Drop the harpoon first, though. For some reason, that's the only one that they won't let you grab a bunch of. But uh, after that, straight up, just leave. Because uh, a new game starts every 30 seconds, and uh, you don't want to mess up your points. So with one small setback, just leave. It'll start over. Figured I'd show you guys the first of many fishing levels. And uh, just like last episode, there's a guy here where you can sell your fish to. And it's going to be a whole lot more convenient since it's right next to where we're actually getting the fish. They won't let you sell your bass, though, which is kind of weird to me because uh, swordfish is right there. And uh, if you guys think my cheapness ends when the first game started, hell no. Once these games are done, jack some hammers, jack some harpoons, literally anything. You got all the time in the world. Get it. A lot of you guys are probably like, you don't even need this shit, why are you even taking it? Well, I'll let my good friend Dave Chappelle explain. Why? Cause fuck em, that's why. Temporos 10 game check in, averaging about 3-4 to four points a game, 37 points in total. 50 fishing is complete. If we did math like a normal game, I could say I'm halfway there. And that makes our 25th Temporos kill. And we're also going to go ahead and check out all our rewards. We got 95, so mm, 
next time let's try to get over 100. 95 points and we're gonna go ahead and try our best to speed through all these rewards. Unfortunately, we didn't end up getting any good uniques, <laughs> just pages, but uh, we did get a couple of uh, feather drops that kept us from a chicken killing spree like I promised last episode. Mainly I'm actually here for spirit flakes if I wasn't worried about my food. We can get those spirit flakes to recolor the pet that we're on the hunt for, so let's hope for that one too. Also, all these caskets are going to end up being my bread and butter. You can really get rune items out of them too, so we'll see if we can get lucky there. Alright everybody, let's bust these caskets on open. We're hoping for rune items, you know, fingers crossed there. But uh, we didn't get any <laughs> rune items. But we did actually get a key tooth half, which is really, really nice. It's, well, it's not as nice as, you know, something useful, but it's a chance it's something else nice. <laughs> Hey, remember that guy I was telling you about that buys fish? Well, I'm selling him fish, and I'm actually gonna buy a house with it. <laughs> this economy, I tell ya. So I went ahead and sold all those fish, and I was like, okay, warm clothing. So in my head, I don't know why, the shanty pass has to sell warm clothing, right? The stuff for the desert? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not warm clothing at all. So I buy that, get the whole outfit. You know, good thing it's actually meant for a quest or something. And then I look up on the wiki and realize, it's not warm clothing, but on the wiki it actually shows me I already have warm clothing. So, uh, uh, believe it or not, our warm clothing is actually the Easter outfit. Yeah, the only useful thing I thought from that batch was this little basket, but no. Now we're ready for winter, Tad. Okay, scratch that previous statement. <laughs> we actually have to do X marks the spot which uh, is actually just an uh, introduction to s clue scrolls. It gives you a beginner clue scroll at the end, but most importantly, it lets you go all the way over to the Zaya continent. With X marks the spot over with, we've unlocked our trip to Zaya, and we actually get one hunter level because, you know, antique lamp. I cannot believe I walked all the way to Winter Todd and I didn't even buy a house first. It's so we can actually get some construction XP. And uh, you get a lot of construction XP at Wintertod. And in all reality, we totally should have done this before Temporos, but slipped my mind. <laughs> well, we're here and I'm gonna do some cooking. That escalated quickly. <laughs> we actually just cooked all of the food that we just got from Temporos to pull out 50 cooking. And yes, I was stalling. I'll go buy a house now. One more thing we absolutely have to get it out of the way before we start Winter Todd is Druidic Ritual. And we actually want to get herbs from Winter Todd. That's almost the whole reason we're going. So let's get it started. With one chunk of chicken, one big slab of beef, and then after that, we gotta go fight a bear. Figured I'd let you guys revel in my misery for just a little bit. It took me almost two whole minutes just to kill this damn bear. Yeah, I think we need to get our combat up. Well, lucky for us, this rat right next to the bear wasn't as strong as him. So we got all four things we need and we can complete the quest. Hey, I just want to stop for a sec and show you guys something that really, really cool happened to me. Someone took the time out of their day to actually say, hey, I like your videos. And honestly, that meant the world to me, so thanks. Oh, by the end of this video, there's actually been two people who have said, hey, nice video. So, you guys rock. Appreciate it. Okay, we're done screwing around. We're finally going to get this house. It's only a thousand gold, and you know what? Somebody actually pointed out to me, you should definitely do that daddy's home quest instead of just, you know, wasting your money. You get a free house. We're down here in the dungeon to supply this man with his tainted meats. It's not tainted meat. It's painted meat okay still gross though quest complete wow yay such a huge accomplishment boom wow <laughs> but that does actually get us the level three herb lore and we can start winter tide whenever we want now our third beginner casket of the account the second one was actually pretty cool i got a fire staff uh, it's not worth all that much but it's useful this one what are we hoping for well runes literally in general for magic training would be great I got a hat. Actually starting Winter Todd with all the build up, that's 51 fire making and 51 wood cutting in a couple of games after that. 
We're also coming in with our 20 game check in, and my god, does Winter Todd go by so fast. I mean, honestly, I just grind out 25 all in one session. Doesn't even take me a second thought. The nice thing about being an Iron Man is I'm here pretty much either way, so whatever we get, I'm happy. Money is perfect. And we even got a little uh, Dr. Jekyll event. But after that, you know, give me that tome, the axe, the pet, literally anything like that. And bam, got that tome on less than 25 boxes. So that's actually pretty awesome, which is going to be like super motivation to actually train any magic. No, it's not a pet, but I'd say that's actually a pretty decent haul from our first winter tide quick price check on our supplies that's 55 almost 56k on the small supplies and then for the tome of fire it actually comes out to 851k so yeah i'd say that's a pretty decent haul for our first run of supplies we find ourselves back at the fishing trawler because we didn't have full anglers for temperos last time and we're gonna fix that this time and not to mention you can upgrade it to spear anglers so we'll never even need ropes the first trawler catch in the bag and it only took like five or six games. Okay, this one actually took like a little bit longer than I wanted, but I got it. Okay, so we've actually spent a decent amount of time worrying about Tempros and Wintertad, so let's actually go do a little bit of that mining we talked about in the beginning of the episode. With our first couple of mining levels coming in, I have to say this is the absolute best place you can be in the whole game to not look at your screen. Here's something about Mother Load Mine that actually makes it a little bit of a blessing and a curse at the same time. The smallest amount of ore that you can get is coal, so that means no iron or anything under that. So, uh, steel's kind of hard to make, but coal is in a heavy abundance. Here we go, everybody, the next major mining level, and that's 41 for a rune pickaxe. And I happen to have enough money and know where one's at. We're here at my boy Noom Roth's axe shop, 32,000, you know, he sells it on the low. <laughs> All right, back to the old grind with 42 mining. So this was a total accident and I forgot to turn off my recorder, but it caught this. You what? <laughs> That's right, everybody. Level 42 rock golem pet. This is insane. I don't even have this on my main and it's almost level 90. So we got the mandatory questions. Give me a name down in the comments for this little rock guy. And what color are we going to choose? We got so many to choose from and uh, it's like every single ore. So you guys let me know. And then after that it's going to be our final mining level and we're going to call this place done for now. Okay well I logged back in and I decided to mine a couple more levels. So here they are. I went to Temporos and I spotted an absolute legend. He's rank 3 with 784 kills. We're working on the next round of Temporos to get 58 fishing and we can even start doing some barbarian fishing as well. We just got to 50kc and now we're going to open up a couple more caskets. Uh, it's actually better than it was last time. 104 this time. So let's see if we can get any luckier. Back at the spirit pool and we got points to spend. Uh, Funny enough, I forgot that my rock golem was with me, so I uh, hurried up and put him away real quick. It's just nicer when you get a pet appearing behind you, if it happens, you know. You know, fingers crossed. Uh, looking for a whole bunch more of these caskets, uh, any spirit flakes. The cooking level was actually really nice. We we're like 50-51 cooking from all that crap, so bring it on. Our unique luck at Temporos has stayed consistent with the pages, and I tell you what, as soon as I get that tome, it will be full. But other than that, I don't really think we got anything too important. A lot more feathers to stop the chicken death that I see in the future. But now we gotta open these caskets, and we just got a rune item. But that rune plate body is actually really important for us. We don't even have to do Dragon Slayer, which is awesome. And we even got a hard clue. Uh, I'm not even going to pretend that I'm able to do that right now. But we got a hard clue. Also, pretty much 257k in total from all of our supplies. Quick fletching level, since I have a whole bunch of feathers. Now we got ourselves here a perfectly placed cooking pot to get rid of all of our stuff. I don't really think we're gonna sell any of it because we're pretty good on money from any of the Wintertide drops. So we're gonna try to maximize our cooking gains. 
leaving us with 58 cookies. Hey, oh, there we go. Got a 69 on the chat. So we're back at Wintertide to keep things perfectly balanced with temper. But other than that, we were actually able to pull out 52 wood cutting and five construction, which is a nice thing to get without trying for. But seeing as 25 winter Todd kills come and go so quickly, we're left with 71 fire making and 42 fletching, and it's time to open up the next couple of caskets. All right, everybody, try number, well, I guess 50. <laughs> and our first batch didn't really hold anything that was useful, just some supplies. But next, we got some gloves, broom, a torch, a hat. Basically, anything that you could want or needed a part of this was a part of my collection today. Okay, that might be a little bit of an oversell, but you know what? I was happy about it. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. In today's episode, we're going to be taking our newbie account into a kind of newbie account. <laughs> so obviously we're going to be grinding out that agility and uh, basically it's because I hate walking around all of Gilnor. <laughs> so pretty much when you get to level 30 agility, your run energy basically doubles. Well, as far as like recharge rate goes at least. So that's what we did. We got 30 agility. So after a little bit of agility training, we just got to realize that running around the map isn't enough. So magic training is clearly the answer. In general, you can probably expect runes to be pretty expensive, but luckily enough, through all of our winter totting, we were actually able to buy damn near all of the runes that we need. But in general, these training locations aren't really the best training locations you could use or even for like money. I was just actually trying to get a one specific message that's a little easter egg. I'm not sure if you guys know about it, but if you're able to kill every single one of these guards when that wheelbarrow guy comes all the way around, he'll say something like, oh no, they're all dead. And that's really all I wanted. <laughs> but on that note, we were actually able to get 31 magic out of this whole adventure. And that will unlock us the Lumbridge Teleport. Which is actually pretty nice. It's kind of like what we were doing this whole thing for. After getting to 31 magic, you guys probably have a good grasp on what my attention span actually is before I move on to a new task. <laughs> so you could probably guess where we're going to take our ranged to. But before we do that, we got to stock up on like the best thing in the world. Ranged training is cheap. Honestly, like, I bought the entire store right here, and I'm not even balling like that. Now, this here is something I really should have been doing with the magic training, even though it might have been a little bit expensive. But I was using the defense style, so that way I can actually get a couple of defense levels. It's one of our other skills that's sorely lacking. And, I mean, to be honest, that's kind of how we don't die with defense so you know need it because i'm a hardcore <laughs> but captain obvious put back in his closet we're actually gonna pull out 31 range and you know 15 defense for anyone keeping track we got 16 defense and 29 hit points that's one lucky imp i'm working some very unstable herbs and that's one quest out of the way the restless ghost the Witch's Potion and Client of Karend has been completed. The Client of Karend is a really, really good quest. Not because it gives you a lot of rewards, not because the little bit of favor boost is kind of nice, but because it gives you two XP lands. And honestly, I'm willing to fight over this. I think this is how all of the quests should be set up, period. You should get a combat lamp or a skilling lamp when completing a quest depending on what that quest is about but that actually makes it possible for peers to get farther in the game get better equipment and be a viable choice for pretty much any combat bracket i believe this one little tweak could actually help the pvp problem hey that's just my two cents and yeah i used it on look of ng because that's the hardest one to gain favor for and you know what i'll fight for that too while we're on the topic of favor, 
we've got to get the Hosidious Vapor up to 5% so that way we can start digging out the Salt Pier. No, I didn't pronounce that right, but it's probably a made-up word anyway. That's a made-up word. Who was made up? After getting to 5% favor, we're gonna start digging for about an hour, and that should actually be able to get us all the way to 100% favor by making some super compost, or sulfurous compost. That's an hour later, and we're coming in with the bank check-in. We've got 1,322, which is pretty nice because we only needed 950. Also, during that little favor grind, we were able to get a couple of farming levels up to level 5. 17 defense on these imps and still no black bead, but I've got 6 yellow ones. Pulling in farming level 6 and 7, but that actually means that we've got enough favor from grinding up some sulfurous fertilizer. And that means we can actually start the thieving grind. And on this thieving grind, a lot of people might assume that I'm just in it for the money, but that's actually not me. I'm in it for the strange fruit. But we've actually got a long way to go before we get there, so of course we had to start off by stealing from just normal men. And then of course moving on to slightly bigger fish, the tea stall in Varak. But you know, after getting an entire inventory at the tea stall, you realize you don't need tea. <laughs> and then moving on to the Ardone Bakers. This is that point in the episode where I show a plugin you can't live without, and that's the dance party whenever you get a level. Meanwhile, in our dome, stealing from the bakers until we've got a high enough level to steal from that sweet, sweet fruit stall. And the best thing about those, it's unguarded, it's really good XP, you know, for my level at least. And, like I said earlier, an easier way to get around this damn place. So these strange fruits are going to be my type of stamina potion. For now. Locking in 32 thieving, and I know what you're thinking. Wait, your attention span. <laughs> well, don't you worry about that, because I'm a man on a mission today. We need at least 100 strange fruit before we're going anywhere. Okay, we don't really need it, but that's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and use these single-use potions, mostly, which honestly isn't entirely too useful, but it helps a little bit. And this is going to get our thieving a little bit higher, so we can make a little bit more money at the Agility Pyramid when we do it. Son of a bitch. You guys got it out of me. I really am into thieving for the money. Alright, 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 before you get ahead of yourself, there's a lot of things we gotta do before we can actually use this thing. 69, nice. <laughs> Unlocking 62 fishing and we can fish monkfish. And that's actually a little bit over 100 points that we're gonna cash in at the spirit pool. And um, our luck isn't necessarily the best luck around. Okay, it's shit, it's just absolute shit. We didn't get anything. <laughs> but these caskets are not bad either. Opening up a couple of caskets, I can always use the jewelry. The diamond rings especially. And we've actually got 233k from that little haul of useless shit. After a quick boning at Water Tide, we're gonna head on over to Winter Tide. See if our luck could be any better over here. Opening these up 25 at a time, just like Water Tide. And it looks like the first round is just about nothing, but I'll take that money. I need that money. So, open it up just a few more. And, uh, well, it looks like Winter Todd is basically gonna bone us too. Back in Lumbridge, aka Newbie Headquarters, where I like to call myself King, <laughs> I need about 200 cow hides to finish up a task for Charlie in Varrock, and uh, he wants me to make him some pants, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. 200 cow hides, not exactly necessary, but if you know anything about me, I like to go overboard, and it's always good to have some in the bank, because he's gonna make me do this task a lot. 23 crafting and we're cutting up all of our sapphires now so we can make rings of recoil. Here's your damn chaps, Charlie. And of course he gives us another clue. Let's see if all that cow killing was worth it. No. 
back on the old grind and this right here is hands down the best dialogue in the game i'm gonna do this quest every single time on every account no matter what i may even make a quest guide for this you know no the quest story no a reenactment <laughs> but all screwing around aside honestly this quest makes me laugh and you guys should do it Doric's quest done and over with, and we're heading back to Temporos because I felt really sad about that last attempt. Also, 63 cooking from the last haul of fish, and we're gonna go grab another haul of fish and see if we can't get a unique at this time. Ask and you shall deliver, but the thing is, why would we ever want this specific unique? It's the giant fish. It's something we can put in our house like a little trophy, but at the same time, the uselessness of this has no bounds. We're here for the pet, the tackle box, or the fishing barrel. Our caskets were actually pretty lucky this time. We basically got rings of recoil and rings of life as soon as I'm actually able to do some enchanting. And this time, we've got 307k, which is a little bit less than last time, but I'm actually a little bit happier with what we got. And we're pulling out 64, 65, and 66 cooking from all of those fish. We might honestly get 99 cooking before we get 99 fishing from, you know, Temporos. It took way too long, but I finally got enough beads to be able to finish the Imp Catcher quest, and that gets us our first amulet upgrade. Monk's friend, make sure to do this quest as at low a level woodcutting as you can get, unlike I did. Zeal cult, and I really should have done this before my thieving grind, but hey, who likes quests? The newest quest below Ice Mountain has this amazing Rocky montage? <laughs> You're just sitting here getting in shape, and you know, I had to include it in some way, because I know for a fact I'm going to be editing a whole bunch of different clips from this entire thing and putting them in different kind of strange position so I can't wait to see how that works out completing below ice mountain which is actually a very big free to play update and I can't wait to see what it's got in store if this quest was called the earnest chicken it'd be a lot different this is probably where most people got their first gems but I like to mine your mystery and it's actually not hard it's always the guy who's the biggest dick Spending a couple of hours in Motherload Mine to get us up to 51 mining before I was so rudely kidnapped. And uh, this is kind of the reason why you should read things and do what they say because I wasn't paying attention to this screen particularly and this is what happens. Now I was just thinking I was going to get teleported right back to my spot like what I feel like should happen but no, teleports me all the way to the top of the Yanil castle wall and right now I'm thinking I haven't even been to Yanil yet <laughs> so I'm looking around like well son of a this is literally so far away from Falador and I've got an entire inventory full of heavy shit and I gotta walk there oh my god you can't even put it in the bank <laughs> and in the mines of Camdozel you'll find a fancy little mining area of course <laughs> A cute little fishing spot, and a somewhat deadly new rune crafting meta. If they really just let it be that way. Uh, what I'm talking about is actually tradable chaos mind and body cores. And honestly, we could even go a step further and make it for like mud rooms in the swamp or uh, lava rooms in Karanja. But that's beside the point because today we're gonna start off with mining. And uh, you might have also noticed that being a little bit of a trend this episode. And today I'm going to go ahead and try a new thing here. Uh, you can see the mining levels racking up at the bottom. But this is where we got our mining levels. And I figured it'd be a little bit easier to just show these off like this. Since, you know, fireworks going off isn't necessarily the most interesting thing we can do in an episode. Plus, hopefully it'll uh, help to keep a cohesive story too. But... Why are we here? <laughs> well, personally, I want to get my mining level up, like so, and explore the new area. I'm not exactly a completionist on this account, but some habits do die hard. 
So I decided to AFK here for a day or two and see exactly how far this place can really take us. So we're here for the Bear Night Deposits. And uh, there's a couple of things that you can get for like the museum, but there's two items in particular that I am here for. And that's the Bear Knight Mace Head, and we're also looking for the Encamado Hammer, which is basically, you know, a Rune Scimitar equivalent when we get the Bear Knight Mace, and a wieldable hammer for smithing and mother love mine and anything else like that. 26 smithing in the bag, and you know I can't go without fireworks for too long. But here's actually the rates of anything that we can get out of the Bear Knight deposits. And no, they don't actually have the statistics up yet, but we can glean a couple of things from the wiki, but it doesn't help us too much. I'd say it's probably between 1 in 100 and uh, 1 in 1,000. <laughs> that's a pretty damn big range, but that's the orange rare bracket. So uh, I'm actually going to stay here for a little while and see if I can't end up getting all of the things and get our first green for the collection log. Right before we do that, we're going to activate a luck boost. And honestly, I would kill for this to be a feature in Motherload Mine for Nuggets. Come see everybody, the grand spectacle of Baronite breaking. <laughs> We're going to be uh, smashing until we get everything that we came here for, hopefully completing the collection log today. And go ahead, leave down in the comments below what you think is the most and least common thing in the collection. Go ahead and leave in the comments below how your luck was if you've done this. Or also, what do you even think about the Baronite Mace? And with that, everybody, it brings us to a close. We finally got the telescope, and let's see who the winner is of this mini competition I just made up in my head. <laughs> We've got the Baronite Head and the Ancient Ledger tied at seven apiece. In second place, we have the Ancient Carcinet at four. And then for last place, we have a tie between the Ancient Astroscope and the Ancient Treatise. But the Astroscope definitely took us the longest. We sure can't forget about any of those smithing levels we just got mining deposits. All of that mining being quite the grind. We did get a bonus out of it though. We've actually activated every single one of the bonuses in Cam Dazal in just enough time to do some fishing. And really I don't know what to say about this. This is like second inventory maybe. So lucky. We've got the mace handle. I still actually had a decent amount of shards left over, so definitely gotta go to the vault with those. And I mean, it's a cute little mini game, and I could use some supplies on pretty much everything, but this mini game is a little bit harder than I expected. <laughs> okay, okay. I got in, I got out, I grabbed the biggest box I could find all the way in the back. Let's see if it's worth it. Hopefully I can make up for last time, but you know, I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> nope. Well, let's go ahead and see the best case scenarios. And honestly, everything on this table isn't really that appealing. It really feels like it should have gone up to at least rune. Now I got me a hammer that needs some fixing. Mr. Oregano. Actually, three. And there goes most of my shards. Now it's time to turn in all of the ancient things we found in the mine. Too bad we can't turn the heads in for some kudos, but oh well. That brings us up to 33 kudos and apparently an absolutely piss poor amount of money for time spent getting these artifacts. This is why art gets sold on the black market. While I'm outside of my cave, it's time to stock up with one Mithril Scimitar. One pair of mithril and adamant plate legs, just to stock up for later. One mithril plate body. And instead of listening to my janky ass voice, I hope you guys enjoy this little montage.
<laughs> Here we go, everybody. We finally did it. We've got our hands on the Baronite handle. Just to get it, we had to kill 225 flawed golems, 329 mind golems, 61 body, and 21 chaos. And the loot tracker even says a little bit over 400k worth of loot. It's time to do it, everybody. The reason why we came here today, let's make the Baronite Mace. For 1,500 shards, it's really not that bad. But when you try to sell it to him, he only wants to take it for like 100, which is like, no, no, that's not worth it. And here it is, everybody. We uh, can't actually equip it just yet, but that's something I plan on taking care of this episode even. Let's take a quick look at the collection log, and uh, that green looks so, so nice. And overall, I'd say Camdozel was pretty good. If it wasn't only free to play, or if they chose to expand it in like several other golems, or maybe different mini games to play instead of the vault, this place could be really, really good. And maybe even have an area locked Iron Man for it, too. Overall, I'd say I'd give this place about an 8 out of 10, because that's a just about where we're at in the episode too. So, since we were mining, I figured it might be a good idea to mine a little bit more. <laughs> but really, I'm here to unlock a couple of things first. Uh, that being the prospector's outfit. Second, also being access to the top level of the motherload mine. And if I can swing it, I'm gonna try to get a bigger coal bag, but uh, that's a little bit of a grind. 57 to 66 mining and it's actually time to buy the full Proctospector's outfit. I'll be coming back later for a few things in this store, but that's only after we get a bigger expansion for our gold bag. Alrighty, time to throw these on and see that sexy man chest. Oh yeah, that's good. And of course we gotta pay respects to the smithing levels that Motherload Mine has brought us. That is 33 all the way to 37 smithing. And you know, I gotta say, just fix the wheel. No one ever wants to fix the wheel. And it's really, really easy. Especially if you can't wield your pickaxe, just wield the Imikando hammer. With our brand new outfit, it's time to take on the world. And by the world, I mean the mining guild right next to Motherload Mine. And look out for 69. Nice. With another 70 and 71 mining in the bag, I want to go ahead and stop and say, Aw, thanks so much, Hirun. I really love it when you guys say, hey, appreciate you, keep it up, anything like that. You guys are awesome. That's 72 mining in the bag, and I just want to say, I really love seeing the skilling areas like this. Super populated and all active. You guys might have noticed a few things stacking up in our inventory, and that's actually unidentified minerals. Uh, these things build up when you mine any rock in the mining guild, and you can actually use them to buy the mining gloves. There are actually three tiers of mining gloves, and you gotta buy the first two tiers and then combine them to get the third tier, and that's what we're gonna do. It takes about 240 unidentified minerals to do it, so we're already halfway there. Knocking out a couple more mining levels. Uh, this is actually a several day grind, but you know, uh, it gets a little shorter for you guys at home. As quick as it started, it's now done, and we gotta get us some mining gloves. It's 60 shards for the basic gloves, and then it's gonna be 120 for the tier up. Afterwards, it's gonna cost us 60 more just to combine them. Kind of a ripoff, but don't ask me. There we go, let's smash these bad boys together, and you might be wondering what these gloves even do. <laughs> well, they give you a chance of whatever ore you're mining to not deplete, and I'll go ahead and put up what the odds are for the different ores while you're mining, and of course, these gloves help you stay fresh as hell. Back at the motherload mine, but only for two levels downstairs, because we're gonna fix that problem right now. We've collected a hundred nuggets for the brand new level of motherload mine. That's actually 281 total since we uh, got the full prospector's outfit on the bottom floor too. 
So now that technically means only 400 more nuggets to go. The first level on the top of Motherload Mine, and uh, I'm bored, let's do something else. I always thought this maze was hilarious. You can get it done in like one or two clicks. Here's the quest everybody does first if you do not savor the early game. But it is also a big step forward for our attack and strength at the moment. Bringing us all the way up to 45 strength and 36 attack. Starting Tree Gnome Village and uh... <laughs> oh wow you don't even have to you know fight this guy. This fight went ahead and started off pretty well and I wanted to see if I could do it with just melee. But uh, I brought the bow gear just in case. And it's actually a really good thing that I did. The funniest thing about this clip right here is it's over a period of I think 15 minutes. <laughs> it's not a good clean kill. With Tree Gnome Village done and over with, we have Spirit Tree access, which is really, really useful and I don't use it enough. But we also have enough for the Bear Knight Mace that we just earned today. I needed a loaf of bread for this quest, and I was so close, so I figured why not. You know, walking over this freaking mountain really makes me want to get myself a mithril grapple. And I heard that it's actually going to be able to be put in the bolt pouch, so you know, plus plus might actually carry one around this time. Merlin's crystal done and over with, and you only get quest points, which is kind of useless. Well, I got about three quests done, and I'm out of strange fruit, so I think that means we need to steal a whole lot more. But also, our run energy is shit, so we need to fix that too. These early agility levels go by so quickly, <laughs> and that's 50 agility. We're able to move on to the Falador course, and if we get 50 thieving, we can start working on our rogue's outfit. What is up everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode. Last time we unlocked most of Motherload Mine and right here I'm going to get myself a larger coal bag too. With only two unlocks left over, that's the viable gem and coal bags, but we'll get those some other time. That's 81 mining and I think we should do something more interesting. Time to runecraft! But before I go, I actually had some bones left over in my inventory, so that got us a couple of levels pretty quick, all the way up to 24. So, rune crafting. The plan here is I got a couple of golem cores, a uh, 58 mind and 11 body, and I kinda wanna see how far all of these mind cores are gonna take us, cause we're only level two rune crafting right now. So let's go. Approaching the altar as a level 2 rune crafter, we're gonna get ourselves 276 mind runes and all the way up to level 12 rune crafting. With a whole nother inventory and four more, we've got up to level 17 rune crafting from just golem cores. And it's also a good excuse to get up to level 20 rune crafting, just so we can use the body cores. 11 body cores, level 21, and 110 body runes. Real quick beginner casket just to see if we got anything. And as usual, it's useless. So Motherload Mine and Winter Todd give us a lot of gems, and I figure it's time to cut some stuff. Progressing through the levels so quickly by just cutting gems 26, 31, 33, and now it's time for the rubies. Alright. Oh, <laughs> how close are we? Wow. We were literally just a few experience off from cutting our rubies, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of smithing here. I can always use some rings of ring coil, you know? And that's 34 crafting, I can finally cut those rubies. We got an easy casket. Wait, what gives? Oh, can't open it in your POA. We got an easy casket, and it's useless. This here being something I've never really had to worry about before, but as an Iron Man, 
you actually need to get the talismans to be able to runecraft. You can't just buy it at the GE, go figure. <laughs> so we're going to kill a couple of wizards until we have all the required talismans from these guys. Just because it's nice and easy. Something that uh, won't take forever. And here we go with another defense level. That's really why I hate combat levels. They come up and go just in a flash. 33 defense. Dang it, stick around for a second. Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. Okay, we got our talismans that we needed. We can get out of here. I already got the other two. Two rune crafting coming in real quick. So I was just uh, trying to do some fire runes and a meteor was right here, just ready for the mining. So I figured might as well. And this is like the best way you can do meteors, just find them randomly. But honestly, RuneScape is just so big, I feel like at least two, maybe three meteors should drop at a time. It just seems like it'd be a little bit easier, you know? Like, per world. 23 and 24? Nope, that's right, I know how to count. As you guys can probably already tell, we're gonna be bouncing back and forth between different things. Pretty much just anything that pops in my head. And uh, that just so happens to be 150 Temper Ross kills. Here we are, back at the spirit pool with 213 points to turn in. You could also call this the source of my high level cooking skill. <laughs> and there's also another thing I'm building up, and I didn't even realize it, but you guys probably already did. It's the seaweed. And we're going to be able to blow so much glass with that. And, you know, realizing that if you didn't really play RuneScape and you heard that sentence, you'd probably be like, WTF? <laughs> but I don't know if you guys saw it, but we just got that Tome of Water. I might have been a little late on the announcement, but, you know, I had to go along with the joke. Let's go ahead and check out the loot tab. It's 1.1 mil with a tome of water, and we also got two bottom half of a key. We already have the top half, so we gotta go open a couple of crystal key chests. Well, not the crystal ones, the normal ones. But before we get out of here, we need an upgrade. <laughs> That's right, dingy green does not suit us any longer, so we're going for blue and white. <laughs> Unlocking the spirit angler's outfit, we no longer actually have to use a rope in this minigame anymore. And uh, wouldn't it be cool if you didn't have to use a rope for like quests or if it counted for going into caves and dungeons and stuff? And it also fits in the uh, tackle box so it only takes up one inventory space anyway. But you know, maybe here's another cool idea. You're able to uh, recolor the Heron pet with spirit flakes, right? But there's nothing you can do to the Tiny Tempor. So what if you could use a potion on Tiny Tempor and then you'd actually be able to recolor it to whatever the potion's color is. 35 crafting and I still haven't cut my dang rubies. Okay, there we go. And it's 36 crafting too. Medium casket, don't fail me. Nope. You did. We got two keys, and in this chest you always get a dragon stone, which is one amulet of glory and one combat bracelet, but those are actually going to come in real handy for our stats in combat, and if we can get one more, it's a ring of wealth. And plus the glory and ring of wealth combo actually helps us get better drop chances in the future for certain monsters that we kill. 67, 68. 69 nice 70 yeah i really just walked all the way up there just to walk all the way back down to get some fruit but that's 47 thieving you know stealing fruits hard work it gets you all the way up to level 50 thieving and now we can go do the rogues den because we actually just got 50 agility in the last episode too but we're done thieving for now and i figured i'd work on farming and some hosea's favor
that's 1,127 buckets combined to get us all the way up to level 16 farming. And now it's time to turn all this in. Time to cash in the fertilizer, and fortunately they only need 817 buckets. I don't really know what I'm going to do the rest, the rest of it, but oh well. And there you have it, folks. Oh, sis, sis, wow. Nah, screw it. I'm going to leave that in. I have to take like five takes anyway. That's Hosidia's favor, everybody. With a little peek behind the camera of my terrible speech patterns, we've got 150 winner Todd. And previously, we only had 75 kills. So it's time to open up a whole bunch of caskets and see if we can't get anything good from it. So we're looking for the pyromancer boots and the pyromancer legs. We could also do for a dragon axe or a phoenix if the game wants to be nice. My thinking behind this was I just got, ooh, oh, no, nope, gloves. I just got 150 KC from Temporos, so I figured why don't we keep them uh, the same. Hey, there we go. There's um, pyromancer robes. So we could finally stop looking ridiculous when we do Winter Todd. So after we open up all these, we'll probably go do Temporos just to, uh, you know, get up on the uh, levels. Put it up to 200 each before the end of the episode, I hope. Now, I'm not reacting too much to any of the... Ooh, I, I, you know what? Never mind. There's some boots. I really, really needed that. That's everything but the Phoenix and the Axe. But uh, as I was saying, I'm not really reacting too much to what I'm getting out of these because everything is useful that we get out of these here. So... Honestly, you're probably going to end up doing this well past 99 if you're an Iron Man. I've also been curious to see exactly how many pages I could get before <laughs> getting to level 50 magic. Just out of curiosity, I'll show you guys what the charges are at the end. And here's the last few caskets. Can we get a phoenix, please? I don't think so. <laughs> but what we have for charges in the fire tome would be 3740 cut a couple gems 37 also honor this golden rule while you play runescape it just in case you don't know don't make me tap the sign Quicker than a snicker, we got 200 Winter Todd kill count, and we're gonna go ahead and open up 50 more caskets, and then after that, it's 50 for Temporos. Let's go ahead and uh, blow through a couple of caskets. Uh, we're basically just looking for the Phoenix and the Dragon uh, pickaxe. <laughs> okay, okay, there we go. Some of y'all might end up hating me for saying this, but uh. I literally get the Phoenix on every single account I've ever played. I kind of expected it at this point. <laughs> Moving on to the rest of the caskets like anything could really top that. <laughs> but we're going to pile up a couple of supplies and uh, before we actually wanted the Dragon Axe, not Dragon Pickaxe. Couple more caskets to go and looks like, oh okay, we actually got another hood. I keep them until 3, so that way we can uh, get seeds instead of the pieces. I know you can get pages instead, but I don't really need pages. But we've got 4,660 charges, speaking of pages anyway. Am I the only uh, weird one that sings that whenever they get on the carpet? Yeah, okay, I figured. <laughs> Time to grab a couple of hunter supplies, and for that reason, we're actually just going to be trying to get the barbed tail harpoon. It won't blow away when we do Temporos, and we actually just got the spirit angler's outfit, so we don't have to bring a rope, we don't have to bring a harpoon, and we have the Imikando hammer, so we don't even have to bring a hammer either. None of those things will blow away. So we're working on the harpoon. Am I lucky? Am I lucky? Am I lucky? Stale baguette? Nope, it was cabbage. The first of many hunter levels to come. All those early hunter levels really do go by quick and we're up to 20 hunter. That means we can place two traps at once, which makes this way, way more efficient when catching birds. Might even stop catching the butterflies.
<laughs> Here we go, everybody. Target acquired, and we're on our way to catch a barbed tail kebit. And of course, we're gonna find these bad boys in the jungle. And let's see if we can get first time lucky. I don't actually have any bait, but the wiki kinda said you don't need it. And you know what? I'm gonna go with that and see if it works. Okay, okay, first time lucky? No. Going for the second. Yeah, if this doesn't end up working too well, maybe I will end up getting some bait. Can I make a second one too? No. No, it doesn't look like it. Yep. One at a time. Even though I've unlocked two traps. Oh, shoot! Okay, okay, man. That was actually a whole lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Here we go. And now, it's on to Temporos. Quick show off of the gear setup. Hey, I got a personal best for, for points. You don't want to get a personal best for time. It's the only boss you want that for. <laughs> and of course, that brings us all the way up to 200 with 222 points in total. All right, let's cash in a couple of points. And oh, right off the back, it looks like we're getting another Tome of Water. Number two for this episode even. <laughs> We're racking up the planks as well. That's pretty much going to take us all the way to 99 construction if we can't help it. And look at that, guys. A fish barrel, too. That's one of the most useful uniques you can actually get at Temporos. If we can get the tackle box, that'll just be mm, chef's kiss. Just a few more fish in the sea, and it's time for a price check. What am I thinking? You gotta open up these caskets first. And, uh, you know, the bars always come in handy. Ooh, four rune kite shields. I might even get full rune from just doing Temporos. I don't even have to do combat. Let's check it on out on the guide. 1.1 mil as well. Man, if I really didn't want to, I could just give that tome of water to my main. What's up everybody and welcome back. We got an easy clue and we ended up pulling the rainbow. That's a beautiful little bit of fashion scape and it goes along with our look very well. Alright, let's get in the episode. 81 fishing is an important landmark for us. Not only is it the final level bracket for rewards for Temporos, we've got 1000 total level. And normally that doesn't mean very much, but as an Iron Man, we can officially lock in our status and make our Iron Man status permanent. All right, so here's the deal. 863 reward points. We need the pet. We need the harpoon. We need the tackle box. Our chances are looking pretty good for at least getting one of these things here. This whole fishing thing ended up taking seven minutes just to get all of the rewards out of the fishing pool. So I got some highlights here for you guys, a little bit of the beginning, a little bit of the end, and as you can see, we've got a tackle box and a tome of water. Quick little price check here for you guys. It looks like 4.5 mil just about with the tome of water. Taking a quick peek at the collection log, it looks like we just need the pet and the dragon harpoon. We might come back here for a little while, at least until 99. If we don't get them then, then we might call it quits, but on to something new. We actually had a bunch of caskets, bang those right out, and we're gonna do a quick little price check. That's another 300k, so I think this really paid off. It took a lot longer than you might think, though. You know, something you really can't beat is the role players in this game. This here is the dark horse. He looks like a dark horse. Mr. Dark Horse. The creepiest background we can find to open this present up, and is it a stale baguette? No, never is. I tell you what, cooking fish isn't necessarily the meta, but 4.5 million dollars worth of fish gets you from 72 fishing all the way up to 80. Who really needs train crafting? Just cut any gem you find, they're everywhere. So I haven't really touched any of my herbs just yet. But keep in mind, we have seriously opened well over 250 crates from Winter Todd. That's a lot of herbs. 
and that's honestly a lot of seeds to grow a lot of herbs it's finally time to start cracking into these things and we're going to see just how far this is going to be able to take us I've got to collect a couple of more things like limp root and some red spider eye maybe even a couple more unicorn horn but we'll do that a little later too honestly just everything I had in my inventory without making a great effort I got all the way up to 14 herb lore and that's good for some barbarian strength mixes did you really think I was gonna be done fishing I just got the big bass at the fishing guild not much to do here except get a giant swordfish and that's two out of the three trophies we can actually get from the fishing guild I bet you thought that was gonna be the shark it's not it's just the mime top but I'll take it time to open the beginner clue of disappointment Okay, we've been screwing around for like three minutes. Let's see if we can actually get any quests in. Uh, this is one of the ones that was suggested to get out of the way for a lot of prayer XP. But uh, it doesn't look like I'm actually going to be able to range this guy at all. And uh, on the wiki it says he's got a pretty heavy hit. So I'm pretty sure I'm not even going to be able to take this guy even if I did have, you know, all the proper gear for this. Nope, he hits 12s. He hits 12s. All right, I'm getting out of here. Oh, <laughs> 15. Time to take on somebody my own size. <laughs> uh, but really, we need to get some unicorn horns. And we actually just pulled in 45 range. Killing well over 60 unicorns to be able to make these anti-poison potions. Let's see what we can get to from just a few... And that is all the way up to from 14 to 19 with just anti-poison. 46 range with a total level of 1,025. It's not necessarily a landmark, but it told me about it. Beginner clue, don't let me down. Wow. Just 46 range. Oh, why am I down here? Because I need the limpwort roots. Third time's the charm? Jesus. It's 48 range coming in here. And I didn't tell you, but I really only need like 50 of these things. 25 prayer. And they're 1 in 5 drop rate, but I have gone so dry. <laughs> hey, here's a first actually able to catch a combat level 49 range. We bought us a pack of Aya Newt in the first couple of episodes, and I finally got the chance to use it. With these roots, we're able to bang out a couple of strength potions, and this will severely help us in our combat endeavors, whatever they may be. 19 to 23 herb lore just from strength potions. I know I didn't get enough, so I'm back, but you know what else I got though? 50 ranged. Oh, wow. I think we just completed the mime outfit for this episode. Wow. Well, that'll go straight to the POH. A oh, fancy little hit points level, that's all. And that's going to be my last range level for today. We've got our roots and we're getting out of here. 24 herb lore with the last of our strength potions being made up right now. The next of our potions in the herb lore grind is actually the restore potion. And that requires red spider eggs and harlanders. But, you know, we already got those. We're gonna gather as many as we can from this dungeon here. It's a little bit hostile, so food and an anti-poison should probably be required, and my dog can't help but try to make an appearance in every time I make a recording. And as quick as it started, it's over. We've got 40 red spider's eggs, and that's all we needed to start in on our restore potions. 25 herb lore and we're just gonna keep on going right into 26 but unfortunately our herb lore grind comes to a close right there and i'm pretty sure you guys are curious where our potion situation is at after all of that so here's our potion situation we got 61 anti-poisons three dose i've actually started converting a couple of these strength potions into four dose but we're gonna have somewhere between 30 and 40 strength potion four doses along with 50 attack potions and 36 restores 
So that's not a bad grind, I'd say. But if you can't notice one thing missing from here, we've got no strange fruit, which means no stamina potions. And it's time to fix that problem. So I am entirely convinced that being an Iron Man is basically just getting your skills up because you're out of supplies and you don't know what else to do. So, while I bitch about the game mode that I chose for myself, we already got all the way up to 53 thieving, and that's another 100 strange fruit in the bank. I lied, we were a few short, now it's 54. So I'm just over here seeing if this is actually a viable method to raise your farming level, and it almost is. I wouldn't recommend it after this, but 19 farming, hell yeah. Now that's 90 fire making, and we've actually got a really special level coming up here as well. Right after 90 fire making, we locked in 61 wood cutting, and that lets us wield the dragon axe. So at 237 completions, let's see if we can pull the dragon axe. If we can't, we'll go ahead and save every single box afterwards until 99. We've got one more Tome of Fire added to our collection. I'll go ahead and take as many of those as they want to give. And all of these supplies never hurt. I'm basically still going to be here after 99. Just, you know, for the extras. <laughs> and a third Tome of Fire. Why not? Well, multiple Tomes of Fire is nice. We didn't get the Dragon Axe. So that means we're saving our boxes till 99. Shoot, 27 herb lore and I just cleaned some herbs. Desperately trying to think of a Bon Jovi joke that hasn't been beat to death. <laughs> 420. But also, that's almost a whole other 200 crates from our last opening. I don't know if you can see this guy, but I play with Entity Hider on so I can actually see my own person. And his name is Massive Club. And he just won't stop showing up on my stuff. Holy shit, 96 fire making, and that's 500 games. Wow, that's almost 300 crates more. 67 fletching was the last fletching level a part of Winter Todd, and we decided to go all the way out of our way right before 99 to equip a rune axe. So, small upgrades. The second most important level you could find. Our final wood cutting level before the infamous 600 games? No, 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 not that one. That's right, everybody. My very first 99, and which is probably every single hardcore's first 99, fire making. But you know, I hijacked every single person here, a part of the dance party plugin, to be a part of my 99 party. It feels real good. Now let's go get that cape. Oh, quick shout out to everyone being cool as hell in the chat right here. Let's not beat around the bush. We know for a fact that I have almost 400 crates to open and there is nothing that we're hoping for other than the dragon axe. These supplies are nice and I'll always take them, which I think you've heard me say previously, probably like a minute or two ago. <laughs> but what we're actually looking for is to fully build out the collection log for all of the pyromancers outfits so that way instead of the outfits we start getting seeds so that'll be really handy for next time when we come back to fill out some more supplies after we use up all of these of course if uh, we actually end up doing that in the next episode and in and off with another tome of fire and now let's go ahead and check that collection log Currently looking at a beautiful collection log. The only thing we're missing is the dragon axe, which I'm sure you've heard me say. But we've got three across the board for all of our pyromancers outfits, and that's really important to me for extra seeds. And we ended up pulling out five tomes of fire, 250 pages with one pet. I'd say that's pretty good. If we don't want to return for a little while, we don't got it. I swear to God, you get gems for just walking downtown. You get gems for going to the store. I mean, you get gems for just showing up. So that's what I'm doing is cutting all these gems. We've got hundreds of them, and that's actually going to get us all the way to 43 crafting with a little bit of help from some leather. 
I'm sure you've heard that phrase before, just in the bedroom, not in video games. <laughs> but with 43 crafting, we're able to cut up diamonds. And that takes us all the way to 44 with all the diamonds we actually had. So we got our 99, and if that wasn't enough, this guy wants $100,000. I guess I'll give it to him. But that is such a sweet, sweet cape, you gotta admit. Look at this thing. Now, I realize this cape should probably have training wheels on it instead of a fire symbol, but you know what? I'm happy about it. Skilling in my brand new cape. Skilling in my brand new cape. Skilling in my brand new cape. All right, everybody. It's finally time that we do it. Let's finalize the Iron Man status. So that way, if somebody wants to hack my account, they can't ruin it forever. You know, aside from killing it, stealing all of its items, and in general just making me unable to log into it. But other than that, there's some small protection. <laughs> Jokes aside though, we've chose the Iron Man life on this account, and we're gonna lock it in forever. Hello everybody and welcome back. We're gonna go ahead and start off with a beginner clue, and as always, it's pretty worthless, but our easy clue is actually going to give us a Guthix robe top, and that's an excellent, excellent fashionscape to start our day. Last episode, we left off getting supplies for all of our herbs we got at Wintertot. So, here I am grabbing a couple of more unicorn horns, but I'm also grabbing that 35 defense level. We're also still passively training prayer because I'm scared of the wilderness. So that makes a prayer level of 27, and we can use Mystic Lore. This is pretty much what a full inventory looks like, and I was able to run away with one of the heads too. This should probably be enough for all our potions, so let's go ahead and get to making them. Okay, I'm bad at math. Here's 37 defense and a few more unicorn horns. And from just any poisons from the unicorn horn, we get 30 herb lore. We're able to make defense potions, but also 31 too. That's 38 defense, and that's the main combat stat we're training because we just got 40 defense levels, and now we're able to use all of the rune equipment we got from Temporoth. We were able to get 42 defense after this limp wart root grind. I sure do hate saying the name of that root, but 32 herb lore. And of course 33 because I'm not a joker and I just buy my eyes a newt. Of course this is the most fun we can have trying to get some of our potion supplies. So we're just going to go ahead and basically try to kill ourselves grabbing some red spider eggs. 83 red spider eggs, that's about 5 trips in there. Now let's get to making potions. Here we go, 34 herb lore. And that's probably going to be the last level we pull out from all of the supplies we just gathered. Okay, never mind. 35 herb lore, and that's going to be the last one with three more potions to be made. So, uh, does this quest give you the most quest points in the game, or what? Is it that hard? One demon dead, and I sure am noticing they're stingy with these quest points at the end of the game. I'm sure a few ladies can relate to this, changing into everything you own just to put back on what you were wearing. We've got a not-so-hidden treasure. Killed Dracula in all his glory. And I ended up killing an old man on the sea too. With a little help from a buddy, aka myself. We were able to wrangle up all of these sheep, and I only exploded like three times. Ah, what can I say? It's a cute little kitty, and I was hoping somebody would give our little calico boy a name. The first of semi-useful unlocks that you're actually going to see, that's a new Slayer Master, and we've got some Slayer reward points in it too. Taking a break from questing for a moment, so that way we can work on our Slayer. The goal here is to complete our first five Slayer tasks so we can start earning some Slayer rewards. Not 100% sure if I'm going to continue on with Spira, but I tell you what, I might just visit her daddy, Terriel. But seriously, from one monster task, we were able to get all the way up to 17 Slayer. 
and let's go get the next one. Okay, so I got one of those tasks where it's like kind of a waste. So here's a cow task. We've got 18 Slayer, and from what I assumed is a real Slayer task, the Sour Hogs. Missing my defense levels as per usual, but that's 47 defense, and we also got 20 Slayer. One more absolute waste of a task, we had to kill birds. So here's a bunch of chickens dead on the floor. Grace by Spira to actually get a real Slayer task, and that's 21 Slayer, and the end of our crawling hen. So we got some plans for the end of the episode, but we're nowhere near there yet. But I'm gonna need a couple of smithing levels for our plans for the end of the episode. So if you guys can go ahead and guess what it is, put that down in the comments below, or you could literally just wait like eight minutes. Either way. But if you can guess what we're up to by the end of this level right here, let me know. Prince Ali rescue done, and I think we need to talk about if this is really a reward, or did they just take away a barrier that didn't need to be there. That's the Knight's Sword quest done and over with, and you gotta love all that smithing XP. Bringing us all the way to 47 smithing. Spoon feeding somebody a reward they didn't earn. Classic American. We're trying our best to try to knock out some of these quests here, and uh, we just need some snape grass from Plague City. And the best source of low-level snape grass is actually going to be tribesmen. So, we're going to kill a couple of those and see how many we can pull out of here. Like usual, we just missed our defense level, but that's 48 defense. There we go, 49 hit points levels. There we go, everybody. Loot from 57 tribesmen. <laughs> I really just waited until my food ran out, but we've got enough snape grass to do the quest we were looking for. And here's Plague City done and over with, and we got the fanciest mask in all of RuneScape. Completing Biohazard unlocks the second half of our dome, and that unlocks access to the combat training camp. The observatory quest all done and over with, and we actually ended up getting crafting experience out of this one. Awesome, we were able to get 28 prayer, and we were only killing gas because we were trying to complete the nature spirit quest. Perfect, that's the nature spirit. I don't know why, but I always want to put the number nine after jungle potion. Kind of like mambo number five. New claws, who dis? Unlocking telekinetic grab with 33 magic, and also 34 magic right after that. If you ever come down here for the Depths of Despair quest, make sure you kill a sand crab because you might just get 49 defense. And it's also a Kibos task, so keep that in mind too. <laughs> but Depths of Despair done and over with, and we even got a memoir page for our teleport. One of the absolute freakiest quests in all of OSRS. You fight an anime tentacle monster. Quickly completing elemental workshop number two, and that gets us some crafting XP, some smithing XP, and a couple of good levels in both. But for right now, we're actually focusing on the smithing XP, and that got us all the way to 48. The first part of Recipe for Disaster started kind of late on this account, but to be fair, uh, to be fair, to be fair, well, to be fair, we haven't done anything dangerous enough that needed it yet. There we go, level 81 cooking. And honestly, that's still fish from Temperos. The first of our recipe for disaster done and over with. And of course, you can never hate it on farming levels. Alright, we're over here seeing if we can't do our best try to get some ice gloves. It's required for some quests. Recipe for disaster, to start with. <laughs> All right, Ice Queen, make sure I'm attacking the Queen. Come on, attack the Queen. <laughs> okay, just get over here, bitch. Why not? Well, that bad boy drains prayer like a sieve. Goddamn, did her health go up? Feels like it's lagging or something. Oh, we got one. Does it only go to 67? Jesus Christ. 
Oh, we finally got another hit past 67. Okay. Honest to God, I started checking the wiki to make sure this wasn't like a second phase. You know, the worst part about it is I've actually done this before, too. So it's like, I should know. But no, I forgot. <laughs> Here we go. Finally got some ice gloves. Recipe for disaster number two. And 23 Slayer. Gotta love that. Taking just a moment to get in touch with our feminine side. And 36 Oberlore from that quest. Plus, I figure I'll give you guys a quick little look of what I look like as a woman. Yep, still ugly. So if you're not gonna give a reward for your quests, why are they there? And I bet you never thought it was gonna happen, but this concludes the questing portion of the video. <laughs> <laughs> but we actually just got 47 crafting and you can probably tell what we're working on a little bit of Piscarilius favor why are we working on Piscarilius favor because we need to get it all the way up to 20 perfect and once we do that we can actually do one more quest the Queen of Thieves and that actually gives us a whole nother 10% in Piscarilius which lets us start digging up sandworms for Tynan and you've heard this before in my videos, but as quick as it started, it really is done and over with in a flash. And we already got 100 per Piscarilius favor. <laughs> now, I'm not necessarily a fan of the favor system that they've implemented because it kind of just locks off stuff that's already locked off by skilling levels anyway. But they did recently improved the Shazian area and I won't say it's an improve for like making this easier or faster but it's definitely an improvement when it comes to looks and the best thing about that is we just got a hundred Shazian favor now when we're talking about Arceus favor it's the absolute easiest one to gain anything for if you end up putting your certificates in Arceus, you're probably dumb or you just can't gain magic or runecrafting experience normally. So, we are actually going to throw a whole inventory worth of books into our magic training because runecrafting is uh, not as important as magic. And we're actually able to pull away 39 magic out of all of that. But most importantly, we got that 100% Arceus favor. Now we're left with the hardest one to gain favor for, in my opinion, but luckily we were able to put 20% down with one of our favor certificates when we first got to the island. But here's the hard part. We got a gas mask, we got a pickaxe, and we need to mine some sulfur. These fart clouds over here will hit me one a tick, one or two a tick even. So honestly, as a hardcore Iron Man, this is very risky. And if you were a 10 HP hardcore Iron Man, you shouldn't come here at all, literally ever at all, at all. But the only good thing about that is we only needed 10% more favor so we could start mining Locavite, probably pronounced wrong. But we need about 600 Locavite, so I'll see you guys in two, three hours. Unfortunate thing about Locavite, you can only smith it on this smithy right here, so it's quite a walk. Here we go, everybody. That's the last inventory for our Locavite bars. As you can see, we've got 562. I'm pretty sure we only need 561. 52 smithing, and we only got one more smithing level to go. 53 smithing, that's the final smithing level that we're gonna be pushing for because we can make a full Shazian supply crate. All right, so we're gonna be turning in the rest of our Shazian supply sets and hopefully we'll be able to finish off the Lokavenji favor. Ooh, that's such a good experience drop. Let's see what we got. Oh, mining. Unexpected, but I'll take it. And 55 smithing too. And I can do chasing and supply too, but what's the point? We're already doing number one. 72%. And this should be the last drop off. 
And here we go with the final delivery, hopefully. Yes, that's 100% look of NG favor. And 56 smithing with literally just a little bit of XP left over for 57. What's up, everybody? Left you guys off last time with a little sneak peek of my new AFK area. And, uh... I was thinking there's a few things we could do to make this AFK area just a little bit better to start the episode off. And that would be to complete the easy Karend and Kibos task. 83 fishing and now it's time to get on our way. Our first task is going to be mine and iron ore. Next we've got to fish a trout. And of course make a strength potion in a weird spot. Pray at an altar. And just go home. And that was the last task we needed to complete. That's the end of our Karenda and Kibos diaries, and that gets us the Rada's Blessing, which actually will be able to get us double fish at 2%, and you know we're going to put that right into Hunter, so that way we're actually already able to go right onto Mulchi Island. I just figured I'd go ahead and introduce you guys to my new home for the next several hours. We're gonna go ahead and grind out about a hundred pearls so we can get an equipable fishing rod. Oh yeah, by the way. 3600. And there we go, 56 Hunter, which is also a wonderful coincidence of 101 pearls for us right now. And now it's time to claim what we came here for. One more fishing pole. Oh, the Barbarian Pearl fishing pole is gone. That's kind of strange. Oh well, either way, we came here for the Pearl Fishing Rod, the normal one. And that's one more thing in the collection log. And now we got the perfect AFK spot over in Piscarillus, fish and angler fish. What the hell? This is like Jackie Chan meme, my eye is twitching kind of bullshit. <laughs> got a quick smithing level through all these silver ores because we have a lot of gems and we're not scared to use them. We've got 48 crafting making our necklaces a passage. Can somebody say 49 crafting and a lot of rings of recoil? 50 crafting because we need a couple of rings of dueling. And I'll go ahead and make myself a few dig site pendants, because you know, why not? 52 crafting and we're never going to need jewelry again, so our gems after all this are going to bolt tips. Here's the first of many stash units to be made, and it's even a medium. We also made two beginner stash units on our clue grind. Just a small one though. We've got a medium casket and we also got a desert medium task as well. Very profitable in this area even though it doesn't look the most professional. Alright everybody we got an absolutely massive stack of caskets over here but we're gonna go ahead and open this because we got a key too. Oh wow, Dragonstone, so unexpected. After that, oh, cut Dragonstone out of the mystery box? No way, that's so crazy. Oh, and a flyer. That's about on par, but wow, a cut Dragonstone? All right, let's go for the beginner caskets. All of those were terrible. Easy? Okay, we got the Piscarillus teleports. Those are nice. I'm gonna use the hell out of those. And our only medium. <laughs> hell yeah. That's the Taibawani teleports. And a Saradomen. What do you call her? Ah, oh, man, I need to have a level 40 prayer. But that does look pretty sweet. 
All right, so we're out here doing the rogues den, and it's uh, annoying. <laughs> we don't have enough run energy, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and buy a couple of things like these over here. Three brand new pieces of graceful outfit. Now I just gotta get the bottom half. Here's my first attempt at the rogue's den, and let's go ahead and see if we get anything. At least it's what I expected. Okay, the first attempt didn't really go so well, so we're gonna go ahead and pick this one right next to our good skeleton buddy here. Hey, we actually got a crate. Let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. Oh, you actually get to pick. What do we want? You know, you gotta start with the mask. Oh yeah, this is how we start our thieving grind. All right, let's get some more. Let's see if we can get a second one on our hands. <laughs> there we go. And let's just go right on down the line. This one's gonna be the shirt. Oh, top. Let's be specific. All right, let's see if we can get one more of these bad boys. Oh, all right, all right. Uh, it was actually, no, that wasn't back to back, but it was the one right after. Now we can finally put our pants on one leg at a time, just like everybody else. One more wall safe. Let's see if we can't crack it. <laughs> nope. Okay, there we go. Got 51 agility. All right, let's see if this one will work for us. Ah, Jesus Christ. All right, let's try the backside if we get anything nicer. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Of course, trousers, boots, and then the last thing we need is the gloves. All right, don't fail me now, baby. Let's go. <sighs> Here we go. The final box. And, of course, we need those gloves. Yes. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the whole goddamn outfit. Here we go. The first look at our rogue outfit. And we're done. And here's our first leaving level with our brand new outfit. I actually end up AFKing a lot, so that's 85 fishing. Probably not gonna do dark crabs pretty much ever because those are just money makers. All right, so we have a couple of goals here and those goals are taking down a couple of the Temporos tasks. I'm pretty sure I should be able to pull off taking out all of these, maybe even the last one, all in one go. That's what I'm hoping for. Let's get to it. Three of those, and this should be a task right here. Perfect. Calm before the storm. And that's the Master of Buckets complete as well. Come on. Yes, there we go. Fire in the hole. All four. Now, does it just wait or does it vaporize those fish? I'm super curious. Ah, it waits and then launches them off. See, that's valuable information to know. That does make a new personal best for us. There we go. Dress like you mean it. And there should be another one. The Lone Angler. And that actually just leaves us one more. Why cook? All right, let's see if we can get more than seven points this time. This looks like it's gonna be a new personal best. So fingers crossed, everybody. It doesn't look like by very much, so it's probably not gonna be a whole 10 points. But let's go ahead and see what we got. Ooh, nine points. Oh my god. How do, oh my gosh, I'm so freaking close. Alright. 
Try again. So hey, I don't know if you guys have seen my Temporos 10 point guide with the secret fourth round, but this is actually where I figured out how to do it. Not to mention if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a card up here in the corner. And if you're gonna go ahead and go for the fourth round, I wanna go ahead and point out that you have to have both cannons at least supplied a little bit so that way you don't lose the fourth round. There we go, Rag and Bone Man, done it and over with. Definitely one of the weirdest quests I've ever completed. Totally forgot to bring a weapon for this, so I'm just gonna punch this chicken fish to death. Wish me luck. <laughs> I was gonna say, this is probably the most boring thing for this guy to watch right now. But you know, he decided to watch it, so that's his fault. <laughs> He's so close to leaving, I just got one more. There it is. And we've got a medium test done. That's my Lord Arceus, I don't know what you're talking about. The Ascent of Arceus done. We've got some Hunter, Runecrafting, and a Favor Certificate, plus a memoir page, the most important of all. Here's a quick fletching level because we gotta make our own supplies. There we go. It tricked me a few times because I thought it was gonna be over, but now it finally is. A favor certificate, a memoir page, and a quest point. Here we go. Very small amount of mining experience, but we get another favor certificate. I'm not gonna lie, this looks really out of the way. <coughs> the peaceful peaceful hosidious minecart here and it's where next to dangerous wolves and where's hosidious this is hosidious this is hosidious this is a transport to hosidious <laughs> what <laughs> This one's slightly less ridiculous. It's halfway to Winter Todd, and it takes you to like the only place that you really need in Arceus. So I'll give this one a pass. This one here, pretty good. I'd honestly say this is like directly necessary. It's straight to raid, so you take you any place else. Using my Kahardest memories, I was able to get another medium task done. And we can pay 100,000 coins to never have to pay it again. So, you know what we're going to do? Here we go. 100,000 coins in the bag. And now I can go anywhere I want. We're at 56 thieving because a good fruit is hard to come by. 57 thieving and we've actually almost got 100 strange fruit. One beginner, one easy casket. Let's see what we can get from it. Lackluster as always, never expect it from the beginner. Ooh, wow, okay, all right. I got a really fancy staff and a bronze plate skirt trimmed. Probably never gonna use this plate skirt, but you know what, whatever. This is a very, very fancy staff. And an old boot, of course. So we got 86 fishing from our favorite AFK spot. Eagle's Peak quest done and over with, and now we're actually able to use box traps. Witch's house over and complete. We've got some brand new hit points experience, and that actually brought us all the way up to 50 hit points. Everybody loves a nice round number, but I want to go ahead and highlight the best insult in the world. Your mother was a hamster and your father smells of elderberries. 2021 translation means your mom's a hoe and your dad's a drunk. You can call me daddy because I'm smashed right now, and now I'm smashing my vials too. There is actually a lot of things that go with the barbarian training, like Alfred Grimhand's bar crawl, you can uh, barbarian fish, you can firelight barbarian wise, you can make barbarian potions, and uh, none of that gives you a quest message or is remotely interesting whatsoever. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that I did that and there it is, I did. The last step is going ahead and give him this Herblore potion and we've unlocked Barbarian Herblore. 
You had to have done this on purpose. You can't get this quote and camera angle any other way. Taibowana Trio. I don't know why I said it like that. All right, everybody, we're gonna go ahead and take on Jad, and here's the setup. Graceful, a bow, barely any arrows. We can do this. And that's one easy task completed in the Karamja area. Just a few more tasks to complete, like fish off of this dock. And the last one, of course, is gonna be mine this gold ore. And we can go get our gloves. Karamja gloves, not necessarily that useful, but we can sink this antique lamp straight into prayer to give us just a little bit more XP. And that's 30 prayer. While I was in Karamja, I was gonna see if we could get super lucky by killing a couple of these things, but unfortunately, the only thing we were able to get was a few ranged levels. And 51 hit points too. I've got a couple of caskets and I figured while I hit a block, we'd open up the next two. We got some beginners. Uh, Earth staff, not completely useless like most beginners. Hey, there we go. We actually got a new blessing. And that's going to go in our best in slot for quite a while, for at least our melee. We got 25 rune crafting. I bet you didn't see that one coming. But, believe it or not, that's a fifth task for the Lumbridge Achievement Diary. Funny enough, I actually have to complete the dig site to get enough kudos to be able to complete the Lumbridge Easy Achievement Diaries. And hey, guess what? We got 37 herb lore in the process. And that's the Varrock Easy Achievement Diaries complete. So we've got three antique lamps, and I know where we're gonna put them. All of them straight on to prayer. It's pretty hard to train prayer as an Iron Man, and I don't necessarily wanna go in the wilderness or build a altar in my house just yet. And from all of that, we'll bring us just under 33 prayer. And there it is, we got that dig site pendant. Just gotta enchant it. Honestly, one of the easiest quests that I could have thought of. Uh, you might honestly be able to do this as a level 3, provided obviously that you got the quest requirements beforehand. This has been such a long fight that <laughs> I got a random event for it. Grand tree done and over with, and we unlock the gnome glider. Nice. 52. Oh, and that's the first floor of the Hollowed Sepulchre. Might as well check that out to get some badass agility gear. We got 47 attack and 40 magic. That's nothing to sneeze at. Okay, we tried this a few episodes ago and we were sorely prepared, but now we got the melee equipment. We can do it. All right, the last... <laughs> that's perfect. No way. I was going to say the last seven damage and there it was. We got the Holy Grail done with some desperately needed prayer experience. And I'm never gonna turn down that defense XP. 37 prayer unlocking our first of our protection prayers and 51 defense. 53 agility, 54. Oh, I just missed it, but 55. One more task done in Falador. Two tasks done in Falador. Kill this duck for the final task that we need completed. Now let's go ahead and claim our prayer XP, of course. <laughs> That's the trend of the video. And a brand new shield, too. Starting in on the Ardone tasks, we weren't able to complete them just yet, but we're just waiting on the Silk Trader to accept our silk. And that takes like an hour, and I didn't really want to wait around for all that. So we'll complete the easy Ardone diary in next episode. And we've got the Lost Tribe done and over with. 58 thieving. Death to the Dorgishin. And one last easy clue, Ooh, we got a black pickaxe. I'd say we did pretty good today. It was a little bit of a longer episode. I was back and forth all over the map, but we ended up nearly completing almost five achievement diaries. Easy, of course. <laughs> a shitload of quests. And I have started a jewelry empire. Now I just got to enchant it. And you remember that little AFK spot we brought up in the beginning of the episode? Well, I've been using it. We got all our clue scrolls from it this episode and over 11,000 anglerfish. No pet yet, but that's close to one fourth the drop rate, so coming soon. We need to be a real Iron Man. Recently, somebody told me I'm gonna have a really hard time as an Iron Man. 
if I don't learn how to farm. So I guess today we're gonna learn how to farm and a whole bunch of other things. Stay tuned. We're gonna go ahead and start out with 56 agility in a very odd place to get it because we completed the tourist trap and we put both of those onto agility. You don't have to pick two different ones just in case you don't know. And what is an invaluable tool for an Iron Man but the Ardone cloak? And it's probably the best thing that you can get from the Easy Achievement Diaries. And you know where we're gonna put that lamp? Prayer. Remember how we power mined iron well into our 80s? Well, this is what we're gonna do with it. Gonna turn it all into steel. And no, we don't have enough coal. We never do. So we're gonna have to go back to the mother load mine, of course. And we should be ready for our range training too. The best thing about getting all these cannonballs smithed up will really be getting all the way up to 62 smithing. And we've probably got about 19k cannonballs. And we went ahead and got 59 thieving stealing from master farmers. And that's going to be the first step we're taking towards our farming grind. And without further ado everybody, we've got our seeds and we've got some compost. I tell you what, it's time to start farming. And I always thought you couldn't grind out the farming skill. That's 34 farming and we unlocked Tithe Farm. We can really start getting some farming XP too. And we got 61 thieving for some more farming supplies. So we're at Winter Todd everybody. And uh, we've got a couple of combat achievements to complete. We ended up getting 99 before those came out. So there's about 10 of these things that we're gonna crack out. Here we go, we've got Cozy and Can We Fix It? Now let's see if we can get the rest of these combat achievements done and over with. We have to subdue Winter Todd without any of the pyromancers falling, which is really strange. I feel like that's just something that might happen as long as you're on a really busy world. <laughs> Wood cutting level is 67, but the good thing is we actually got a skill total level of 1,275. There's the handyman task done and over. And we even got the mummy this round too. That's beautiful. Oh my gosh, I knew it would happen randomly. Honestly, we got like 12 kills in before we actually even got that. So the only thing that's left is to do a solo. We got 13 supply crates and let's go ahead and crack these bad boys open, see what we get. We are actually here for tree seeds, so the yo's not bad. Hmm. Not too good for what we're here for, but you know what? That's all right. Always love extra supplies. Iron Man, by the way. And we can actually start making some prayer restores, which is very, very important. Here we go, 57 agility. Three more agility levels, and we can actually do the Winter Todd agility shortcut. That's what I like to do, is think of short goals that I can work for. 58 agility. Random ranger level everybody. I'm gonna get spoon that shield. I swear to god 62 thieving and now it's time to actually grind out farming this episode And we actually got 50 points, so we're gonna buy the farmer's boots too. Can't even tell I'm wearing them. And we even got the farmer's legs while we're at it. Well, we went ahead and got the farmer's hat for all of our trouble. And there's only one piece left. Wait a minute. What is going on here? just walked into Tithe Farm and it's not being crashed by about five people. I don't understand. Here we go, everybody. The first time we walk into the Farming Guild. That's a medium, 
current and Kipo's test done. And of course, we gotta get that music track hoe down. And here's our first farming contract done. Let's talk to Guildmaster Jane. Still only can do easy. Onions, okay. Well, really easy. Sea packs? Oh. Tomatoes, pineapples, candarin, rosemary, whiteberry. The only seed that I wanted out of that was the pineapples. <laughs> so I think this will be a long process. Oh wow, we got an herb lore level. And the craziest thing about it is, is we've only been cleaning herbs. We haven't even done any herb lore. When you run out of cash, what do you do? You steal from Artie Knights for a little extra thieving experience. That's 63 thieving. 64 thieving just trying to get some supplies. And I think we'll call it quits right there. At about 100k, that's good for me. This is honestly probably what we'll end up doing every time we run out of money. We'll just get to 100k and call it good. And it'll probably get us a level or two in the meantime. And that's the golem done and over with. We get some crafting and thieving XP. And wouldn't it be kind of cool if we could take this golem here and make him our butler at our own house? An incredibly easy quest that kind of understands that it's super easy with the reward. <laughs> hey, 40 herb lore with all the things we've been farming up. And we've got 41 herb lore from a couple of prayer potions, up to about 60 now. I have done this quest so many times and the freaking ship has never made sense. Love this quest. But that does unlock Fossil Island and we've got a couple of things to fix a part of the camp. The first thing being the loom. Second of all, we better build this bank chest so we actually can use stuff here. <laughs> of course, the archaeology table is incredibly important. After that, we also need a well for uh, water needs. We're not next to an ocean or anything. And a campfire to sing Kumbaya. And this one was hiding on me, but I found the spinning wheel. So this is where I start being a bad Iron Man and go to the crabs instead of doing bird runs. But we do end up getting all the way up to 51, 51, 51 for attack, strength, and defense. And here it is, 51 attack. And of course, 51 strength, just for the sake of my OCD. 42 herb lore, just cleaning herbs again. So I just want to go ahead and take a second to welcome you all to the second tier of the farming guild. Could fight Hospori if we had the Hospori seed. And there was something I really wanted to do. I gathered a little bit of volcanic ash while I was at the fossil island and I figured we could turn it into ultra compost and that's gonna be the supplies for our herbs now. Look at that. It's just like a real Iron Man. But it looks like it takes two at a time so I'll have to keep that in mind. And I said it would do it. I only got two potato cactus seeds but I'm gonna go ahead and plant them in just the loneliest little farming patch over here. Well, it's time to sit here and craft up some super compost and see how much we can get. And with all that together, we were able to make 75 ultra compost. Well, I forgot to refill my prayer, so I can't use protect from magic, but it's just Elvar. So let's pot up and go. Jesus Christ, just tens after tens. I'm actually starting to hit now, so I'm not worried about it. Yeah, protect from magic definitely would have came in handy here. Jesus, he's just ripping straight through me, my god. It'd be nice if I could get a hit in. I have like the worst weapon for this too. He's got a stab weakness and I have a crush weapon, which is like opposites in RuneScape game. But here we go everybody, that's Elvarg all done. Oh yeah, close up on this. I dropped it of course. Beautiful, everybody. That's Elvarg's head. All right, let's get out of here before he respawns and we have to kill him again. <laughs> All right, and uh, we can't forget to go down here for an achievement diary task as well. Yep, and here's the fight caves. And that's Dragon Slayer Part 1 done, which also means we've completed free to play. And let's go ahead and buy a rune plate body while we're at it. How much is it? Oh my god, just ridiculous. <laughs> Man, I feel like I almost brought exactly the same. Yeah, I'm just a little short, but I bought almost the same amount. Ah, whatever. We got 52 strength, 52 defense, and we can even wear our new rune plate bodies. Now let's go upgrade to dragon ASAP. 
One super simple quest out of the way, which is Scorpion Catcher, and it actually gives you a lot of strength XP, up to 53. I was doing the Lost City quest, and we actually got a combat task, a greater foe from killing a greater demon. And I'd be crazy not to get to 41 magic without leaving. We've completed the Lost City quest as well, finally gaining access to Xenaris. We got 66 farming from a maple tree. And after this episode, this is probably what our farming updates are gonna look like. Just one quick level in between what we're doing. Arguably the most important quest for the farming skill that gets us the magic secutors to get more herbs from our farming runs. 43 herb lure. Make it up some prayer potions. Oh man, look at that. It's even 1325 total level 2. Alright everybody, we got a couple of caskets and I figured we'd open them up at the end today. Beginner clues, always useless. Go for the easies. Nice, very nice. Got a new unique and the Zamorak robe legs. That's actually... We have three pieces of prayer gear, actually. As soon as we get one more prayer level, we're going to throw all these on and have a really badass set. <laughs> one more, of course. A steel full helm. That's why I love easy clues. You basically always get a unique and medium. Mm, nothing really, but the sweets are nice. And, of course, can we get the baguette? Never lucky. Well, I'm going to go ahead and call it quits there, everybody. We got 151 prayer potions from all that farming grinding we did. 132 unfinished Maranthil potions. We just gotta go kill a whole bunch of unicorns. 132 to be exact. <laughs> There's about 16, almost 17k cannonballs. I might have exaggerated earlier when I said 19k, but that's okay. And then we actually got a whole prayer set, one of each god. And I'm curious, guys, do you like it when I open up the chests? just right up at the end, or would you prefer it to randomly have them periodically throughout the episode? So let's start this off with a farming level of 67 farming, and I actually got something from this farming level too that I didn't expect. You guys are so nice. Thanks, Iron Dalish. I really appreciate you guys. With the last banana tree planted, we're gonna use pineapples, and we're gonna use those for compost, so I probably won't be getting any levels from fruit trees for a while. Here's a very nice farming level at 69 farming, and this actually means we get quadruple maple roots too. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's our first to spory seed, and this is actually going to work out perfectly for our plants. We're pretty much going to start bossing next episode, and this is the perfect way to dip my toes in the water. Something I've been saving up for even before I finish the outfit, and that's going to be the Growler's Can. Now it can drop pretty much a whole 15, almost like 40 pounds it feels like while you're running. And at 70 farming, we're actually able to grow some poison ivy berries. And you know, we need that weapon poison. I just composted 71 farming. And here comes 72, funny enough with the berries we were just talking about. And one beautiful little farming level at 73, and we only got one more until we can get the last stage of Tithe Farm. So just like everything else in my life, I quit Tithe Farm right before it got good, and that rolls us straight into Herb Lore. I'm gonna start by talking about Herb Lore. Herb Lore is one of those things that's kind of a pain in the ass to do as an Iron Man. A little bit like farming, you can't brute force it, you have to wait until you have enough supplies. <laughs> and my god is it boring. But hey, let's, let's talk about the good sides. I mean, it's... Yeah. <laughs> but for real though, basically RuneScape sits on the back of Herblore. You wouldn't be able to do half of the shit you could do without it. But if you don't think about it for a little while, you can almost grind it out like I did. And no, I'm not necessarily going to need all of the potions that I'm making. There's a couple of fishing potions and agility potions thrown in there because, you know, I had this shit available. But that's not the point. The point is we're going to turn those into barbarian fishing potions and we're going to figure out a use for them, I swear to god. Okay, I'm done ranting about Herblore, I promise. <laughs> and now my crazy ranting about thieving begins because I just missed a level and I clicked straight past it. I clicked so far past it. <laughs> 
And we're coming in with 66, the 67 and another 10K. 68 with 15K, we're getting better. And we just missed my favorite thieving level, so let's get, all give it a moment of silence. So at 70 thieving, I discovered that I could do this on mobile and eat dinner. But that also means I skipped 71, so that's 72 thieving. Here we go. <laughs> and that matches up with our farming level too. And seriously, quicker than it started, it is over when it comes to runecrafting because I don't have the attention span for it. That's 26 runecrafting, and we pushed all the way in to Zanaris to get us some cosmic runes, and we can enchant some of our jewelry too. Oh hey, did you guys know that Pura Pura exists? And I just got a fancy magic net too. 42 magic just trying to enchant a couple of things to get us around runescape a little easier. Speaking of getting around runescape, we got 59 agility, and that's just one more until we can use the wintertide shortcut. Quickly completing the Mountain Daughter for the bear costume and on no other reason other than the bear costume. Oh, what's this? Wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> I bet you guys thought I was gonna fall, didn't ya? Well, I did! A lot! Why is this a thing in the game? <laughs> My god! <laughs> Ichthurin's little helper done and dusted, and he even gave us a handy little tool to talk to little Barry here. That's my cat, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, I decided to take this part out of the video, but I wanted to tell you guys about it anyway. This would have been a headphone warning for sure. I've spent literally over six minutes trying to click on that cog, and as soon as I start recording to bitch about it, it works. A completely not frustrating quest done and over with, but hey, we need an upgrade over here, everybody, and what we're able to make ourselves is a mithril crossbow, so I figure I'll go ahead and do that. Bolt making at its finest. We just need about 10,000, that's all. And we don't do things half-assed here. We're, of course, gonna enchant these bad boys. And we even pulled out a magic level after enchanting about a thousand or so bolts. Because that's really all the bolt tips we had. Actually, with a finished product of almost 11,000 bolts. And we now have access to Shiloh Village as well. We got some money earlier, and uh, I just realized that you have to pay for this. So, I'm gonna go ahead and pay for it to make it permanent. And it used to decay whenever you would lose favor with Arceus and you'd have to pay for it again. Since the favor doesn't decay anymore, we only gotta pay this once. So we were able to get our ranged equipment up to snuff, but you know what really really need to do? Is get some proper combat equipment. I can't have a bear night mace forever. Even though it's still the equivalent of a rune scimitar, I need to upgrade. And we're gonna get all that from a homeboy Jew cat. <laughs> He's got a dragon long sword for a hundred thousand and a dragon dagger for thirty thousand. And you know we gotta poison that dagger. And no, the dragon long sword won't stick around for too long, but we gotta get Monkey Madness 2 done and it'll help us through it. Or we just safe spot it. Either way. And finally everybody, this brings us to our new segment. I'd like to call it Dick of the Week. And we, of course, have to come up with something like an intro for this. So I want you guys to brainstorm with me. Like, what's the intro going to be? Is it like, Dick of the Week? You know, kind of like The Simpsons. Or is it like going to be like a beep bop tune? Like, Dick of the Week, Dick of the Week. I'll just throw it out there and let you guys figure it out. But you got to love those absolute cocksuckers that think they can take your spot just because they're a little bit of a higher level than you. And then they shit talk you just for being in the game. Whew, you got to love them. And yeah, this just might be me being petty, but this could actually turn into something funny. If you guys could submit your Dick of the Week clips, this could be hilarious. I was going to have a mini montage of me getting my combat stats up, but this just came to me like a lightning bolt. Because this happens so damn often, everywhere around RuneScape, and I know it doesn't just happen to me. Right? Right? Well, there we go, everybody. 60 defense. I technically missed it, but not really. You saw it. Please say you saw it. 
And I want to go ahead and point out that it's 60 attack, 60 strength, 60 defense. Now we just got to work on range and magic. Unleashing a monster onto the world, at least it's not mine this time. And boy, oh boy, is this quest a chore. The wanted quest where you gotta hunt down this wizard. He smacks up like a whole bunch of people who look way stronger than you and it's like, okay, he's weak, go kill him. Weird. This is not an efficient way to escape the abyss. You know, the shit we do for Ecto Tokens, I tell you what. This needs to be sped up. This took over two minutes to do an inventory. And you might be asking yourself, why do you even need a full inventory of that shit? Well, it's better to have a bunch of shit that you don't need than to need a bunch of shit you don't have. I bet this just smells awful. He like basically puts his face in it the whole time. Like my god, that bubble popped in his face, I guarantee it. And something special happened while we did our second inventory. Yeah, that's right, second inventory. 40 prayer! And we can even wear all that fancy armor that we got the last time. Oh yeah, and protect from missiles, I guess that's kind of important. <laughs> With Ghosts Ahoy done, we have actually expanded our farming run content to Mortania. I wasn't going to reach out here until I had a quick way to get here, and honestly, I hate the swamp, so I was putting it off. <laughs> Whoever designed this quest, I could kiss you. As long as you got the right teleports, it's teleport here, teleport here, teleport here, teleport there, done. We're back at Grace's shop and we're gonna go ahead and pick up the graceful cape. We need this bad boy while we're doing some farming runs. And at Tithe Farm because it's one of the only things we can put on our back to reduce some run weight. Besides, you know, spotty air capes and stuff. And you know, this hasn't happened to me very often, but when it does, it brings a smile to my face so so much if you guys ever get some of the bugs that you experience throughout old school runescape go ahead and submit those too and i'd love to have a bugs of the week kind of a thing as well and we are done with the tale of two cats and we even get a mystery present what is up everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode We've got a lot to do today and we're actually going to start right now with a brand new fishing level of 87. In an effort to get supplies we got 73 thieving and missed it of course. When it comes to herb lore we got some huge improvements going on. We actually are making some stamina potions or might as well just say stamina potions in the making. Energy potions for now until we can actually make the stamina. And one little inventory of barbarian potions to push me over the edge into 56 herbal. Cooking at 82, just trying to get the supplies ready. And we're actually able to use the sea turtles that we got so long ago. And of course I went to go get more stuff to cook, but 64 strength. This right here is always one of my favorites. Getting a random level in a random area, but it looks pretty. Ooh, a huspori seed. And I actually got 74 farming from all that. And that unlocks the final tier of Tithe Farm. Ooh, that snuck up on me, 5700. I started AFK woodcutting on mobile, and now every time I log in, I get to record a woodcutting level. Okay, so I, I guess I just suck at the game, because you can't buy another one of those red topazes from them. It only lets you do three. And gosh, my luck's so goddamn wonderful that I happen to crush every single one of those. So I guess let's just go mine some of our own. <laughs> Ridiculous. New gem acquired, and that little gnome buddy is on his way. A quick completion of one small favor. <laughs> quick. But honestly, if we're going to be real with each other here, pretty much all of Jagex's quests are uh, analog of one small favor. It's go here, go there, take this, take that. But if we're going to think about it, we gotta put it on runecrafting. It's a really big EXP drop, and nobody wants to runecraft. <laughs> With our final EXP lamp, that brings us all the way up to 39 runecrafting. I don't know how I keep getting this glitch to work, but I hope it stays in the game forever. So seriously, how, how often have you guys been in here? Because all I'm trying to do is a freaking quest, but apparently this frog thinks I have to kiss it or something because even when you tell it no or dismiss it it's like well fine i guess you can get fucked and stop doing what you're doing okay rant over back to questing 
the feud done and over with. And that unlocks blackjacking for us, one of the best thieving methods that we can find. If you're a hardcore Iron Man, you should probably do this as soon as you start your account. But since I'm not smart, I just did daddy's home. Just needing a little bit of money here back here at Artie Knights for both 74 and 75 thieving. With about a 300k cash stack to boot. This is kind of exciting and mutually disappointing. <laughs> this is the first time I actually found a crashed meteor in the wild. And I would totally mine this all to myself if I could. But I can't even mine it. Alright, so I guess I'll call it on the star miners or star callers or whatever their CC is. Finally able to use the highest tier of tithe farm, we've unlocked 75 farming as well. That lets us grow magic trees. I don't know why the hell I just said trees like that. And we're actually able to pick up the last piece of the farmer's outfit. That's the jacket. And you gotta know this looks fancy as hell. Oh yeah, that's fancy. But with an extra 2.5% experience rate, I gotta love it. 76 thieving because somehow I've already ran out of money. And here we go, we get another happy level to log right into. That's 70 wood cutting. 71 wood cutting. And finishing off my weekend at 72 wood cutting. Just want to go ahead and take a moment of our time to appreciate the new Runelite HD client in all its glory. And I figured this hill was the perfect opportunity to do so. Unlocking a level that I've long awaited. And that's level 60 agility. Which really unlocks so many things for agility, it's crazy. I mean look at all this stuff. You get the Wintertide shortcut, the werewolf in Sears Village. You go ahead and gonna do Cod Wars dungeon agility route and most of the harmos. And you know we gotta get 76 farming in between it all. I'm not sure if we're ever gonna get that Tangle Root pet, but I really, really, really want it. It looks so cool. I have a project where I really wanna record all of the cutscenes in RuneScape in Rune Lake HD. But we got the Wizard's Tower done and over with, and we unlocked the Watchtower teleport. Plus, you know, 47 magic is actually pretty cool, too. Oh no, this is a very dangerous situation and I'm undergeared. How am I ever going to fight this dog? Well, here we go. Safe spotting. Definitely your friend in old school runescape. In search of the Mire Key, done and over. And here's something I'm really excited to get started. That's Shades of Morton. Hopefully we can get the prayer outfit for prayer XP. Look at you. Broke again at 77 thieving. 69 fletching. Nice. And I might as well mention we can make runite crossbows. Would be incredibly funny if I was able to make one before I earned one. Just trying to turn a couple of logs into the finished product. Cause you know we're gonna elk these later, but that's 70 fletching. And you know what else? We had just enough logs for 71 fletching as well. Taking the knife with me so I don't have to bank stand. That's 73 wood cutting. So here's something in the game that I had no idea existed until a little time ago. And that's the wise old man recycling center. He just tells you that you don't need this shit anymore and you can get rid of it. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Free up a couple of spaces here. Okay, so I've decided we're gonna keep all the outfits and all the books just in case I'm able to put them in my POH. But anything else? Get that the hell out of there. When it comes to Runelight HD, if it was up to me, I personally would make these vampires' eyes glow red. Like, bright red, give off a little tint, like the green glow. I don't know why, but I feel like stuff like this happens to me a lot. Dude's dead, right? <laughs> Already done knocked him out. Said he was knocked out. I don't want to forfeit. Oh, okay, let me just fight him again now that his health's back up. This <laughs> is so weird. In aid of the Meyer Key, out of the way. And the only thing to level up was our crafting level at 54. And of course, while I'm here, let's get Darkness of Hollowville right out of the way as well. And we pretty much don't have to come down in this basement for a while. And you gotta love the construction XP that goes along with literally anything. Coming in with another log out level of 74 wood cutting. Sure do love those. As you probably noticed in the last clip, I forgot my knife, so now I have to bank stand again. But that means we got 72 fletching as well. 
We're working on getting a couple of construction supplies so that way we can make our house even nicer. It's basically got nothing in it. 83 cooking and we we're cooking all those swordfish from earlier. This right here wasn't my smartest of moves, but I really needed to AFK and I was eating dinner. So that's 44 magic and 45 magic. Splashing in big air quotes. We've got 41 prayer from Barry and Bones. 65 strength. But if you're going to be killing moss giants, you know you got to do it down here because you get a chance at some really, really cool uniques like the dark totem base. Oh, that scared me. I thought that was gonna be another totem piece, but we got an ancient shard, which is still really cool. You can use that to charge silver light or arc light or whatever the hell it's called. Oh, there we go. Another ancient shard. Wait, does it drop two at once or did I just get another like right back to back? Weird. 66 strength, still at Moss Giants. Nothing new yet. There it is, everybody. We got that dark totem middle piece. I think we just need one more to make the whole set. I'll take my bones over here, thank you. And that's 42 prayer uninterrupted. Another strength level, my god, 67. Something I totally just realized about this dungeon here, you can go upstairs and get in a combat achievement. Two, actually. One for killing a fire giant, one for killing all of the giants. One more quick task while we're here, a demon's best friend, which is kill a hellhound. Here's 68 strength, and you know all this strength training is really doing us wonders. We're going to start taking out bossing, if not ep this episode, next episode. And I'll tell you why I say that, everybody. 43 prayer. Gotta love it. That gets us all three protection prayers. Melee, ranged, magic. And we're actually able to take on pretty much anything, as long as we're not bad at the game. So we might be in trouble, but we're gonna do it anyway. I think I'll go ahead and stop killing moss giants for now, but let's go ahead and take a quick look at how many I've actually killed in this little sitting. Oof, almost a thousand, and we only have very few keys to show for it. We got so unlucky here, man. But you know what, we've almost finished the totem to be able to fight Skatizo. Not sure we'll be able to do it anytime soon, but we have the ability. With an area change, we've just got 56 ranged and 1,425 total level. But why are we here? We need some snake hide because right now we're rocking the the uh, yeah the absolute worst <laughs> range gear that we could find. So we need to make snake gear, kill some dragons, make dragon gear, and get to bossing. Or at the very least, be able to safe spot some stuff so we can get a little bit farther than where we are. So here's what we look like now, a total unit at 96 ranged attack bonus. Not the best, but we did end up getting the blue pants out of a clue scroll. Increasing our ranged attack and defense bonuses by around 10-ish, it's not a bad upgrade, but we can do better. But if we're really gonna improve our combat levels, we need to increase our Slayer levels too. It doesn't directly increase our combat levels, that's 30 Slayer by the way, but it increases the equipment we're able to use and the monsters that we're able to fight to increase the equipment that we can use. 31 Slayer. Calfines aren't necessarily the best Slayer tasks, but at this point in time, I'm not really gonna turn any one of those down. But we got 32 Slayer again. Our next Slayer task gets us a very nice strength level, but we're killing lesser demons. And you really can't be hating on that because we got 37 Slayer already. And that makes it at 38 Slayer, but these lesser demons gave us something even cooler. And that's the Dark Totem Top. Finishing off the totem pieces, now we're really able to fight Skatizo. Hey, I said able to, not ready. <laughs> Early Slayer really is so nice because I swear, it's like every 20, 30 kills you got a Slayer level. That's 39 Slayer for me. Oh, oh wow. I did not like that at all. <laughs> I really wish all of my Dark Totem pieces would come with a pop-up. Well, we finished off the Greater Demons and we made ourselves get 70 strength in the meantime. We had supplies, might as well use them. Here it is, I figured I'd do it on camera. That's a totem. My eyes! We're out in the daylight and we got 40 Slayer. Another 41 Slayer, gotta love it. Not to mention 44 Prayer, all done by Big Bones. 42, 43, and the last level of this troll's task is gonna be 71 Strength. 
So I downloaded this really cool plugin that plays a nice jingle every time you complete a Slayer's task. Except I keep forgetting to turn my music on. New task? Basilisks. Ba ba basilisks. Fuck. 44 Slayer. Slayer levels are definitely slowing down. We got 45 Slayer and we're almost done with this task as well. That's what plays every time I complete a task now and I love it. Alright everybody, as you can see, we're probably going to take on his spory. We've got a full setup of sharks. Could probably use some Karambans, but we haven't gotten there yet. This is what the setup looks like. Ring of life. Just because, you know, I don't want to die. Amulet of power. Haven't gotten an upgrade for that yet. And of course, we got the rune stuff. So if we can do any better than that, let's give it a try. So... Give it a sip of all of our different things. And let's get in there. Wish me luck, everybody. I tried to move. Okay, there it is. I don't know why we were on lunge there. Not doing terrible, but I could definitely use a better weapon than this. Probably not going to be able to kill it this time. Which is disappointing, for sure. But we know where the exit's at. I really should zoom out a little more so I can see the health, too. Yeah, I'm out of food. I think I'm gonna have to get out of here. Whew! Scary. Scary, scary, scary. I haven't done any bossing yet, but that was my pitiful attempt. What do you guys think? <laughs> that's all right i have to go back in there i'm gonna assume you get to keep the seed but probably not so we'll see how it goes when i head back round two for her spore is actually going pretty well for me right now if i must say so myself he was hitting hard the first round but in round number two he comes out like a bitch <laughs> things that we changed all i did was add one more prayer potion and honestly, I didn't even use a full player potion this time. Hopefully you guys could hear my dog flapping his ears in the background. He makes, he really likes to make an appearance all the time. And apparently this guy dancing does too. And one new collection log slot, the Kronos Seed. That actually gets us faster crop growth as long as the seed is planted. And we can't forget to replant Hespori. We'll be real sad if we do. All right, sweet thing, I'll see you in another day. Laying waste to yet another boss we're able to fight, that's Bryo Fida. We've actually got three kills for this old girl, and down she goes. The first thing we get, clue scroll beginner, obviously very nice. And ooh, a hundred law runes? Wow, that's basically a teleport in the house already set. And with a few brand new combat tasks as well. We're going to try our best to complete as many of those as we can, but we don't have access to poison just yet, so we can't complete them all. Ooh, boy, do I hate the fact that you have to take the key with you at all. I, I really, really wish I could just fit on a key ring or something. You know, I guarantee this guy thinks I'm a fucking idiot. I forgot the key twice, and I don't even have 2kc. I just realized I totally forgot to bring a prayer potion. <laughs> Good thing Briofide is basically a joke. Okay, so I totally get not being able to use the D long sword. Totally fine. But what in the hell is with this? Sharks are members objects? Fishing's a free skill. What the hell happened? I don't know why, this just blows my mind. <laughs> so we have a combat task, and that's beat Bryo Fida in a free-to-play world. We're trying our best to do that here with uh, some pretty scuff gear, if I might say. Baronite Mace, no potions, we gotta eat swordfish, now we're out of prayer. I'm sure it'll be fine. Just a little bit more. Perfect. That's our free-to-play kill. 
<laughs> Fighting as intended, huh? Ooh, and we got some runite bars. And here we go. Second Hispori kill count. Done and over with. <laughs> there we go. 77 farming. And Atlas seeds. Oh, also, something else I want to point out. I forgot my one-click teleport. Good thing I didn't DC or something. <laughs> oh, come on. It's just one more. Get him. Come on. One more hit. <laughs> you would hit a 16. <sighs> there we go. Well, nothing new for us this time, everybody, and that's going to be the final Hispori kill. We did a little bit of bossing, if you can call them bosses. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. We're going to start off the episode with my new favorite daily activity, daily in air quotes, and we even got a combat task, the Hesporian. Now, let's see if we get the pet. Nope, no pet, but we did get the last seed that we need. There we go, 66 hit points during some Hellhound Slayer, and 46 Slayer to boot. Now I don't know about you guys, but I don't think I'm really a fan of all of this purple around here. Like deep purple in the Catacomba Karens, the HD version might not be an improvement. And we can't forget about 47 Slayer while we're here. With that beautiful sound, that means our task is done, and we're even pulling in a 73 fletching from all of that. Now we can even make onyx-tipped runite bolts. Probably never will. <laughs> Spory kill count number 5, and nope, nothing new or a pet. Quickly completing the giant dwarf, and it actually has a massive XP drop of so many different skills. And we're actually able to pull out 48 magic from all that too. Completing a forgettable tale, but now we can brew some ale. Hey, Spory kill count number six. Since we were so close from that last drop, I figured I'd go get 78 farming from these teak trees. Do you think this could be my version of the thinking in a lab transition? And here we've got the train station from another slice of ham. And let's be honest, nobody's literally ever used this train station except for an achievement task. But, 45 prayer never hurt anybody. That actually unlocks mystic might for us too. Quickly pulling out 49 magic enchanting a couple of things that we were able to enchant. Now we can do ruby jewelry and ruby tipped bolts. We got 50 magic making this fancy new transport system. That's the dig site pendant and it's going to be so much easier to get to fossil island now. Ugh, I just came in here and the root light timer said it was all done, but it's not all done. Don't always trust those. <laughs> so what do you do with your downtime? Steal some money. That's going to be 78 thieving. And that's not the only thing. 79 thieving, pretty much right after it. We needed money, what can I say? Uh, spory kill count number 7. Mm, nothing new. So let's just all be honest with ourselves. This quest is stupid. I really hate having to be a stealth person when there's just no aspect of stealth in this game whatsoever. It just doesn't make any sense and I've been here for like half hour now. Okay, I made it in. This should be easy enough. There's literally no guards in the hall and I'm just gonna wait for him to get out of the... Dude, what? How? I've spent so long behind this wall, the dude thinks I'm gone already. See? Okay, so I'm starting to think that that option that it gave you ahead of time would have prevented this. <clears throat> That's another three hours. Okay, I started fishing Coron Bonds in the meantime, but the three hours is up, and so is the Rat Catcher quest. Aside from the fact that you actually need this talisman, do you guys think this is the worst quest reward ever? romance and our reward is uncut gems a brand new sitcom coming out this fall Falador 
guards. Um, pleading the Garden of Tranquility does not get you respect from the Queen, but it does get you a couple of seeds and an activated chorus ring. Speaking of Mother Load Mine, nobody mentioned it, but I actually got a hundred nuggets and I'm gonna pick up a coal bag in the meantime. Uh, I would get the gem bag, but I don't have anything that gives me more gems, so the coal it is. You know, I really kind of built Hesporia up a lot in my head. It's not that big of a deal. It's actually one of the quickest boss fights that you can get through, and it has one mechanic that you have to dodge, so it's pretty much all good. As long as you have your teleport out, you're all fine. It's pretty much... What? <laughs> I did not mean to click that, god dang it. Alright, I'm on my way back. Here's Spore Kill Count number 8. 80 thieving, and I can't remember if it's this one or the next one that's actually a milestone, so that way I can start getting more of the better seeds from Master Farmers. Alright, so I'm finally going to do the responsible thing and use my money on buying runes. <laughs> and that actually got 51 magic, and we're going to sit here for a little while, see if we can't get a couple mossy keys too. 52 magic, and I just missed it. 53 magic just a few minutes later. 54, we're so close to the goal. And that's 55 magic, everybody. That is a very important magic level because now we're able to high elk things. And that's basically how I'm going to get my money for the rest of this game. So when you do your farm runs and you're a little bit of a hoarder like me, you're able to do something like this. 56 herb lore. Actually 57, but who's counting? 58 herb lore, and that's actually a really important herb lore level because we're able to use the herb sack, and that's going to make Slayer so much easier. 59 herb lore, and we're actually able to clean some snapdragons. And then that puts us at 60 herb lore, which is actually very important again because now we can finally make a weapon poison and get a combat task at Bryophyta. Quick reminder of how hard it's going to be for me to get all the points to get an herb sack. But at 79 farming, we got a ways to go. I always said don't join a cult. I went ahead and joined a cult and look where it got me. I just witnessed a murder. I know what you're thinking, but it's a different cult. They're actually kind of nice. Except for this guy in the middle, he just showed up. Now we got Shadow of the Storm all done and over, and we threw all the XP into strength. We're gonna train that up as much as we can till we need attack. Do 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 do. Just gonna fight his spore. Gonna fight him right in the morning. Gotta drink all my potions. Mm -mm -mm, gotta love it. Oh shit! I just realized I don't have any prayer. Start the fight anyway. Sure, fuck it. <laughs> if you guys didn't realize, this is a clip of me fucking up so hard that I actually have to start and leave. I always think it looks funny when somebody walks in when you're just about to beat Hispori. They start dancing for you because of the Dance Party app. My mandatory agility level. If I don't make it mandatory, I'll never do it. But hey, the Slayer Tower shortcuts, something I might actually use. Now I said it earlier, and we're gonna do it. We gotta get a combat task for Brow Fighter, and that requires one of the best poison weapons in the game, the Dragon Dagger. So we've got two Brow Fighter tasks left. That's kill it with poison, and kill it five times. We should honestly be able to achieve both of those right here and now with our new Dragon Dagger, so let's give it a go. Just gotta wait. For it to die. <laughs> I'm more poison. Come on. I know you're poisoned. Oh, come on. Okay, now one more poison. <laughs> Give me something to do while I wait for this to die. There it is. Perfect. That kind of sucks that I still have to kill these things, though. No run energy, but that never stopped us before. I feel like something was supposed to happen there, and that definitely looked like it was lagging. I'm honestly not even scared of any bosses, I'm just scared of DCing during a boss, because, you know, Jagex. Well, we've got a bronze defender right here, and it was actually really quick. It was in the first couple of kills. Whew, man, that was so quick. All right, iron defender, still the same inventory. Can't hate it, can't hate it. 
Yes, Steel Defender. My God, where are we at even? <laughs> oh, geez. 32 kills and I'm already on the Steel Defender. This is starting to feel like a spoon. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. And we're coming in with 73 strength. Wait a minute. I've never got to click a strength level before. 74 strength and we're still grinding out Cyclopses for the next defender. <gasps> oh, oh my god, there it is. What did that take? Oh my god, what did that take? 374 Cyclops kills. There was about 320 or 30 kills between defenders. Oh my god, that's just... That's discouraging. Oh, <laughs> I'm so not used to getting these. I actually just missed the pop-up notification, but that's the Mithril Defender. And we got it in like 10 kills. Oh no, don't try to make it up to me now, game. I was already dry for like 300. Totally just missed that hit points level, but who really keeps track of those? Perfect. Honestly, it was like another 30 minutes, but I got the Adamant Defender. It's not no 300 kills. Baby, here it is. We got that Rune Defender. How long did it take us? How long did it take us? All right, that's 528 kills. Now you know what you need to do, guys. Leave when you got yours down in the comments. How long did it take you to get a Rune Defender? And of course, that's not the only one that we got to look for. Now we can go in the basement, if I ever stop fighting this guy. <laughs> now we can go in the basement and get the Dragon Defender. Our first real upgrade for combat. One more beautiful strength level at 75 strength. It's actually getting up there. Dang, there we go. Shoot, this is only my second trip in. Honestly, I've killed like 50? And it's one in 100, actually. You know, funny enough, getting spooned every other defender still didn't make up for getting dry on that one. But when we unlocked high alchemy, we never actually alked anything. So there's a lot of things we need to get out of the way in our bank. And this is one of the last things that we're gonna need to elk. And I will say that most of the stuff that I just elked came from this grind. So pretty much I profited like 300, probably like 200, but like 300K from all of this. And if you're curious where the cash stack is at right now, we've got like 700K, we can almost buy a cannon. As always, there's a few things that I do off camera that aren't necessarily important, but I figured I'd just mention it today. I've made all of the tiaras for any rune crafting that I might be able to do in the future. Now we just need the nature one. We got one more Hispori kill under our belt, and that actually makes 10 Hispori kills this time, and something fancy happened. No, not the combat task. Actually, a friend of mine, IRL, walked in <laughs> as soon as I killed him, and he was the one who did the dance party for me this time. Against his will, of course. It's the plugin that makes them do that. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it off from you here today. Pest control is one of those grinds that you don't want to see on camera, and, you know, I don't really want to do it on camera. So I'm going to leave you off with a little sneak peek for next episode. The very first thing we can unlock from the Pest Control Collection Log is the Void Knight Seal. And we'll probably never buy one of those again. <laughs> Welcome back everybody. We're going to start off with some giant killing in the morning. And we've actually got our very first curve bone of the account. Some great construction XP later. And you know we're not doing this for nothing. We got 76 strength out of all that. It's been a little while since we got one of these. But nice. 69 hit points. Oh my god, everybody, but this is the first death of the account. But that doesn't actually count. It's just pest control. <laughs> so I left you guys off with a little bit of a cliffhanger last time. We were at pest control, and I was saying we kind of wanted to get the whole set but my attention span says that we're gonna whittle this away one at a time. So we got our Void Mage Helm and we're gonna move on for today. Level 80 farming. And I wanna go ahead and show this. This is an example of a fail that I just went ahead and stuck through like the whole time. I had enough food, I had enough supplies. So I only brought two kinds of magic and you need all four. But eventually I still get them anyway through the power of patience. 
And with that, we got Horror from the Deep done and over with, with two quest points, strength range, and magic XT, XP. But most importantly, we get ourselves a godbook. And I didn't really have a preference, so I just went ahead and chose the Zamorak godbook. Now go ahead and leave down in the comments, everybody, what godbook do you choose for the first one? And arguably, the most important range training quest you can do, Animal Magnetism. And we were actually really lucky. We got the second device in the Avis, so we didn't have to go ahead and upgrade the first one. Just working on my spicy stews, and this little guy just leveled up to the Hellcat. Imagine if all of the pets had some sort of training aspect, almost like Pokemon. Here you go, Sir Dave. And we got some cooking experience out of this, but most importantly, a Hellcat. Since we got some cooking XP from the last quest and we weren't that far away, I figured we should cook up the rest of our Corombrons. And now that actually gets us to 84 cooking, and we can start cooking the anglerfish too. Real endgame food preparation starts now. I want to go ahead and give my obligatory, if you haven't checked out the Halloween event, you guys really should. It's really funny. If they could just write most of the quests kind of like they've been writing these things here, I wouldn't have a problem with a good majority of them. And honestly, some of the quests should get a revamp for having the, what is it, cutscenes be like this instead of the just hold spacebar kind of a cutscene. Because you know no one's interacting with that. I've always kind of been considered a homebody, so we're going to work on our home situation. Something you should always be aware of, but we're going to put the study in our POH today. Right next to our study, obviously, should be the menagerie, and an outdoor menagerie, of course, because it doesn't rain in here, and of course, a dining table for all of the guests that I can't have in my dining room. And when it comes to portal selection, there's not very much that we have available to us just right offhand, and we can probably change them later. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick Varrock. Portal number two. Let's go ahead and direct this towards Camelot. I can't really get there very easy, except for spending room. Hey there everybody, and welcome. welcome to Give a quick little tour around here. We got the parlor. We got our workstations over here and a kitchen too, for which I am appropriately dressed. After that, we're looking at a skills hall. Obviously lots of things in the skills hall. And downstairs, another skills hall, which will probably lead into a dungeon eventually, so that way I can boost my construction levels. After that, a fancy little portal room, and yes, I know, a lot of the things in here are not ever going to be able to be used, but they look nice. So, that's why I got the tip jar here, and probably the most useful for anyone who plays this game, the costume room. Go ahead and put away anything that you want to keep for Fashionscape in these drawers right over here. After all that, we've got the observatory, and of course, we need to start upgrading this telescope so that way we can start getting some shooting stars easier and easier. And I'm sure you guys have already noticed that we have a few friends out in the back. One golem, hellcat, and a phoenix. We're working on collecting more friends, guys, I promise. After that, the mahogany dining table. And a bell for my butler if I ever get one. We've got the prey altar, which conveniently enough I needed to refill my prayer. After that, let's go ahead and take a look at the upstairs. One bedroom, two bedroom, the exact same, just on a different angle. And we even have a games room. Yeah, it's not really going to be used, I understand. But, then we're going to look over to the fighting arena, and we even have a combat dummy, which is pretty nice for figuring out our max hit. So right now, unarmed, it's 9. But that's my uh, version of RuneScape Cribs, everybody. What do you guys think? You know, I really wasn't sure if these frog tokens did anything. 
but you can actually get the prince uniform and frog mask and if i go change my sex i can also go get the princess uniform as well so not so bad gonna go ahead and throw those in the poh and never look at them again one quick ranged upgrade that i for some reason keep overlooking now we have a green dehyde body Huspori kill number 11 with nothing to show for it. I don't really know what the problem was here, but it wouldn't let me take any screenshots in this area. But this area really needs to have something else done to it, because look just how cool it is. There needs to be something else in here. Okay, I've cured your queen. Let's see. Oh, I, I have to solve a puzzle first. Great. This Your queen's dying right next to you. But okay, now she's cured. <laughs> to cure a queen? Fairy Tale Part 2, and that gave us a decent amount of herb lore and thieving experience, but we already had fairy ring access. And I probably don't have to show it every time, but I will. Going straight to herb lore and it doesn't get us anywhere close to a level. I just want the Bryo's Essence. Oh, Room plate legs. Don't have those, right? What is up, everybody? We're gonna go ahead and do a quick casket opening, and we've got some mystery boxes to open too. Hey, easy clue. <laughs> We've actually kind of gotten pretty lucky out of these mystery boxes so far. 45 death runes, a scimitar, a steel plate body, another casket, diamond, and an easy clue. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. But the real reason why we're here, everybody, let's open up a couple of beginner caskets. And we're not necessarily very lucky to start off here. But let's see if we can't turn that around. Oh. Actually, I was hoping that'd be a battle staff, and it definitely wasn't. <laughs> Our next beginner clue. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. Okay. So we officially got nothing from our beginner clues. And Amulet of Magic, already got that. Couple of runes, never hurts. Ooh, purple sweets. And... <laughs> A black cane. We literally already have this unique. We are not doing so hot. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> I guess I should have. Wow. I guess I should have chose the Guthix. Oh, okay. Finally, something cool. We got a Willow combo. We could actually go big chompy bird hunting with this thing here. Oh, green fire lighter. <laughs> no way. All right, let's see if we can get anything from these few mediums we've got. Oh, okay, another upgrade to the bow for choppy bird hunting or studded arrows. Amulet of power and a master clue. Uh, I'm probably not gonna be able to complete this for a really long time. Okay, okay. Ooh, there we go, we got a bando smiter. It doesn't necessarily complete anything for us, but we'll throw that in the POH because we already have a fancy hat. Oh, <laughs> very nice, very nice. Morton teleports, but most importantly, we got the Mithril. Yes, the Mithril Full Helm Gilded G. Yeah, I picked the Master Clue up. Why not? We'll keep it. Do a little bit of sorting of all of this stuff here. We did actually get two fire battle stabs, so. What the f- Honestly, this right here is the reason why I don't want to do any, like, extreme bossing. Because it doesn't even give me, like, a DC warning. It just kicks me out. Definitely not scared of bosses, just scared of Jagex. Fly, fly, my new creation. <laughs> Isn't this kind of like the science deniers of your time? An enlightened journey done and over with. We've got one of the best outfits in the game and loon transport access, which is most importantly what comes from this quest. Big chumpy bird hunter done and over and it doesn't get us very much experience, but it gets us a chance at a very, very easy pet. Zogar flesh eaters is over and you know, the cure mechanic really should be something a little more fleshed out because it does not make a lot of sense why I'm afflicted with disease and it just takes down my stat. <laughs> oh shoot, we just got 57 range on like the most random of wolves trying to attack me while I was getting wolf bones. Oh, 
Oh man, we haven't actually seen this one in a long time, but that's a 420, and that is the only other number in the entire English language that we give a nice. And obviously nothing from Hispori. All right, everybody, be proud of me. I know, I know, it's a monumental day, and we should all share this together. My first birdhouse run. It's a lot easier than you might think, but for some reason, I just don't really get any seeds out of the birdhouses that I'm filling. Is there something I'm doing wrong? I am, of course, just using the lowest amount of seeds that I can. Does the seed uh, that I choose to put in the birdhouse affect like the willow or maple seeds that I get because I haven't gotten any of those yet. 85 cooking because I ran out of food for doing dangerous things. Not to mention we're actually able to make wild pies and if we really wanted to, we could make an infernal harpoon, but we probably won't. I swear to God, I get better seeds from Hospori than any birdhouse run. Four minutes flat, it's gonna be kinda hard to beat the, <laughs> hey, 81 farming. Gotta appreciate that. Only three more levels until we get the next tier of the farming guild. And here's another monumental moment for us, everybody. Because of Hispori, not birdhouse runs, we were actually able to complete our very next farm contract. And what are we gonna do with that bad boy? Of course, get another farm contract. Oh, magic tree. Luckily enough, I actually have one, just one, in the bank. Can we get anything good from this seed pack here? Uh, nothing amazing, but we did get watermelon seeds and some tree seeds. 77 wood cutting. It's those login levels that you really gotta love. I've only been here about five minutes. Fresh crab shell. Is that good? Is that good? What's that for? Did I win? I swear to God, I almost just ate that fish cake. <laughs> but there you go, Pirate Pete. I bet you guys didn't think we would get a pet this episode. All right, it's, it's not really like a traditional pet, but it's still a living animal that I have to take care of. Yes, sir, I would love a cup of tea. And that actually means we've completed all of the candor and easy achievement diary tasks. What do you got for me, the wedge? Just a candor and helmet and another experience lamp. Where are we gonna put this thing? Herbler? Construction. Herbler? Construction. Herbler? Construction. Mm, herbler. Always herbler. Nothing new. One water rune. One iron ore. One special little anchovy. And that's how easy the Lumbridge Easy Diary is to complete, everybody. This gets us the Explorer's Ring, and it probably doesn't have a teleport to the farming patch just yet, but that's what we're looking for. And of course, we're gonna put it on Herblor. I second guess myself a lot, but we're halfway through through the level. Don't ask what I'm doing, just know I got 77 strength. Spirit of the Iliad done and over with. And this actually unlocks the Narda Shrine. Oh, and it looks like we've got level 46 prayer. But also we've got level 1525 total level. When people speak of training, some people think they're fine, but they all just seem jealous. But my fire making's 99. Fucking all around this goddamn province, and the second I fucking get here, the ghost is moved. And now I go through, read the wiki, try to find everything I can, and it's telling me, don't use ranged gear. <sighs> So as you guys can probably tell from the last clips, I love this quest. But the only actual cool thing about this quest here is if you have a high enough crafting level, you can beat this guy and get a special little sword to go with it. So this is a time lapse of like six minute fight, but this dude just gets destroyed by rings of recoil. And through all of that, we're able to get the Fremenic Blade. And with that fight done and over, that also means the Fremenic Trials are over as well. So what do you guys think about this little design here? Do you think this could be the old nature rune? Maybe. Like a thrown away design that they just didn't use after a little while? Or do you think it was a different kind of element that we would have had in the game? Either way, what do you guys think? You know, there's really got to be an easier way to prove that you've killed something. Like, can't someone just come with me? 
the second quest in the series of the Fremenic Isles is finally done. And that actually got us a lot of woodcutting experience. But the level that we get is of course crafting because it's so low. With a dragon stone finally able to be cut, we have a few of those in the bank. Oh, and a construction level too. Didn't even see that one coming. So usually this is really, really frustrating. I don't know if they like changed it or something, but I got through pretty much like the first like six tries and it'd usually take you like 20. But we've completed Edgar's Ruse, everybody. And with every single lamp that we've gotten so far, this is the heaviest Herblor experience drop we've gotten all episode. At 61 Herblor, we can make magic essence, but we won't. You know, could you imagine if Serachnus or Venonatus had a recolor kind of like this? I'd be all the way down for that. Underground Past is over, and honestly, it's not that bad as long as you have a high thieving and agility level. But that does get us a lot of mage improvements, like the Zamorak robes, the Ivan Blast, and Staff, and we're gonna go imbue that too. You know, I know, I know there's like a saying about like sailors that drink a lot, but this is ridiculous. Just absolutely ridiculous. I can't find a single sober person around here. I've got a couple of questions about the safety here, but I'll ignore it. Here's a quest some people get done in the first hour of gameplay when you start an account. Sea Slug. Also, something cool about getting your staff of Iben upgraded is I'm currently out of Iben staff charges. So I was thinking maybe I'd have to, you know, use the 100k to charge it and then use 200k to upgrade it. But that's actually not the case. It's really, really cool. All you have to do is upgrade it and you end up with full Iben charges. Not only is it a medium task in the Ardorn area, but we got 2,500 charges for our staff. So I figured out Taibo Wani has a favor system, and I'm pretty low down on the favor. And we're here to change that. We're at 99% favor, and we only have 1% left. So we're going to knock this out of the way. And honestly, it doesn't even take all that long. Oh. <laughs> Another broody victim. Honestly, this right here is just something you will run away from. You don't want to fight a broody victim. Not because we can't. But because we're doing shit and we got like 1% left. God damn. <laughs> but other than that, everybody, that's where we're going to call it an end today. With 100% Taibo Wanai favor. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to start off with a farming contract completed. And ooh, we actually got a couple of tree seeds and some more cactus seeds, too. So that's awesome. Here's Spory Kill Count number 15. Let's see if we can get anything awesome. Ooh, my gosh, the bottomless compost bucket. That's basically the only thing we were looking for over here. Except for, of course, the pet, but that'll come naturally through farming. In real time, it's the weekend, so I have one more Hispori Kill to log in and get. Let's see if we can get anything from Kill Count number 16. Well, nothing really, but I'll take whatever I can get. Squire, Dirty Bob, you are needed to serve the Kingdom of Kandarin. The Wall of Voyage has been reopened. We must discuss your next commission. <laughs> okay, so let's see what we can get out of that seed pack. Another farming contract done and over with. And it's looking like a bunch of herb seeds, which we love. Look at the strength on this guy. My god, he just throws people like nothing. Yeah, I'll take care of him, don't you worry. Oh my god, he just did it again! <laughs> the mystery dwarf is so dead! I totally would have included this in my random events video. This big rock snow match for my big car. From completing my arm's big adventure, we've got 10,000 herb lore XP, 5,000 farming XP, and a disease free herb patch. You gotta love it. Catch a bluebird, kill five rocks. Chop this and burn that. Go to the well one too many times. One TR for the queen. And all we need was five snape grass. But I'm broke, so I'm getting it all. One final bakery thievery. And I do believe I've earned these boots, sir, so please hand them over. I'll actually try to put the rewards up on screen for completing the Fremenic Easy Diaries. And this actually awards us the Fremenic Boots, which will give us a teleport to the Fremenic area, which is sorely needed. And let's go ahead and throw this lamp right onto Herblor. A cool 2,500 XP right in the bank. 
It's so cool they immortalized Cornelio in the game. And if they didn't, I'm gonna push it like the old knight. The slug menace done and over with, and we got crafting, rune crafting, and thieving XP, and a promotion to the Prostolite. With 41 rune crafting, of course, we can't forget about that. But the Prostolite armor is actually really, really important for our gear for us. It's basically filling out one piece of our Slayer equipment that we didn't have in the past. Now this head's a little bit ridiculous. Gotta make a head just to show the trophy, and it's a fake one on his wall. Quick side quest, let's go ahead and grab these books off of the shelf. We might even come back to kill these undread druids just to see if we can get the black mask off of them, but it's one in a thousand. Alright everybody, this is my life for the next little bit. I'm just gonna be sitting here hoping that I get all of the pages. We need 12 of them, 4 from each book. But the important thing that I was trying to show you is... We were just awarded with a Weapon Poison Plus Plus. And don't forget about 70 hit points. I always forget about my hit points level. It's gonna sneak up on me every time, I swear. 154 spiders down and we still only have three pages, so wish me luck. Oh, lucky enough we managed to get a grubby key out of here with some ranging and super defense with a little food. Not bad. <laughs> wow, well, not even five minutes later we get another grubby key. I gotta love it. All right, give me something better than potatoes. What do we got? Oh, okay. Dragon dark tips. I will take that. I will definitely take that. Can't use it yet. Oh my gosh, I was just about to leave because I was out of prayer potions, but that's the last page, everybody. My gosh. It was such a long grind for me, but probably a couple of seconds for you. Now let's go ahead and turn him in. Okay, so this guy's more than kind of a prick. He just told me to shut the hell up, but we're gonna give him the books anyway. <laughs> and when you go ahead and give him the books, he'll start accepting any repeat pages for about a thousand gold each. And then the best part, of course, is the antique lamp for 10,000 herbal or experience. Architectural Alliance nearly completed. This is how I sculpt at home too. I just throw rocks at it. Mini quests really should have quest completion signs, but another herb lore experience lamp, and this one actually gets us to level 62 herb lore. <laughs> no way. I am now a penguin. A weapon for their destruction. The cutest weapon you ever seen. Penguin. The penguin agility course is so much fun. Sliding on my belly in front of everyone. I don't know why, but I end up in this position a lot during this episode. It's almost ridiculous. <laughs> Alright, the penguin tank is unleashed. Completing the Cold War, that actually gives us access to the Iceberg. 500 or 5,000 agility, 2,000 crafting, and 1,500 construction. So this is pretty much a noob thing that I haven't done yet, but we need to get the Boots of Lightness. Uh, we don't actually need to, we're just doing a quest that is pretty much already here, so no point in either than a knight. So here he is, he's dead, and we've completed the Temple of Igov. This animation is so cool, I really wish I could get the animation like green screened, put on a intro, put just everywhere. I love it. So this is kind of a weird quest. It asks you if you want the experience from completing the quest. And I assume it's because there's defense XP there, which is actually really, really cool. And almost like you could give out an experience lamp and make it optional. I hate the fact that these side quests don't have a completion screen. I was sitting here thinking I had to do something else with it. I don't. I didn't do it earlier because I didn't have the cash on me, but here's the Prostolite gear. Anytime we just need a little extra prayer, we're gonna whip this bad boy out. And here's the stats for everything. 58 magic. And we were just enchanting a couple of things. Teleport to the watchtower unlocked. I really have no idea why this happens, but I swear to God, I have to log in click this button for like a week and a half straight and then after a while it'll stop asking for my authenticator it's so weird this one's actually kind of funny you can see this guy in the background he's pretty much doing the exact same thing i am except he has a safe spot for it 
Which is like, okay, yeah. I guess some ogre can kind of be difficult if you're a low level. But, uh... <laughs> he's just about the same level as I am. Alright, whatever. Climb down this wall. Pick his pocket. Slide right in this crack. I totally messed up the recording for that, so I'm going to do it again on camera. Telegrab this wine. <laughs> and get beat up in the process. That's Bori kill count number 17, and we got a couple of white berry seeds this time. Oh, oh shoot. I have no idea why, but I don't even think about this as hunter training. But that's a hunter level of 58 from birdhouse runs. Hey everybody, this is a quick little reminder to go ahead and join the clan, send bobs if you're looking for a really chill clan. And honestly, I'll probably put one of these in a couple of my videos just to send you guys a little more reminders if you want to join or not. Okay, so we gotta get through this gap, I guess. I'm just gonna go... <laughs> what is going on? No, no, stop, please. Protect from melee? No. <laughs> wow. That was like 20 damage almost. So I tried to go in here with some ranged equipment and some melee equipment thinking, hey, he's far enough away. Maybe I can just get him with a bolt every now and then. But no, that, that didn't really work out for me. Ranged kind of really screwed me up. It put me in places I didn't want to be. So if you were going to try this, I would do purely melee like I did. Unfortunately, it was on my second attempt, but this time I actually brought a couple of potions and he went down like a little bitch. Completing <laughs> the quest and we're able to make salve amulets now. And that actually got us 22,000 strength XP. Nothing to laugh at. Take the plane to Gondius. Take it back to the Grand Tree. No, 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 back to Gondius. Look like you're gonna die, but don't actually die. And you end up in prison. And all you do is stand next to the door and smack. After that, we finally got out of the prison here. And apparently there's a bunch of scorpions on the ground. And they can hit 15s? Which is ridiculous. I got two right next to me. And this one just wants to play. I really do spend too much time in this position in this episode. Good click rate, though. Oh, no, no, no. Don't go up the... Back to jail. So I took a plane to Gandia. Finally got to this guy in the bottom of the whole goddamn cave. The worst cave you could possibly be in, I tell you what. And I took another plane to Gandia. One of the more dangerous things that you actually have to do in this quest is run by these big ass gorillas. But luckily, I know that if you go up the stairs and then down this ladder, you don't end up getting stuck when you're trying to go down. Because. I've been stuck trying to go down before on a few different accounts. Not this one though. I'm not gonna die right here. I promise. Haha. <laughs> Made it. Alright, let's see if going up is just as easy. Uh, oh my. Uh, go up the stair ladder. Ladder. Um, please? No, I saw Solo Mission die just like this. I don't want to... Oh my god, thank you so much. Okay, so let's talk to this baby monkey child. Oh, I hate the ant. I've been in jail way too many times today. Dude, I swear to god, if I have to come through this tunnel one more time, I'm just gonna leave you here. Like, no ifs, ands, or buts. I'm not coming through again. What do you know? I took a plane to Gandhi's. Yeah, that's right. I'm a monkey. And you know what? I got protect from range on too. I don't trust nothing. Double prepared. Triple bag that shit. And truthfully, the hardest part of this entire quest. No, I'm just kidding. There's a safe spot for this. I'm just stupid enough to go in here with protect from range instead of protect from mage. After turning off auto retaliate, I stopped doing stupid moving back and forth motions and the fight actually begins. The uh, safe spot fight, I mean, uh, I didn't put up any of a fight and neither did he. He was just standing there and I protected from magic. But it was total bullshit. I didn't know that he healed for 20. 
Like, do I have to get the final hit or does he always just heal for 20? I feel like I kind of remember that happening, but not really. Oh well, he's dead now. I haven't completed the quest yet, but I just want to see, is it in stock yet? No, it is not in stock, or a lot of people have been buying it. Either way, I'm coming right back for that. And that's Monkey Madness 1 done and over with. We got 10,000 coins and 3 diamonds with access to Ape Atoll. Is that it? No, that's not it. We've got to go to the training grounds to prove ourselves in front of Darrow, or whatever his name is, or however you pronounce it. But we're focusing on strength and stamina, so let's see how we can pull out today. Look at those experience drops, 20 to 35,000 for each one of the combats. And let's go ahead and see the experience level ups. Shut the fuck up, Darrow. I want to see what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, 78 strength. We're looking at 61 attack and 61 defense too. Now that's a quest reward. Welcome back everybody to the 15th episode of the Hardcore Iron Monkey. We're gonna go ahead and pick up the Dragon Scimitar because we didn't pick it up last time and a couple of people actually pointed that out to me. Not in the comments, but a couple of my friends were like, huh? What the hell? <laughs> we got lots of quests on the agenda and a couple of skills to get out of the way. So without further ado, let's get underway. With 74 fletching, I fletch and woodcut at the same time to make it easier for myself. 78 woodcutting, everybody. There we go, everybody. 75 fletching. And we can even start making rune arrows. Once we finally get up to 80 fletching, we might even move over to the magic trees. And let's go ahead and get us a 79 wood cutting real quick. We have got 7,000 thieving experience completed from the contact quest. Not to mention a combat lamp and a curious. And, funny enough, the combat lamp was actually the inspiration for my lamps video. My what if video for what if quests only gave lamps. And if you guys want to check that out, I'll leave a thing, whatever they're called, up in the corner up here. And if you guys are curious which uh, combat I chose, I looked for prayer. There wasn't prayer, which, in my opinion, was an oversight. So I chose magic, because we really need to get to 6-6 six, six magic for the Wizards Guild. So this is the other side of the AFK grind. We're cutting a lot of logs and turning them into unstrung bows. Now we need to string those bows and then elk them. Well, we don't need to, but that's how I'm planning to make some money. But I got to pick flax because of it. And if you guys actually know a better way to get flax other than like Zora right now, go ahead and let me know. Got about a thousand flax and it's time to spin it with 56 crafting in the making. We can make diamond necklaces and snake skin shields. I wonder if the snake skin shield is any better than the wooden shields we've been able to craft lately. Wow, you know, you just do a little bit of spinning here and there and you get another crafting level of 57. And with this one, we are actually able to make green dragon hide van braces. Might actually be worth the upgrade if I didn't already have it, I think. So stringing up a couple of things, we've got another fletching level, and we had actually maple longbows, and we also had a couple of yo short bows that we needed to elk up or at least get together, but we have a gigantic stack of these yo longbows that we've got to get through after all of these. So I did the first couple thousand first, and we're back to getting another wood cutting level. Stocking up the supplies for our alking. And we've got another fletching level of 77 along the way too. This actually means we're breaking well into the middle of the rune arrows and rune javelins. And that's level 81 woodcutting everybody. And I know what you're thinking, you know these levels actually take a long time between each other. You must have had to AFK for a long time, huh? Yes, I did, with 83 mining right in the bag. I had to AFK for almost two weeks while I was busy as could be doing so many different things. But now I'm back and on the grind, and you'll see 88 fishing right here. And after this, this should be the end of our AFK spree.
Now that I'm back to actually being able to actively play, we've got a couple of things to get out of the way. The achievement diary for Falador, the medium one being one of those, and we only had two tasks left from last episode. That was craft a basket, which is like useless, <laughs> and then it's make a scarecrow. Well, you didn't have to make the scarecrow. That's not part of the achievement diary. It's put a scarecrow in this one right here. You can only put it in a flower allotment patch, but this will actually mark the very last achievement and we need it for the Falador achieve Medium Achievement Diary. Congratulations, you have completed all the medium tasks in the Falador area. Please speak to Sir Reboot in Falador Castle. So ah, I couldn't make it. All right, Sir Rebril, what do you got for me? He's actually got an antique lamp and the upgraded shield of Falador. Soon, 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 we're going to have this detect the mole for us. I think that's in the hard or elite diary, I'm not sure. But, of course, you know we're going to be putting the lamp directly onto her blower. While I'm in the journaling mood, why don't we go ahead and do a couple more diary tasks? <laughs> that's actually one desert task completed. Another desert area task is stand in the sun in this brutal ass heat. No, not really. It's catch a Gordon wa golden wobbler. Or at least I hope that's how you pronounce it. Here he comes, and there we go, everybody. One desert test complete. And that is one more desert task complete. Oh, damn it. Okay, one more desert task complete. I brought all of my noted herbs just to see if she would do it. I don't think she does it for me yet, but she will eventually. Yes, please go ahead and do all my herbs. Yep, just the one. Kill one vulture. Dun, 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 I would totally play like Mortal Kombat music, but I'm pretty sure demonetization's a thing. And what another task in the desert area is gonna be claim this golden pyramid. Perfect. Oh, shit, it's a medium task. The actual task that we had to complete in this area was, for the easy diary I might add, just search the first sarcophagus. And there we go. Ah, run, zombie. Mummy. It's from Egypt. Don't be racist. It's not a zombie. It's a mummy. And after that, all we got to do is donate just a couple of these ancient artifacts, and we've completed the desert easy diary. So let's go ahead and kind of lame that desert amulet hello jar that's how i like to pronounce his names because there's two r's so he's a pirate to me <laughs> we've got the desert amulet and an antique lamp where are we gonna put it i bet you guys can guess that's herblor still no level but i'm working towards it i'm not gonna lie this kind of creeped me out when i was a kid and still kind of creeps me out now how about you guys all right, now it's time to cook this man a ridiculously shaped cake. Like, I'm pretty sure it'd be hard to make that shape just normally if you didn't have a question mark shape 10. But other than that, let's get this man some cake. And that actually completes Recipe for Disaster, The Lumbridge Guide. Getting us one quest point, 2,500 cooking XP, and the same for magic. But we've actually got one more glove access. Don't mind me just helping my good buddy Rance. He's out here able to kick a whole goddamn tree down, but he can't carve it himself evidently. So here we go. Chop that tree. Something everyone actually fails to remember is the RuneScape main character actually has a superpower, and that's boat building. He can build a boat almost instantly and canoe right down a river just like that. It's like a mode of fast travel or something. Speaking of fast travel, <laughs> oh, these guys, let's go ahead and use the boat. I have always wondered exactly why the very first option is eat on the food that they make you give to these people. It's like you just went so far out of your way to get this food, don't eat it. <laughs> but that's one quest point and a couple uh, splashes of experience everywhere else. It began. With the forging of the great rings, three were given to the elves, immortal, wisest, and fairest of all beings. Seven to the dwarf lords, 
great miners and craftsmen of the mountain halls, and nine, nine rings were gifted to the race of men. <laughs> Does anyone else get Lord of the Rings vibes from this? No? Just me? Yeah, I'm weird. There we go, everybody. That's the Eyes of Gloffrey completed. And we've got 12k magic XP, 6k rune crafting, and the weirdest inclusion of experience I've ever seen, 250 construction XP. <laughs> like, why even add it? <laughs> but we got 59 magic out of all that. And the use of fire blast. Oh, with 44 rune crafting. Look at that. I'm going to go ahead and pick the orange boy. Nope, 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 nope. Yes. Just like I got it home. Honestly, I never thought I'd come back to this weird tentacle dungeon anime monster, but, well, here we go. <laughs> and let's get out of here. It's weird. I've used so many mahogany planks, but I guess I made them all at the wood guild. Uh, huh. You know, I thought I've done this before. Mmm, but... All right, well, shit, let's go ahead and do it again. All right, well, it didn't go so well. And I didn't really understand why, because I thought I I made it. I thought I made it. <laughs> After a little bit of deliberation, we finally landed the balloon. All right, go figure. You have to actually put it on the landing pad. No, I, I might have just jumped out. <laughs> But the only thing we got left to do to complete the lumber, no, the rock task is just take this balloon somewhere else. Top completed. And the last one that we actually have to do for the Varrock medium diary is pick this lady's tree. I would have said bush, but it's inaccurate. Get over here, Toby. I got to tell you something. I've completed all the medium tasks. Thank you for my new chest plate and an antique lamp. I want to let you guys go ahead and guess down in the comments and really think about it real hard where we're going to put the lamp. <laughs> Herbler. Okay, well, let's go ahead and give this another try. Can I just walk? Okay, good. Apparently that's not an issue now. Circle, circle, circle. Holy shit, I made it. <laughs> and here we go, everybody. Olaf's quest is done and over with. We actually got 12k defense XP out of that, which is actually really nice. And 20,000 coins, so I guess I can't bitch too much. Except I will. That was terrible. I failed so many times. <laughs> Imagine, like, they were carrying somebody over and they just, like, fell asleep. I'm like, hey, get up, you lazy son of a... Quickly completing the tiers of Gethlix to gather our rune crafting experience just like every other person in the game. Not the best collection, but you know who really gives a shit. Alright, 89, let's see what it gets us. Ooh, level 45 rune crafting. I really need an earth talisman and I'm going dry on it. The weirdest thing to go dry on. But here's a ranger level of 58. After an entire 20 seconds of fails, we finally pickpocketed this one guy to complete a task in the Lumbridge area. I was too high a level or something when I got mine, so I got automatically started with the Ava's accumulator. But we need to upgrade an attractor to an accumulator to get a medium diary task completed. So that's what we did. <laughs> Here we go, fish a salmon. And you know, I always wonder what people who are like sitting there fishing like for a while Think about people like me who just run up with like no clothes on whatsoever and just like one fish out done probably one of the weirdest tasks i've encountered this whole time craft a coif in the middle of the cow field like who who's done this like without trying to complete the achievement diary and this right here makes one more task completed what do you guys think about a mithril crossbow belt Something you could put around your waist and it just always be around. And the last task in the medium lumberage area is make some combination runes, which we were able to do. And now let's go claim our prize. Completing the lumberage achievement diary actually makes our explorer's ring useful, giving it one full teleport. Well, not one full teleport, 
unlimited teleports to the Falador farming patch. And of course, where we gotta put that on Herblore. And to top it all off, everybody, we got 63 Herblore out of that too. And we can even make super restores. Shooting myself out of a cannon and I didn't even go to the circus. We've got Between a Rock done and over with 5,000 defense, mining, and smithing experience. And then another quest nobody really cares about all that much, and that's the hand in the sand. I'm just kidding, you really want to get the Wizard's Guild rune store access. <laughs> but other than that, we've got that quest completed, and we're just figuring out what it takes to actually get into the Magic Guild, and that's Magic of 66, seven levels away. I guess I should give my obligatory mention of, uh, oh my god, you can fish diagonally? What? Taking on one of, well, not really a very dangerous boss, but one I don't think we're ready for. So I've been taking this boat back and forth, back and forth, without even realizing this dude charges 10,000 coins for a two minute walk. Oh my God, who implemented this fee? And how rich is this chick behind me? She's been on it like eight times. This fight right here should have honestly been a prelude or at least what I was thinking could have happened for the next fight. It took me so long just to kill this one thing. But in the end, we finally got it done. So let's go ahead and see if we can kill Mr. Draken. And even though we have the magic prayer on, we're still getting trashed by the magic spells. And I'm not 100% sure what the hell is going on here. But whatever, every guide I watched was able to just tank all these magic spells Whew, okay cool cool <laughs> so other than that it was a sloppy start we started out with like a 30 and another 30 but it's still sloppy going on forward you might be thinking to yourself oh no you should totally be able to do this what do you mean you're at like 70 something 80 combat right yeah you can do this well, that's what I thought too, man. That's what I thought too. <laughs> but in the end, I just didn't have enough food, and here I am. Got a telly out. I, he didn't hit me with, like, a single one of his blood barrages while he was at his podium, so I was proud about myself for that. But, you know, when you're out of food and you only made it past the first round and you have four more, you just gotta call it quits. So we'll try that when we're at a higher level. Or have better gear, more like... All right, let's fight somebody I know I can beat to make me feel better. That's right, Master Tarn. And, wait, wait a minute, Tarn's dog? 100 and something, Tarn, 69. <laughs> okay, more scared of your dogs than I am you, Tarn. What's going on here? <laughs> Unfortunately, even though I knew I could beat this guy, it still took a long time. Everybody here does melee. But my gosh, does the prayer drain like a sieve? And I, it must just be me, but is that draining extra? Yeah, it's gotta be draining extra. <laughs> and down he goes, everybody. That's the last farm of Tarn. And we actually threw out seven, nope, 48 Slayer. <laughs> I was gonna say 7,000 Slayer XP, but it was only 5,000. <laughs> And of course, minor disappointment that there's no quest to achievement screen, but that's perfectly fine with me because we get this little cutscene. And why would I ever go out in that area now that I just realized I got another dog released? But until next time, everybody, we'll go ahead and finish it off with 82 farming. You gotta love the mahogany trees. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the first video in 2022. I figured I'd start the day off by completing a farming contract and getting us a couple of nice seeds. Mm, we only like the tree seeds around here. Let's kill Hospori. And speaking of, it's actually kill count number 18. What better way to get back into RuneScape than to do a little bit of questing? And I know there's a couple of quests that I've been really meaning to knock out. Like talking to this camel-headed guy. Go ahead. Pronounce that name, I dare ya, not mine, his, I dare ya. And with that, that's actually the completion of Etherin's Laminate. Well, it's actually the most important amulet you can get around because it's the Camulet. I can talk to camels now, that's important. 
And then we got one more little quest to do. I think you guys might have heard of it. The Heroes Quest gives like 20,000 XP and a bunch of different uh, kinds of skills. Wonderfully enough, we didn't even get a level up from any of them. <laughs> Actually completing one of the most important things that I can do for this account. Come on, one more. One more. You can do it. Perfect. <laughs> there we go. That's a hard diary complete. And with that, we are actually able to complete the Throne of Miscellanea. And this is actually really important for Iron Man. I've got an entire country of people going to submit themselves to me. And it's just for a little bit of money. And I chopped wood for like 20 minutes. So, easy. Let's take a look at how we gathered our resources. We're definitely gonna need to have yep yeah, mining I need coal so bad nobody needs fish I have a lot of fish wood I don't know you can get nests from wood but I really need herbs it's probably not gonna give you the best herbs I'm not exactly sure how that works but we'll see herbs and mining yeah I only got 10 grand in there so that's gonna last for about a day well, either way, I'm going to go get my track shoes on. And with one more lap to go, we actually got ourselves 62 agility. And, fancy enough, we can go to this hollow so poker. Level 2. Well, it looks like I'm in the agility mood, everybody, and I promise you that doesn't happen often. So we've got a Taverly shortcut, and we can even use the Darkmire shortcut, too. And with one more lap, we locked in 64 agility and that's probably going to be the end of the agility grind i'm not gonna lie i can't do much more but we got a wilderness <laughs> shortcut yeah i'm gonna use that right completely random casket opening i had one of each and i was like you know what screw it nothing out of there obviously <laughs> air runes oh okay green dehyde it's not so bad i mean i might have something better than that but you know what i can out it too and I tell you what, everybody, we got another crafting level. And, you know, I swear, I've never really formally trained this other than, like, cutting gems. <laughs> we can make earth battle staffs and diamond bracelets. 82 wood cutting. It's not really that much of a milestone. It's just 82 wood cutting. But this one's actually pretty awesome. We've got ourselves 70. Eight fletching there it goes <laughs> and that actually gets us dragon crossbows well there's a couple of steps in between me getting a dragon crossbow but we unlocked it <laughs> just a quick little lady three wood cutting right there <laughs> and just as quick we got 84 wood cutting as well and then 79 fletching everybody that's actually gonna get us nothing nothing but I'm going to go ahead and let you guys in on a little secret of mine. Uh, it's not necessarily a little secret. It's more like a tiny little frustration I have. It's one of the most commented things on one of my videos. And it's a temper us guide on how to do the fourth round. And everyone says, it's not possible or like something like that. And you know what? I don't have the time to go back and check literally every single time someone's like, no, they patched it. So it's like, all right, you know what? This is the definitive answer. Is it still possible to do the Temporos force round? Fourth round. Yes. Yes, it is. You just got to load both cannons evenly right at the end. But you know, there is actually a real tragedy here. I just realized my kill count's 399. There's no way I can't do another Temporos kill. And we're back at woodcutting, everybody. No real milestones here. It's just 85 woodcutting. But because we got 85 woodcutting, we are actually able to get this. It's going to be 80 fletching, everybody. That's a really important level for Iron Man because I've got the magic short bow able to be made. And that's finally a special attack for my range. You guys ever just been looking for some ammonite crabs? Been walking around this island and been like... Dude, fuck these trees. Put some crabs over here. Because <laughs> I have. Reason number 7,000 why combat levels annoy me. I didn't even get a pop-up for this thing. It was just like, yep, 71. And 86 wood cutting. One more wood cutting level like I'm a goddamn beaver. But I haven't seen one yet. Take this stuff off and go ahead and build ourselves an easy unit. 
<laughs> of course, I forgot my blanks. Let's get it going, everybody. One easy crate out of the way. Stash, yes, please. I'm hiding. Believe it or not, everybody, there was actually one last quest to complete this episode. A 2021 Christmas event. The first Christmas event I've done on this account. And you got so many cosmetics. But really, the most important thing here is the Christmas crackers. Don't do anything with your Christmas crackers. They'll end up selling for like millions if, you know, history repeats itself. This right here is one of the many joys I take in this game. Not pest control, but making a whole goddamn group of people dance for like 60 magic. And now they run and dance. <laughs> I don't know why it's so funny to me. So as you noticed, we're at pest control. <laughs> and I figured I'd let you guys know like where we're at in the collection log more or less of what we've done here. Because we've been here before and we got ourselves a void mage helm. It's nothing to show for, but you know, we got it. Totally missed the magic level of 61 because I was alking just way too hard. Sounds dirtier than it should. <laughs> but there it goes, that message disappearing in the shit talking. So we've been grinding pest control pretty good, and I want to show you guys how good. Let's get ourselves, yeah, that's right, 543 points. The Void Knight top, most important. Probably, hands down, the most important. And let's go ahead and get ourselves, yep, you guessed it, the robes too. They're not elite void, so it's not like as cool, but it's still like the first step. So yeah. <laughs> Would you just take a look at this handsome young gentleman and his brand new void? <laughs> all right, let's go get the helmets that actually matter. I haven't really been keeping you up to date with all of the levels we were getting at pest control because we were gonna get a few. So we got level 80 strength and 1575 total level. Now we're gonna switch on over to defense, get that up to 70. Well, maybe. What's up everybody, got another 250 points and I figured I'd check what I actually need to buy next. These clips aren't anywhere near close for me, but they're pretty close for you guys. Hopefully one after another. <laughs> but let's see what we can buy. Well, really, we should probably get ourselves a helmet. It's not like we need the mace or we need the gloves, so... Melee helmet, here we go. <laughs> well, I decided I gotta do it at some point, so I'm gonna do it now. Here we go. <laughs> Void Knight gloves. Let's go ahead and see us never use these ever again, just for the collection log. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. It's about that time to see which one we gotta buy. Cause yeah, that's how bad my memory is. <laughs> and I'd be mortified if I bought like double of a certain one. Okay, all right, we gotta buy the ranger helm. Let's do it. All right, scroll on down. Let's get it going. <laughs> Not the melee. All right, perfect. And honestly, this one probably looks the best. What do you guys think, everybody? Let's go ahead and slap it on our head and see what we got. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you could shoot me right out of a cannon. I look so good. And several hours later, we've actually accomplished almost, almost, completing the pest control collection log. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to buy the mace. Probably never gonna use the mace, but that's all right. <laughs> we can't get elite void just yet, and I'm not as much of a masochist as to get the points to get elite void right now. So we're gonna do that when that boat comes to us. <laughs> but right now, we've got to get the void mace in the collection log, and that's so beautiful. And honestly, I might as well see what we look like with full void on. There it is, everybody, looking sexy as ever. <laughs> but with this episode getting together and leagues coming up, I figured I'd let you guys know I'm going to be participating in leagues. So, you know, look out for that kind of content coming up soon. And it's five times XP rates. Will it be five times the video rates? Probably not, but we'll never know. <laughs> And honestly, I didn't really finish all the stuff I had to elk, so that's another 62 magic, and I figure I'll just finish what I got to elk while I'm here. 
And there it is, everybody, the last level of the episode, level 63, Magic. And with one more level to go before we're allowed in the Wizard's Tower. Of course, we did a little bit of AFKing while we were doing Leagues, but this is actually the account that was on Leagues, so it's not like we could actually use it very much. So there's a couple of levels that we were able to knock out in the meantime, like 81 Fletching and 87 Woodcutting to go with it. And another something that happened while Leagues was going on was the birthday event for RuneScape. And this is one of the best outfits that you can get in the entire game. But this year they're featuring sand skis. Interesting. <laughs> but here it is, the black outfit, the anniversary set. We should pretty much always do the RuneScape anniversary events. Or pretty much any RuneScape event. They end up paying you for it anyway, like those half jugs of wine. They end up being about 25k. But something we're able to get back into rather easy is Slayer. And we're able to pick up a pair of steel boots while we are knocking out one of these harpy bug swarm tasks. I dare anyone to say that five times fast. One of our combat stats that is severely lacking would be ranged, and that's why we're working on it now. But it's actually all the way up to level 59. Nothing cool happens at level 59 anyway. It's the next level we care about. A lot like level 49 Slayer. You unlock nothing. Ah. Hey, there we go. Level 69 defense with another Harpy Bug Swarm task. And quick as that, we've got level 50 Slayer in the bag. And there was only one thing left to do a part of the Cantifus Easy Diary, and that was place this scarecrow down. Now let's go claim our rewards. When it comes to Iron Man accounts, there's really only one safe bet to put this on, and that's of course Herblore. And it doesn't do much for us because it's not actually that much. But we got ourselves some Mortania legs, and you know I gotta use them. So, huh, kind of a cool teleport. Oh, and it brings us all the way down here. This is the funny thing about Slayer, I got the steel boots before I got the bronze boots. But you know, at least it's a collection log slot, you can't really complain about that. And we actually managed to get level 51 Slayer, I'm an absolutely awesome Slayer task by the way, I'd love to kill these. <laughs> oh no way, we even got a lava battle staff out of all of that. I'm not sure, but I think that's a higher rate than some of the mystic pieces. Well, it's not the most useful combination staff, but I have a combination staff now. And I didn't have to go to Lava Dragons to get it. Oh shit, another one. Okay, they're probably not that rare. And what else but level 70 defense to top it all off. And that's my cue to change to attack. Oh baby, we got our first piece of Mystic Dark. And I'll take those boots, yes thank you. And the only other thing I think we can get from here is the hat. Still looking for that. Level 62 attack coming in quick, and we even managed to get ourselves a shard as well. But right after that, you know we got level 52 Slayer. And I think this is probably the best place to kill Dagonoths. If you guys have a better place, let me know it down in the comments. And we clinched level 63 attack on a troll's task. It's definitely not one of my favorites, but at least you get some herbs out of the thing. And we're just gliding straight through these Slayer levels at level 53. And my gosh, this troll's task was long enough to give me two attack levels and two Slayer levels. Now here's a task I didn't know I'd hate as much as I do. Dragons. My god, don't ever give me dragons. The bones are nice, though. I'll take those. So directly after my bronze dragon task, I happened to get an iron dragon task. And of course, I was thinking to myself, let's use the D long because it's got a better stab. Nope, you should absolutely use the sim. And if you wanted to talk about a task that's way more frustrating than it really has to be, using the balloon transport system. My god, that makes me want to rip my hair out. But we completed the achievement diary. So obviously we've got to claim our achievement diary lamp from... Where is that drunk bitch? Oh, <laughs> there she is. 
So obviously we gotta claim our achievement diary and our brand new achievement cape from her, the medium achievement cape. And I, yeah, that gives us a better chance at pickpocketing. I'm pretty sure Justin are done, but it starts applying better everywhere if you get higher in the ranks. And let's go ahead and throw this lamp directly onto Herblore because why not? Can it actually get us a level though? No, <laughs> not even close. Oh, I was just trying to complete Rag and Bone Man and we got ourselves a Mud Skipper hat? Huh, that's weird. And these Zogers really do not want to give me their special bone. <laughs> Phrasing. But I got level 65 attack out of all that. And in only a couple hours, I was able to complete the Rag and Bone Man for only 500 prayer experience and a bone sack that kind of talks to you. But we got level 47 prayer. And now let's admire the new gear. Bone bag and a ram helmet, which actually has some pretty decent stats, which is weird. And quickly completing the rum deal gives us 7,000 prayer experience. Way more than Rag and Bone Man, by the way. But you get this really cool holy wrench, and whenever you drink a prayer pot, it gives you a chance to give you more prayer points, you know, depending on your level. And we got a level 48 prayer for all our trouble. And you got a complete cabin fever, of course. This gives us the little book of piracy, which lets us access every single one of the shops on this little island. We'll probably never come back here once we get the black mask. <laughs> Look at the goddamn hitbox on this thing. It's like missing the side of a barn. <laughs> Are you gonna misclick this truck here? <laughs> Ridiculous. And god dang, is this thing so weak. You know, Big Daddy Zora would be super mad at you. But here's something we really needed to take care of that's royal trouble, and this gives us increased miscellaneous resources. And now that we actually have a little bit of money to our name, we're gonna start using the miscellaneous kingdom. All right, let's see what 10,000 gets you. Nothing, basically nothing. Straight to the bank. But while we're in the questing mood, King's Ransom is an easy one to lock in. And 33,000 defense experience? My god, I really should have done this sooner. And this is really cool, it gives us an antique lamp. I still really wish we could save these up in the bank, but this is going right to Herblore for 5,000 experience. All right, so I got a mini project going on and that's gather 650 goat horns. I don't know why, but I've had about 650 Harlanders in the bank, so we gotta do something with those. And while we're actually able to make up a bunch of combat potions, we got level 64 herb lore. All these combat potions are gonna come in handy eventually, I'm sure of it, but we got ourselves a level 65, and now we can clean Katadines. Katadatine. All right, how do you say it? But I've been neglecting farming since I got back to the main game and that really needs to stop. So we're gonna stop that right here and right now with one Hospori kill. This just happens to be our last Hospori seed so we really do actually need to do a little bit of farming. With this one last hit, this makes kill number 19 and don't look at the fight duration. It's been way too long since I've been back. <laughs> but all right. I don't think there's anything we can get but the pet because we already got the bucket. Well, it's the end of leagues, everybody. Yeah, I went ahead and made about 16 episodes in it. And if you can't tell by this little posse right here, uh, <laughs> they did a lot better than me. Two dragons in a rune. All right, let's stop admiring these guys. <laughs> Somebody rolled up with an iron. All right, let's go ahead and see where we placed everybody. But we do definitely got to get some new rewards. Hey, here it is, the Adamant Trophy. I was really hoping we would actually make Adamant. The uh, point total for Adamant was actually starting to creep on our point total as well. But we got it. 
And no, that's not like the greatest achievement in the whole world, but you know what? That's good enough for me. And of course, there is one thing that we have to, and I mean have to buy, and that's of course gonna be the Shattered Teleport Scroll. There's no way I can get away with not getting another teleport. So yep, go ahead, 1,000 points. I'm glad it's cheap to be honest. Here we go. Got ourselves a Shattered Relic Scroll. Okay, I couldn't actually help myself. I brought, I bought the other two teleport scrolls. All right, hear me out. They're the only things that are permanent, right? I mean, if you think about it, it's gonna be on your account forever. You can't sell it. I mean, I can't sell it, I'm an Iron Man. <laughs> but aside from something that goes in my house, it's pretty much permanent. Like I can get an outfit, but none of the outfits are really like cool at all, or at least not in my opinion. But the thing is, we've got like 13,000 league points left over. I'm, I'm not 100% sure like what should we should get. Like the blueprint, that's permanent. I might end up trying to get that. But I think I might just let you guys figure it out for me. What do you think would be cool enough to get? Like the globe and the rug that's permanent I could throw those in my house uh, but yeah the outfits I guess they're like halfway permanent but not really and then when you're looking at the shattered relic stuff I really like to get the mystic ornament kit and it's probably the only ornament kit that I can actually afford completely <laughs> but yeah we could probably get the Shattered Relics Tier 2, but if you do want me to spend my money on something specific, just let me know. So that means back to Slayer, and I almost missed this pop-up here. We got the Demonic Punching Bag. Just kill a Blood Belt. <laughs> Hard task, I know, right? And we even got 55 Slayer out of this Blood Belt task. You know, we can even start killing Turoths too. And I'm gonna go ahead and go with the magic method because the spear is shit. And we even got 67 attack in the meantime. And we're not even like a quarter of the way done with our blood belt task. <laughs> no way, there we go. Honestly, that's what I was hoping we would get from here. Got some black boots and this is actually a defense upgrade. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap those bad boys on right now. You know, I thought to myself, Huh, I just unlocked Turoths. I bet I'm gonna get them as a task. Yup. The first task I'm able to get Turoths, I get Turoths. Uh, well, slow task city. <laughs> there we go. This is gonna make this so much easier. And not to mention, these magic darts are actually killing them really quick too. I guess you should just, you know, never use the spear. <laughs> And 20 kills later, we got ourselves 56 Slayer. I ran out of runes, so I'm just using the uh, sword. Good thing we got it. <laughs> but since we're using the sword, we're back to training attack. And that's all the way up to level 68. Our next Slayer task is another slow one, hunting mogers. We pulled out some flippers out of here, though. That's kind of cool. We could put that in the fishing gear. <laughs> but... God, I gotta kill like 140 of these. I decided this was the perfect time to train a little bit of magic and we only need one more level to enter the magic guild. Getting rather unlucky with my slayer tasks, we've got a trolls task up next. And we also pulled in level 57 slayer. Oh, nice, level 69 attack. One bonus about being in a clan, your hit points level is 75, and I can see that very clearly. We're on a fire giant's task, by the way, everybody, and that even got us level 49 prayer. Just by burying bones. Whew. We really need to do something about this prayer level. It is technically the only combat stat that's keeping us back, but maybe we just need a few more dragon slayer tasks. 58 Slayer, and this is a magic number because now we can actually kill cave horrors. And we gotta get that black mask ASAP. A surprisingly good Slayer task, clenching us level 70 attack as well. 
Did you say something about slow slayer tasks? Because black demons is coming your way and level 71 attack as well. Level 59 slayer and I just completed my slayer task as well. That's really good timing. But I tell you, black demons is so bad. They don't drop anything worth anything. So we might as well try our luck at another Hispori kill. Hey, that's a new personal best. Let's get under two minutes next time. I'm sure we can do better as soon as we get a whip, which we're working on with Slayer, obviously. No pet, unfortunately, but you know what? That's fine with me. Our one and only Hispori seed again. Let's do some farming. So we actually got ourselves 372 rewards points, which I'm sure to a lot of you is like, yeah, that's not a lot. But to me, that's a lot. <laughs> So I was thinking about buying some stuff like bigger and better or like a boss or even reptile got ripped Honestly, I'd love to get some reptile tasks in here to get a Xerix talisman, but I'm not gonna do that first. I'm gonna do broader fletching It kind of only makes sense I mean, I have all of the level requirements to do broader fletching even with amethyst So I think I might have to go train, you know my mining a little bit and I'll be able to have some really badass weapons, at least for ranged. So I'm going to go ahead and buy broader fletching. And the next ones are probably going to be like bigger and better. And then, you know, the lizard man. Yeah, like a boss. That's the other one. I don't know why I forget things after I just say them. <laughs> These things have been stacking up in my inventory for a little while. And, you know, I figured it's time to crack them on open. Beginners not really expect too much i'm gonna go ahead and throw that bad boy on right now i love your shoulder parrot <laughs> all right let's go ahead and get ourselves a amulet of magic trimmed Ooh. all right all right i need some more teleports and of course that pink elegant skirt i will take as well more tellies gotta love it fire lighters uh, all right hard clue <laughs> we even got something from the hard clue too. All right, all right, the Bando Kite Shield. Well, this is quite the outfit for like 10 clues. <laughs> welcome, welcome back everybody to a brand new episode of the Hardcore Iron Man. We've got level 83 farming to start the day off and we can now plant spirit trees, which is pretty huge. Only one at the beginning, I'm pretty sure but we gotta figure out where we're gonna put it because I think we got some spirit trees in the bank right now. I'll probably forget about this and not do it until I actually really, really need it. <laughs> but let's get into the video, everybody. These are just taking up room in the bank and I figured there's really no reason to save them up. We don't get them often at all. So I could use some tree seeds and it's pretty doubtful that I'm gonna get any chicken outfit out of this, but gotta try. Adding Slayer Tasks to my dailies is really starting to pay off. We've got ourselves a Brine Saber. Yeah, I could have used that a little bit before I got myself the Dragon Pickaxe, but you know what? It's a collection log slot. And we're going to go ahead and keep this Slayer grind going with a Fire Giant Task and level 72 attack. Lo and behold, I caught it on camera. That almost never happens with a combat level. And then of course level 60 slayer right after it and the slayer levels i truly love because it's right after a kill so you shouldn't be interrupted right <laughs> we can kill aberrant specters now so we're probably going to get that next couple of tasks to be honest during one of our dragon tasks last episode we got ourselves some runite limbs and that only means a runite crossbow is within our grasp and there's actually a really cool cosmetic that we can put on it now I'll have to show you guys later. But in the meantime, we made it all the way to Martania and we started helping some people back and forth with some temple trekking. And right now, I'm actually trying to force the zombies to spawn me some lumberjack pieces. It's not really working out very well. For some reason, if you don't get a lumberjack piece in the first wave, there is a possibility of spawning a second wave of zombies but i got the same amount of luck that i did for spawning 
both waves of zombies. So I'm not 100% sure if there's like a tell that says, oh, you can't get a lumberjack piece because this, this, and this happened or not. But I'm not 100% sure. So if you guys know some in-depth stuff about this, just go ahead and let me know. But believe it or not, but that's actually not why we're here. <laughs> we're here for some bowstrings because you guys can probably tell from the last couple of episodes, the only way we've been making money is alking and we've been alking some unstrung yell longbows. We have about uh, 20,000 of them. <laughs> so we need to get some bowstrings to actually make it worth alking them. And this seems to be the way we do it. I had a magnificent commenter tell me about this. And if I can find the comment, I'll go ahead and leave up who did it for me. And this is actually a pretty huge reason why you guys should leave something down in the comments if you think there's a better way or I could be doing something easier because I would love some tips. Really, really, I would. But after a few hours of trying, we got ourselves the lumberjack top the lumberjack legs, and even the lumberjack hat. We didn't end up getting the boots, but that's okay. We're gonna come back here eventually because we really only got about a fifth of the bowstrings that we need. <laughs> but, you know, that's the thing, everybody. My attention span's really only gonna allow me to be here for like two hours. So on to the next thing. You know, I've really started to think of this activity as a lunchtime activity because every time I sit down with a bowl of soup, I start smithing. Oh, that's level 64 smithing as well. <laughs> I definitely need to start using the blast furnace, but what do I look like? I'm rich. So I figured out that I can't even use that rune crossbow yet. <laughs> what in the hell? So it's time to do a little bit of range training, everybody, and this is the perfect spot for it, so long as no one ruins it. <laughs> we even got 1625 total level, and we're actually level 61 ranged, and I think that's just about able to be able to wield a rune crossbow. You know what? Screw it. Let's just make it a baby time lapse. He's right on top of me, but I can't see him. What's he doing? <sighs> He's just standing there, menacingly! You could try to play, but you're never gonna beat me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody hands stain from the people who deceive me. Bloody hands break through the chains, go free me. Looking for change, looking for pain. Pulling a mob, pushing a train. I'll never stop, stick to a lane. Pick up the pieces and go rearrange. I'll be the best above all the rest, put me to the test. Yeah. Expect nothing less, you check as I'm chess, what's happening next, yeah. He got the venom, a tangible weapon, no coming in second, this life is a lesson. He got a new engine from pain, it's a blessing, new focus, no guessing, just bold an obsession, all in his possession. You got the retention, I leave an impression and take a redemption, just kill no discretion. Your mind is a weapon, 11, 11, it's time for progression, oh! You could try to play, but you're never gonna be me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody and stain from the people who deceive <laughs> And that's gonna be the end of the baby time lapse with somebody who's always waiting to ruin things like my god this guy just wakes up chooses violence logs in and it's just like pissed he's just angry that he's playing the game at all gotta love it that's right take your shit and go you petty cocksucker sometimes you just gotta wait him out so they know you're not gonna leave Okay, now that he's gone, we can leave. <laughs> and I'm just kidding. We got 66 magic from all of our high alking that we've got to do. And we've got to do a lot, everybody. We were even able to pull in 82 fletching from all of the bows that we're making to be out. And with this, we're actually even able to start fletching with amethyst. So... Yeah, this is like the third sign to go train my mining. <laughs> and just a little bit after that, because this there's no way it wasn't going to happen with 20,000 bows to string, we've got 83 fletching and so many more to go. 67 magic, and that's literally all from High Alking. What an achievement. So why do we really need all this money? Thank you for asking, Random Narration. Well, we need to buy a cannon, and a cannon's damn near a million gold. It's like 
you know, three quarter of a million, but it's pretty close. And this is pretty much the only way that we can get some money quick that's already in our bank. And it's our, you know, it's training some stuff while we're doing it. Like level 68 magic, who's gonna be mad at that? And we can even enchant dragonstone jewelry and bolt tips too. So it's about time we upgraded the fit. I'm actually so, so close to getting myself a million gold just from high alking. There it is. Now I'm going to go ahead and buy myself a cannon. Excuse me, sir. I have a lot of money to spend with you. And you know what? We might even get the ornament kit for this because we got enough leak points. I wonder how much money that actually took. Oh, yeah. It's basically like 800,000 coins. When you come back to the game and you're fighting a boss you have absolutely no fear for, this is when you start slipping up. Like me, who actually forgot his knives. <laughs> Can't do that. So we're back here with knives and with a new Hispori kill. 21, and no, it wasn't our quickest. And it looks like we're still not going to get the pet either. But I tell you what, everybody, this is exactly the reason we needed that cannon is for trolls tasks. I hate trolls tasks. Not to mention we got 73 attack out of all that. But trolls tasks, everybody, let's go ahead and talk about how slow they are. And they basically want you to kill like 200. But in the meantime, we did get a magic level, everybody. And we're able to enter the magic guild. And in the Magic Guild, there's a fancy new outfit that we can get. We don't have to get it through Slayer, so let's do it right now. And you know what? I think there's even an ornament kit for this one, too, for Leagues. So, shoot, I think we're almost obligated to get that. <laughs> nice. We are back at it with Slayer, and why did nobody tell me that you should just use Mage, but let them fight you face to face like look at this it sucks when he's just hitting you with dragon breath but if you're protecting for melee he's not gonna hit you not once just beautiful i am of course personally ashamed of <laughs> this spory time i don't think i could have gotten a worse one 322 damn near double my personal best yeah i think i fucked off a little too much on that kill all right, everybody. I think I want to spend some of our points for the Shattered Relics League. We did pretty good. We got like 16k points here, and we got 13k left over. And I think we need to buy a couple of ornament kits, starting with the Shattered Variety Ornament Kit. But really, everybody, I've actually done the math, and it looks like we're able to buy every single one of the ornament kits from this year's leagues. And only one for the Shattered Variety because it's just for the crossbow. I would kind of like to have one for the whip, but, you know, I don't really think it's all that important because the crossbow looks way cooler. And I think I can even take it off the crossbow and put it on the whip when I upgrade to a uh, dragon crossbow. But without further ado, everybody, I got to get that Void Ornament Kit. I've got to get the Mystic Ornament Kit. I've got to get the Cannon Ornament Kit. I definitely want to see what all of this looks like on the game as well. I've seen it in pictures, I've seen it in videos, but you know what? On your own computer screen is the best way to do it. And there's only one more left to buy, and 25 league points left over. So we basically <laughs> drained ourselves dry. Let's see what all this stuff looks like, everybody. Okay, so first up to bat, we've got the rune crossbow that we earned this episode, and we're even going to get ourselves an upgrade. Look at that beautiful thing. I really, really wish that it would give, like, a chance of extra fire damage or something. Next, next, next on the list is another upgrade that we synced in today. That's the Mystic Ornament Kit, and my god, does it look beautiful. And everybody, the one I am personally the most excited about, that's the cannon. Look at this steampunk masterpiece powered by magic. I'm literally going to use this everywhere. And you know what? 
We literally got every single one of the things that we could upgrade with ornament kits in this episode. Well, I mean, I mean, except for Void, but we're gonna wait until we get Elite Void to put that on anyway. So if I was an efficient RuneScape YouTuber, I would be ad joking, which I'm doing right now for level 7D magic. And coming in quick, not too much after that, we've got level 65 agility as well. And unfortunately, I don't have the agility itch, so we're gonna call this lap probably the end. I just checked in on my marks of grace, and I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can afford the last two pieces, and it looks like all I can afford is the pants. We're so close to the feet, but you know what? Let's just throw in a few more laps, and we can get the feet too. Okay, that took way too long, and I'm even out of nature runes, so you know what? We gotta do something else. <laughs> but here we go, graceful boots, and that is full graceful, everybody. Go ahead and leave in the comments when you guys earned your full graceful. Like what level? Because I got mine at level 65. We are out here at the abyss. You won't see us here often, but we needed to get a couple of pouches for one very specific reason. The Guardians of the Abyss just came out and we're gonna be doing a little bit of rune crafting next episode and I'm actually really excited about it. You have never heard that phrase ever in the history of OSRS, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> but gosh, damn it, I cannot wait to do some rune crafting. This is basically just turning into a farm run for me. Here's Weed Whacker for her spory. I wonder what that is. Huh, okay. Kill all of Hespori's flowers within five seconds. You know, I really feel like I've done that before, but I'll take it. And there is, of course, no pet for this kill. <laughs> I'd tell you, I promise. And last but not least, everybody, 59 Hunter in the bag, and now we can even start using all the yo logs that we've been AFKing this whole time. Welcome, welcome back, everybody, to a brand new episode of the Hardcore Iron Man. We actually just pulled in 88 wood cutting and 89 wood cutting as well because we've been AFK for a long time, and I'm sure you guys have noticed. <laughs> Uh, the thing is, when spring comes, that's when my busy season is actually here because I live on a farm. So we've actually been getting stuff ready. But enough excuses for me, let's get into today's video. And I've actually got a few interesting things to show you. Well, first things first, everybody, we can make ourselves a piece of dragonstone jewelry and even enchant it for a ring of wealth. Uh, no, I'm not gonna get it uh, imbued or whatever just yet, but it's on the list. And we're actually gonna pull in 84 mining, and believe it or not, that is actually why we made the Ring of Wealth for the four times chance at getting gems. I thought we were gonna AFK this for a little while, but we chose woodcutting instead. <laughs> But believe it or not, everybody, we did end up AFKing at least 100 golden nuggets. And 100 golden nuggets was actually all we needed to pick up the one and only bag that we don't have. And that's going to be the gem bag. <laughs> I know, I bought the wrong one in the wrong order. But there we go, gem bag done. And that should actually mean... Yeah, we've got a green bar for our mother load mine collection log. So beautiful. I don't really have to come back here if I don't wanna. And one more thing, we're able to AFK, but it's actually got a time limit. We pulled in 86, 87, 88, and even 89 cooking out of all of our AFKing. But we did actually end up running out of the fish to cook, and I didn't wanna cook all of our angler fish because uh, they're burning. <laughs> We totally forgot to pick up our pair of kicks in the swamp last time, but we got them good. And believe it or not, we got enough bowstrings to be able to fletch all 13,000 of our bows. Yay. Now we got to elk them. <laughs> what do you know? 50 prayer with another AFK activity of killing moss giants. And believe it or not, we actually can wear the holy sandals, unholy sandals, and a grape blessing. 
but we're still gonna be at Moss Giants for a little while and we actually just got into 68 range you know you gotta love it you gotta love it and we're looking for those giant keys the mossy keys actually we're gonna try to get ourselves some bryophyta essence we have a lot and I mean a lot of alking to do and it'd be really cool if we could go on drop rate for it but right now we're like triple <laughs> Something I didn't ask for for 5,000. That's a giant champion scroll, everybody. Well, we got one more thing to do on the list for today's episode. Nice. And that's level 71 magic just from high alking a couple of things that really need to be out of the inventory. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure the general consensus is this was like the worst Easter event. No, this is the worst holiday event they've ever put forward. You can tell something else is going on, like a uh, company being sold in the background. <laughs> there we go, level 70 range, everybody. And that actually unlocks us Black D Hide. And we can even use some Elf Crystal weapons, too. That's probably a little bit of ways away. But still, did you guys know that Moss Giants were absolutely amazing for grabbing seeds? So here comes the inevitable, everybody. We got about six or seven Bryophyta keys, and we need to knock them out. And this time we got nothing. Nothing this time. Kill number nine, and we have nothing. All right, lucky number 10, nothing. The next kill is going to be nothing. Kill number 12, and we've got nothing. Okay, this is actually our last kill, everybody, and we've got high hopes for this one. You know, it's gotta happen eventually. What is the Bryophyte? Is that since only like one in a hundred? Well, it's nothing. <laughs> but believe it or not, everybody, there is one more giant that we have on our list. And this fight's way easier than you might think. He's weaker than Bryophyta. He has no specials, anything that can like hurt you <laughs> really he's just gonna meal you i didn't even use my prayer like i'm not sure if you can but i didn't have to <laughs> easy peasy and i think you get an experience lamp for doing this so let's go collect that one up yep here's the lamp and this is what you call a champion's lamp or a combat lamp Totally think Jagex should follow suit and using this for any combat experience for quests. Oh, and there's the champion's banner that I just unlocked. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm about to go into the wilderness right after Framed made a video about just PKing in this exact area. Eh, you know, it'll be safe. But in all reality, guys, I hate the wilderness, so we're going to hustle. If we see anybody around here, we're going to go ahead and click run or telly. Actually, telly. Telly's the option. But we got to fight this demon in the back. And you know what? That kill was actually pretty easy, even though it is framed season around here. And with all that, we completed the family crest quest. That actually gets us the goldsmith and cooking gauntlets. Well, pretty much. You have to do a mini quest after this. But those gauntlets are really going to help out all of that gold that we got in our inventory. And we can probably cook the rest of the anglerfish without having to worry about burning like 700 of them. <laughs> but you know what? If we're going to talk about a skill that's really, really been neglected in my repertoire, that's going to be construction. And we actually just pulled out level 55, by the way. Plus level 56 came up quick. And believe it or not, I actually caught the construction message this time. What can we unlock? Uh, teak, demon, lectern... Eh, a bunch of teak stuff. Well, that's cool. <laughs> but you know what? Speaking of things that are just sitting in my bank, we've got to collect a few more dragon stones. And we got seven sitting right here. And if we can get just another key bottom half, maybe we can get eight. Not bad not bad last time i tried to do this i got bombarded with runes and couldn't even fit it all in my inventory but there we go seven keys done 
Level 66 Herbalore is the next thing on the agenda. And that's because I don't do my farm runs very often, and that's something we actually plan on addressing next episode. Man, you can never forget about her spore, even though I do often. <laughs> that's the 25th her spore kill, and let's see if we can get anything cool out of this. <laughs> nope, not really. Level 60 farming from a birdhouse run, and we're actually trying to make this another active activity that we do as well. And on the exact same farm run, we just got ourselves level 84 farming. Literally one more level and we can use the third tier in the farming guild. See, there it is, 85, so close. So remember how I said I had a bunch of bowstrings? Well, level 84 fletching is the result. And we've got a whole lot of stuff to alk in the meantime. We've got level 59 crafting and we actually just cleared ourselves out of the Alcarid sand pit. All of the previous mining that we've done for that got us about 5,000 buckets of sand and I think we're probably going to need to start in on that grind again. And we even got ourselves level 60 crafting and that's really really nice because why we did the crafting was because we wanted to start using yo bird houses. And we have a hell of a lot of yell logs. You know, while I was in the neighborhood, I decided there's no harm in getting level 65 smithing, especially since we finally got our goldsmith gauntlets. We just pulled in another level of 66 smithing, and we've actually got mithril plate legs and an ancient wyvern shield. Okay. Did anyone else see Jagex's most recent blog post about their smithing winter tod they're gonna make? I'm excited. <laughs> and that's one more level that we're gonna be able to pull in the level 67 smithing. And yeah, if you guys don't know what I mean by the smithing winter tod, I think it's called Giant's Foundry? Giant's Hammer? Something like that. But if I can put a link on the screen, I totally will. So I can finally stop my skilling montage and tell you guys that I'm back at active play and this is what we are going to do today. We got Barrows on the list and this is the outfit. <laughs> you know the first one to hit, it's Darok. Let's get it. And for our very first Barrow's Chest, what do we have to show for it? Uh, I made a couple of death runes. That's nice. <laughs> Next Barrow's Chest. Ooh, our first <laughs> collection log is actually a bolt rack. I should have saw that one coming. And hey, we can actually sneak in a quick little 77 hit points while we're doing Barrow's. Hey, there's our first time getting blood runes. Those are really going to come in handy later, and I hope I can actually get a lot more of those. And we're actually at Pharaoh's chest number six. Hey, lots of runes. But don't worry, everybody, I'm not going to show all of them. I'll come at you with the next highlight. Which I'm actually able to bring to you at Pharaoh's chest number 10 with our Pharaoh's novice achievement. Pray for success has been achieved on our 11th Barrow's Chest. We're really just knocking out all these combat achievements. And if I can uh, remember, I'll put up what it actually is on screen. The worst part about combat levels is you can never catch them on screen, but that's level 7 D2 magic. Alright, you absolute scam artist. Here's a quarter of a million dollars to recharge an Iban staff. Scam artist. Back to barrels with a fully charged staff. And we've got our first piece of magic gear, the Aram's Hood. 
Not exactly the first thing I would have used, but you know what? I'll take it. And if you guys were curious, we got that on Barrow's Chess Scout number 20, and it's actually worth about 100k. This here achievement was five more chests in the making. We got the Barrow's Champion for completing 25 Barrow's Chests, and I thought that used to be 50. Eh, maybe it was one of the changes they made for the KC combat tasks recently. I'm not sure if we should have. <laughs> I knew it. I absolutely knew it. But I said I'm not sure if we were supposed to stop at 25 and call it an episode there. But I think this this proves that we absolutely shouldn't have. Whew, let's go take a look at this beauty somewhere where our screen isn't shaking. And also whoever made the screen shake in Barrows. I want your job taken now. <laughs> but, ooh, beautiful axe, beautiful. But, you know, nothing like a good old chest of bullshit to remind you that you're here at Barrows for forever. <laughs> and here's something you guys may not know, but the rune crossbow is also <laughs> a yo-yo? Look at this thing, it's connected to my knee. What the hell? <laughs> Has anyone else seen this kind of clipping happen? Anyway? We even got ourselves another piece. That's the Varric Bressard. And you know what? We got a helmet. We got a body. We just need a skirt. And yes, I know the helmet was a mage, but still. I'll take what I can get, y'all. Okay, so there is actually one more thing at Barrows that I should be able to accomplish. And here's how. There's a combat achievement that says, kill all four of the Mealy Barrows brothers without getting hit by any of them. And I just checked, and it's uh, Aram who is actually going to be waiting for me at the chest. So this is the perfect opportunity for me to do this. If Carol or Aram are waiting for you at the chest, then you can kill all four of the Barrows brothers just like this. And I almost just messed up right there. I don't know if anyone saw that. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and wait for him to get over here on this side and do it again with the snare spell. We just snare this bad boy, hit him twice, and then, you know, run back behind this coffin, snare him again. This does take a very long time, and yeah, I'm not going to make you guys sit through the entire... Oof, 8 minutes and 30 seconds that it took me to do this to just those four guys. But this is the strat. And hopefully we should be able to pull out one achievement at the very end of it. This is the moment of truth, everybody. Did we finally pull this strat off correctly? <laughs> yes, we did. Can't touch me. Completed. And you know what? 40 kill count. That's really, really close. I think we're probably going to stop at around 50. But I really wish we could get a bottom before we do. This is going to be our 45th chest. Carol's going down and we've got a Guthid's plate body, everybody. That's way better than the Varix. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. We just got to get the rest of the Guthin set for the uh, healing effect to take place. So now we got a real mission to start, everybody. And this is going to be it, everybody. Can we get a unique on chest number 5? 50. No, but you know what? I love seeing blood runes. And uh, I think that's a good cue to see what we've actually got from all of this. So let's go. So, as you've previously seen in the episode, <laughs> we got all the way up to 50 barrels chest count. And you know what? We were able to pull out a Darox Great X, a Guthin's Plate Body, a Varix Brassard. If you know how to pronounce that, put that in the comments. And an Aram's hood. My gosh, now we just really need the bottoms, everybody. And let's go ahead and take a look at, if I can find it, <laughs> the loot count. Burrows, we got, what is that? 3.8 mil from 50 Barrows chests, everybody. And just a little bit over 1,600 blood runes. That is is a great accomplishment everybody and you got to love it that's gonna be so many bursts in the future 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I said that this was the end of the skilling earlier, but you know what? I'm editing the video and I figured I should throw this in at the end. We've just unlocked redwood trees at level 90 wood cutting, everybody. We're starting off with kind of a big grind if you don't have a cannon. But we're going to collect some big keys, everybody. And the first is already in our pocket. Here's the thing about collecting giant keys. Oh, another one is pretty much the only thing I'm going to say for about the next 20 clips. So I'll come back with you guys as soon as something interesting happens. Kind of like me not being able to track any of the giant kills i already got six keys two long bones and it'd be really cool if i could put that in my loot tracker but uh it's not counting and i even thought about like maybe it doesn't count the cannon kills but it's like nope I, i'm still shooting them with my crossbow underneath this cannon too so we should at least count some of them i don't know if you guys know what's going on with that just uh drop it below do these ones not count <laughs> we've got level 72 range and 1675 total level not necessarily a milestone but we're getting really close to the 1750 and that's another bit of worlds we're able to traverse but i don't want to spend too much time here everybody we've got 21 giant keys i actually let one despawn on accident i guess i don't know we only got 20 <laughs> but the log says 21 in the chat box and we even got five long bones from all of that so i i guess it's time to kill 20 more giants <laughs> but before i do so it's of course lunch time and i need to do some smithing we've actually even got the goldsmith gauntlets to do it and we got level 68 smithing all right back to killing giants and really there's not a lot we got to worry about with obor unless we just don't bring supplies <laughs> But first test completed is the Obor Novice, and I, I think that's really just kill Obor once. So, yay. And yeah, I'm going to do all the clues. And no, that's not like a sad thing, even though my voice may have sounded that way. But I just really hate getting distracted from combat. I'd rather do all 20 kills in a row and then do 20 clues. And, you know, those people who, like, voted no to the stackable clues. So I'm going to pay you $100 to fuck off. One more Obor kill pretty much clenched and in the bag. And all you have to do is run back and forth to complete this one. Like on one plane of the wall. <laughs> but back to the wall is completed and just don't get pushed more than one square away from Obor when he pushes you. I'm sure the wiki words that way, way, way better than I have and I might even flash it on the screen. But you know what? That's how I said it. <laughs> Obviously while we got all these keys we need to knock out a couple of points. Health got a little low there. <laughs> but Sleeping Giant was one of the tasks needed to be completed, and it's just kill Obor while immobilized. So you gotta bring some snare runes. Kill Obor five times, done and over with. Probably the least impressive of the combat tasks. No, no, kill one is actually the least impressive. Okay, I really just wanted to kill him a little bit, just normally for a little. And now we've got squashing the giant. I'll go ahead and flash up what that actually means on the screen because I have no idea how to explain it off the top of my head. <laughs> but you know what this gear is? That's right. We got some fashion scape going on because I don't really have that much free to play gear and we've got to get fighting as intended. So we're going to do this here with our little parrot buddy of Bando shield and full rune ish <laughs> fighting as intended done quicker than you might think to be honest i only ate three swordfish four technically because i needed some more inventory space <laughs> but believe it or not everybody that is actually gonna be all of the tasks for obor i know i know they come really really quickly and i can't believe it sometimes but <laughs> All six tasks for Obor, done and over with. It's not really a boss that I should come back to unless I want the Hill Giant Club, which I believe is actually getting a recolor soon. So maybe I will get a couple extra keys in the future. If you want to see that, put it down in the comments. I'd like to know. Okay, so obviously we get a shit ton of beginner clues from Obor, and we get a bunch from Bryophyta, just like from last episode. And we got a couple extra things that we can crack open, like this mystery box. 
with a body rune. <laughs> but let's go ahead and start in on these beginner clues. There's not too many things that we can get from the beginners, but you know what? Let's try to crack out what we can, everybody. That's gonna be the sandwich lady hat. And mm, this actually even matches my outfit right now. <laughs> Oh, right after that, the demon feet. My God. Two in a row. Gotta love it. Cracking up a couple of more beginners. And when you really crack open beginners, you should always just plan on losing money, even if you got them for free. I'm serious. <laughs> but nothing out of those 10, 12-ish. Might not even pick up the robe with a new clue to open not anything left all right let's go <laughs> anything from the beginners left over no but there is three easy clues that we've got to crack open nothing nothing and hey you know what i'll take that purple fire lighters it's a shared unique but i'll take it okay we're not doing so hot let's see if the mediums can save us we got four and then one hard. Ooh, okay. The very first one, we got the Zamorak Miter. Next one. <laughs> okay, all right. Mithril Kite Shield trimmed. Can we do it again? Ah, oh, oh, broke the streak. But you know what, Alkables, no one's gotta complain about that. <laughs> hey, all right. Wait, that's two in a row. All right. That. I got four uniques, four clues. I'm gonna count that. <laughs> Ancient blessing and a white headband. Can we do it again with this hard clue? Come on. <laughs> yes, we can. An unholy blessing and an ancient blessing. Well, I think that might actually come in handy for God Wars. So from the clue opening, we actually got seven uniques. And I don't even really think we opened more than 50 caskets. In fact, I'm pretty sure it was less than that. But you know what? We'll take it. Even though we're uh, desperately needing some more room in the bank. So uh, drop some uh, handy money makers for Iron Man down there. Because <laughs> now you got to buy bank spaces. Damn it. And everybody, I present to you, Alkables. I am going to elk these. <laughs> these items have now been elked. And I got about 126k more. What is it? No, I can't read. 133k. I might need glasses. <laughs> Holy shit, is it soup time already? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we got 66 crafting out of all that. And I don't think I'll ever make a split park anything. <laughs> After I had my lunch, I went to Barrows for a little bit, but I realized that most of my supplies were running pretty thin. And oh, this actually happened that... <laughs> it was probably really stupid. My prayer cut out. Derek was on basically no health. Do you know what happens when Derek's on no health? People die. <laughs> so down to my second to last prayer potion, I decided to take on Hispori. And you know, it was a safe bet because Hispori's not really threatening at all. <laughs> Are we gonna get the pet out of this though? Unfortunately not. You know, while I got that urge to quest, I needed to collect a few items before I do so, and we actually got 75 attack because of that. And believe it or not, that's the max requirement to equip anything. <laughs> okay, so we don't have to train attack anymore. Dope. Switching to defense. Or, you know, strength. Speaking of questing, we just did the Great Brain Robbery, and that actually got us a decent amount of experience. 6,000 prayer XP, and I love the crafting and construction experience too. But you guys can probably tell what this quest completion screen is because you've recently space barred through it. That's the Temple of the Eye. <laughs> and we've got 5,000 rune crafting experience, everybody. That's actually noise. 46 rune crafting, and we might actually be rune crafting for quite a little bit because we're always out of goddamn runes when trying to do stuff. <laughs> but this place is actually pretty cool. I'm sure you guys have seen it before, but I think the design team should uh, take some notes from what they did here. It looks pretty awesome. Oh, and obviously, the best part of all of this, I'm not sure you guys can see that because it's pretty dark even for me, but. 
You got SpongeBob and Squidward's house right over there. And who lives here in a place like this? Looks grouchy. Nice. So we're kind of sticking to a theme of range training. <laughs> But with this jumpy kill here, we are actually going to be able to go right on back to Rance and claim ourselves a brand new jumpy hat as well. Now calm down, I didn't get the pet yet, but I tell you what, we did get the Western Providence's easy diary done. And let's go ahead and talk to that gnome child and get a stupid ass banner to carry around with us. As always, that experience lap goes straight to Herblore. And, oh uh, man, we can't use the teleport till hard or elite tiers. We got a ways to go. So back in, uh, I think it's episode 15, we got disgraced by this man right here, and it's time to get our glory back. I don't care what Rannis Draken has to say, even though we're going to have to fight him twice after the next quest after this. I don't care what Rannis Draken has to say. We're going to take his ass down right now. Or in a sped up by 800 time lapse of 230 minutes. <laughs> All right. It wasn't that long, but damn, this fight took forever. It is actually 800 speed. <laughs> but the cool thing is we had pretty much exactly enough resources we could have brought a little bit more food, but we didn't actually even need that many prayer potions. And with this last hit, he goes down. And that's a taste of hope completed. We've got the Evandis Flail, Draken's Medallion, and a Tome of Experience. And you know where everything's gonna go. That's Herb Lore. And you know, the cool thing about this is there's three Tomes of Experience in this one little Tome right here. I, uh, I think the RCS library could learn a lesson from this. All of them sunk right into herb lore and still didn't even get a level. God damn. This one was actually pretty easy. I had damn near everything done for the medium diary desert task. And I only had to do like five of those things right there that you can see in the chat box. But the desert diary is completed. And we're going to go ahead and take our happy little ass to the Shanty Pass and talk to Jar? The, is this dude's name really Jar? <laughs> Holy fuck, his name is actually Jar. <laughs> All right, Jar. Can I have a desert amulet, please? <laughs> what is this guy? Does he hit? Oh, my God. I don't know why I think his name is so funny right now. But I just can't believe it. Let's see if I can use this telly. Yes! And this is actually a really cool telly too. If you guys didn't know, it's steps away from... Da -da -da -da, a prayer altar. And you know, I bet if we stayed here long enough, we could probably even see somebody using this thing. <laughs> welcome, welcome back everybody to a brand new episode of RuneScape. Today we're actually going to be starting off in the middle of the desert treasure quest. And, you know, I didn't really think I was going to need very many supplies for this thing. Wrong. <laughs> I'm trying to set up a safe spot, but it's just not working for me. I can't get no rat, no bats between me or these guys, and it's getting ridiculous. So I'm going to go ahead and have to, you know, get some supplies and do it the honest way. And that's desert treasure completed. And, you know, that's a really great start to the day. 20,000 magic experience. And we can finally use ancient magics. So we're going to go ahead and buy that staff immediately. And this is what this beauty looks like. It's actually pretty cool. And oh, it switches right over to ancients for you as soon as you buy it. Nice. Gotta love it. We can change our spell book in the pyramid. But for example purposes, it's pretty cool. It changed your spell book over, but... I really don't need this spell book right now. I'm going to go change this. There's Spory Kill coming in. Quickly turn it into the only daily I do. I don't know why. <laughs> but we're going into 27 kills. Pulling in 74 magic as well. Thank God to Desert Treasure for that magic boost. And of course we are still on the Barrows grind. Looking for legs. Looking for a top. 
looking for a helmet anything you know what i'm saying i just need some better gear to start moving through the game and pharaohs hasn't been too helpful yet until now <laughs> we got ourselves a guthans helmet and this is one of the things i really really want to complete is the full guthan set it's gonna be the perfect afk territory for me and let's go ahead and give it a little look at what it looks like oh yeah beautiful and even on our barrels runs we were able to pull in 73 defense but 6d9 barrels just completed 7d7 in the bag and we've got all the way up to 83 but 88 is the magic number where we find our derox helm and we've come to realize we've gotten three gut during helmets from barrels <laughs> <laughs> but you know what let's go ahead and see what this bad boy looks like Oof. fashionscape all the way but yeah let's go ahead and take a look at the barrows completion chests mm. a bunch of helmets a couple of chests i really just need some pants <laughs> ah. thanks so much windcrest if somebody in the comments could teach me how to use shadow play for obs i'd love you forever because i'm pretty sure nobody would believe that this actually happened unless i was able to catch at least some of it on camera i'm sitting here on my second inventory of clay dude walks up to my clay rocks starts mining them and proceeds to <laughs> you know you might be able to see in chat but uh yeah Sometimes that's how you start your day. <laughs> Been playing for seven minutes, man. Jesus Christ. Finally getting to my farm runs, and they are rewarding me for it. I've got three farm contracts done all right in a row. That's like the luckiest I've ever been with farm contracts. And as soon as these cabbages get done, I'll get my third seed pack. 6300 out of a birdhouse run, and you know what? I really need to get my crafting up. Damn you, Jagex, and your companion skills. Did somebody say crafting? With two hours of mining in, we've got a decent amount of gems. Eh, not to mention I was running out of some teleports. But if you guys know a quicker way to get gems, go ahead and leave those down in the comments. 62 crafting, and you know what? I only wanted to do crafting because I wanted to do hunter and now I want to do combat because I need the hide. But there are more important things to attend to like the fact that I keep running out of supplies and I really need to get to the point, hey 81 thieving, where I don't run out of my seeds anymore. I'm going to go as hard as I can for Renars until I can do seed runs for an entire week. Okay, I'm probably going to quit after like three hours. We'll see. <laughs> no reason you shouldn't do a farm run while you're gathering seeds because we just got 85 farming. We can finally use the third tier of the farming guild. And you know what? I might even plant a spirit tree in there. Now I just need a spirit seed. Suggestions down below. <laughs> when you must, AFK, woodcutting is the way. <laughs> Level 91 woodcutting, everybody. So this right here, I figured I'd include it into the video because I know that you guys have probably been here too if you're watching it. If you're not a content creator and your friends have all gone off to play other games, this is your 99 party. So right now I want everybody to give Blue3Mink96 a GZ down in the chat. No, I don't really know the dude, but it kind of felt, you know, symbolic for somebody who's been playing for a long time. So go ahead and leave that congrats down in the comments. So I was thinking about one boss that we could take on that would actually be pretty easy to complete the combat tasks for. And we do actually need one drop from this boss, believe it or not. So we're actually going to send this boss until we get that drop, or until the combat log is completed. And that's the deranged archaeologist, everybody. I'm sure you could probably see from our setup here we've done it before, but really just in leagues. And uh, as we continue the PVM grind, you're going to hear me say that a lot. <laughs> but as it goes, everybody, this is really, really easy. It's the same as the crazy archaeologist in the wilderness. 
pretty much when he says learn to read you just gotta run away and these two little boxes I got checked off should make sure I don't get hit by anything but uh I'm bad at the game so I'll probably get hit a few times <laughs> And by the way, the one drop that we are looking for is the black dehyde. No, it's not going to be very hard to get, but at the same time, I don't have the crafting level for it, and I'm not looking to go that route. <laughs> so let's get to it, everybody. And with this here, it's going to be our final kill. Let's see if we can get one more hit. Perfect. And what's going to be our first drop today? <laughs> the black dragon hide. No way. All right, well, 24 kills to go. Kill number two, and we were actually able to shave quite an amount of time off of that one. Not bad at all. <laughs> when we got one more kill coming down in another minute, these are gonna go so fast. And believe it or not, we already got two combat tasks out of the way, out of four. The next ones are really just milestone completions at, uh, I believe, 10 and 25. So we don't even have to do anything hard about this boss anymore. Our first milestone KC coming in. Deranged Archaeologist Novice for 10 kills. And yes, nothing interesting happened between 10 and 25, but that's the last combat task we've got to accomplish here. And we're getting out of here. We got ourselves a decent amount of Black Dehyde, a couple of Alchemals, but really we were just given prayer potions and food the whole time i'm pretty sure i could have stayed there for like 60 something kills especially if i was getting the appropriate amount of drops that i needed to stay for like prayer and food but there it is everybody a nice big green stamp on the deranged archaeologist it looks so so beautiful but i tell you what i will probably never come back here ever again so let's give our final goodbyes to the deranged archaeologist He's seen things people wouldn't believe. That's kind of a cool examine text. But there is something else I noticed while I was here. There's some Solia Seps that are actually right next to the deranged archaeologist. And they're ready, so it'd be kind of a waste if I didn't go for them right now. I mean, it's a grind I still need to do, so I'm gonna drop my food and start cutting. <laughs> what the hell's an Iron Man doing in the Grand Exchange? Just getting 67 herblore with a really handy bank. And now I can even clean lantodimes, which is really cool because I've got like 60 of those in the bank for some reason. The one tree I managed to chop every single day, that's his spory, and we've even got 30 kill count now. You know something a little bit strange that you really shouldn't do in MMOs, but I just can't help myself with? <laughs> we've got dailies literally in my chat box every single time that i log in and i've never done them well not never but almost never and this might be the reason why the varak daily costs two hundred thousand coins okay that's the one we're gonna skip but every single one of these other ones we've got to do something almost nobody does claim your essence in our dome everybody 100 free pure essence and i've only got the medium tier I complain about crafting so gosh damn much. This is something I should be doing every single day when I log in, but I just don't. So Bert, please give me some sand. Oh, he, uh, he put it in my bank. I have no clue how much sand he just gave me. I have a bunch of sand in my bank. <laughs> damn it. And then there's this guy. He can give me 30 noted bowstrings if I give him 30 noted flax. So I guess let's get to picking. Took me like a whole two and a half, maybe three minutes to gather all of this stuff, go to the bank, mess around for a minute. <laughs> and we've got 30 bowstrings. I'm not sure if that was faster than just making them myself. You guys decide. And I gotta tell you everybody, this is the most important daily of all, weekly actually, the Tears of Guthix. And we just got damn near eight thousand rune crafting experience to bring us all the way up to 47 just curious but uh is rune crafting what your tears of gothics is for what's your lowest skill leave it down in the comments and there is just one more leftover for our dailies 
in quotation marks. Good thing you guys can see my hands. <laughs> but we just got to talk to my big boy Rance over here. And he's going to go ahead and hand us 25 big chompy bird hunting arrows. I'm sure that probably increases later on in the ranks, but I don't. I got the studded arrows. So that's RuneScape dailies, everybody. <laughs> do you guys actually do them? I'm not really in that camp, but if you are, let me know the benefits down in the comments, and I promise that's the last time I'll ask. <laughs> One last crafting level to end the day. We've got ourselves 63 crafting, and we can now craft green dragon hide armor. We are stuck at Barrows. And I actually heard if you leave a like on the video, it helps out my RNG. We can't exactly prove that wrong unless you do it, so uh, go ahead and help me out there. <laughs> but being stuck at Barrows is not the best video content, so let's get that out of the way right now. I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack. Born a rock star in this life, gonna live it up on the attack. Baby, I'm back. Of course I didn't record about six kills, and we got an Aram staff right in the middle of it. So you better go live it up, cash in the back, stadium pack, baby I'm bad, yeah. baby I'm bad. I just wanna stay bad, stay mad, shit by my shoulder cause they treat me like an outcast. I ain't gonna take that, stay back, I'll be swinging hard till the hits come in all caps. I ain't gonna lay back, pray that someone's gonna help me, ain't nobody like that. I ain't gonna wait, that's all fat, give me one shot and I'll never get the throne back. I'm sick of being cautious, I'ma go cause some pain, can't stop this I'ma steal everybody's lane, cut a shoplift Sick of hearing everyone complain when they thoughtless Taste the pain, it's like candy canes It makes me go change into a better frame Into a better name, society's insane We all live for fame, yeah Cash in the bag, stadium packed Born a rock star in this life, gon' live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad, I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm mad Whew, now that that's taken care of, I got a couple of things to high elk. <laughs> and that actually got a 7d6 magic. And we need about a million coins. I won't tell you why, but we need about a million coins. <laughs> Spory kill count number 32. And I actually got something I really wanted to do. This, believe it or not, gives you prayer experience. And that's something I'm actually lacking right now. So let's see. Blue egg. That's 51 prayer, everybody. Anything unlocked from it? No. Uh, the other eggs, just to see if we get the evil chicken outfit, which is almost guaranteed we don't. <laughs> and we just clicked past a 62 hunter level on our farm run. And essentially in the exact same farm run, we just got ourselves 86 farming. You know, surprisingly past the 80s, there are not a lot of unlocks. For almost any skill, you know? But since we've been keeping up on our birdhouse runs, everybody, that enables us to get 63 hunter. And it only took like 100 chinchampas. But now we can catch red chinchampas. And we're heading straight there. Funny enough, with this chinchampa right here, we've got 64 hunter. And for me, red chinchampas is gonna be the best chinchampa because no, I do not plan on going to find black chinchampas. That sounds dumb for a hardcore. <laughs> and you know, while we're focusing on Hunter, there's something I've never actually done in this game, but it's actually kind of funny. Snaring rabbits, super easy. All you need is ferrets, which you can high elk by the way. <laughs> but honestly all you gotta do is poke your little ferret into the hole a rabbit runs out and then it gets caught in a snare and you might be asking why the hell do you need rabbits rabbits feet my friend rabbits feet and the rabbits feet actually give an extra chance to be able to get eggs whenever you get a bird's nest out of birdhouse runs or even from you know chopping wood which is actually what i happen to do while i afk and edit videos so if i can do that just a little more efficiently you know i have to it was actually super easy to be able to get this rabbit's foot necklace i don't know why people don't do this more often maybe it's just because people want seeds instead of actual eggs 65 hunter and a total level of 1700 I've really got to stop clicking past these hunter levels. Seems like every time I see the pop-up, I'm already clicking my seeds. <laughs> and you can never forget about your weekly rune crafting grind. And honestly, in a couple more weeks, I'll be able to do some more quests. 
But really though, now we got a reason to go to Shades of Morton and get the split bark armors. So I always see people doing this as a burst task, so I figured I'd see how magic actually fares against these guys. And it's actually not that good, to be honest. So, after 77 magic, we were actually able to switch over to our full prayer gear. With like a plus 26 prayer bonus, I might add. We've got about 5 minutes of prayer time and 62 slayer. You gotta love it, everybody. 74 defense all on the same task. But I tell you what, everybody, if I get this task again, it's immediately going on the block list. This took almost a whole day for me. <laughs> well, no, it's not a lot of keys from that task, but you know what? I've been itching to open them. I don't know why I feel lucky. And you know, I really shouldn't after getting that. <laughs> but hey, 70k. I figure since we only had three keys to open, we can open up anything else that's worth opening in the bank. Just a couple of coins. No uniques for the beginners so far, but you know what? We don't have very many uniques to get. <laughs> All right, we got a white beret and, oh, that's a double. Okay, is it a double unique for the collection log? Yes, yes, thank you. All right, medium clues, what can you do? Oh, that's not a... I guess we already got that. Well, that's cool, though. <laughs> hey, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. Purple Sweets and the Mithril Kite Shield G. Last but not least, everybody. Oh, there we... Oh. Oh, I thought it was... Honest to God, I thought the staff was the unique. Not the Firelighters. <laughs> not the best opening, everybody. But you know what? I'm happy about it. Just a few episodes ago, we got to 75 attack, and it's finally time to make the arc light. You make this bad boy with three ancient shards and using the dark light on the altar here. I did go through the aberrant specters area, and you can see it may not have gone my way. But at least we didn't die, right? <laughs> Level 63 Slayer, I barely knew her. Black Demons is a hard test to turn down. They go down so quick, and there's a weapon specifically meant to kill them. So you might as well just go ahead and get those over with. <laughs> Catching me by surprise. Okay, that's a combat task. And a Corendon Kipos Area Diary Achievement. I probably should have came to these a lot sooner. But of course, number go up. Number go up. And number go down. We completed our worms task and we're almost to 30. What can we do for the next one? Of course it's going to be Dagonoths. Dagonoths is not the best task, but it's another one you just got to power through with 74 defense, of course. Pulling in 64 Slayer at the end of this Dagonoths task. Also giving us like 300 Slayer points, so I think I got some points to spend. And here's something I think everybody can agree with. The absolute best part of Konar Slayer is the fact she has keys to open up right next to her. So let's go ahead and open up these bad boys. See if we can actually get any uniques. Nope. No? Uh, still a no. Definitely don't need food. <laughs> Money, we're not on short supply. I'll, I'll take the seeds. And of course, we got some more iron. Who wants iron? All right, that kind of sucked. <laughs> but this one actually requires talent, everybody. I clicked past a wood cutting level. It literally waits for you until you say, hey, I'm done. You can click this. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just that ridiculous. So, uh, I thought we updated the desert. About that. <laughs> Seems pretty weird to have this black spot in the middle of the desert now. Well, what are we gonna chalk this up to, nostalgia? <laughs> <laughs> One more Hispori kill, number 36. Let's see if we can get anything from it. Huh? Oh, lily seeds. I don't think I've gotten those yet. I just wanna know 
who ripped off the dollar store puzzle product and thought, you know, we should bring this into the game. That's totally right. <laughs> All right, there we go. Runecrafting level 49. <laughs> hey, there we go. 68 herbal ore from a couple of mandatory prayer potions. And I can even use all these roots I've been collecting together. And we're gonna go ahead and craft up any of the mithril bars we got to get us level 69 smithing. And I'm not gonna say it, but maybe somebody will in the comments. <laughs> I tell you what, Mahogany Homes is one of the best ways that you could possibly train construction. And now I'm able to build the servant's money bag. My God, is my servant gonna be so happy. Oh, totally got the level when I tallied out. <laughs> That's level 59 construction as well. <laughs> there we go, everybody. Level 60 construction. And I don't know why I didn't start Mahogany Home sooner, because this is easy. Way easier than actually doing it in your own house. And apparently 60 construction unlocks like everything, so hell yeah. <laughs> 61 construction coming in really quickly. And somehow I was even able to move without canceling the uh, level up, so that's cool. 62 construction and a maximum of 27 rooms. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to even have that many. Oh shoot, that one snuck right up on me, level 63 construction. Ooh, and we can even make a marble fireplace. I know I'm going to throw that one in instantly. And a simple pet arena. I don't know, who do you think would win? I only got two pets right now. <laughs> and 64 construction, not even any time later. I'm just kidding, that was like an hour. Just my friendly reminder to do your bird runs. At 66 Hunter, we are now able to wear the most important gear that is tied to this skill, the spider cape. And that's a lot of run depletion saved. We're out here replenishing our teak plank supply and oh my god, I've already spent about a million on just trying to get some more teak planks and we still got 3,000 more to make. I think I need some more money, everybody. <laughs> well, I ran out of money, everybody. Only about 80k left and I'm probably going to need that for something that I'm not thinking about right now. <laughs> we made ourselves all the way up to 3,500 teak planks. And we've actually got so many more to go. But you know what? I'm gonna start back on Mahogany Homes and see where that takes us. And here we go. This level's gonna feel so good because we spent so many hours cutting wood just for it. <laughs> level 65 construction, everybody. Ob Oblict? And o o Let me know how to pronounce that down in the comments. <laughs> 66 construction we've only got one more left to go until we can build the lectern that'll actually let us build the home tab teleports <laughs> it'll make things so much easier well after 122 contracts everybody it's time i start cashing in a few rewards the first thing i'm gonna get is of course the plank sack okay i'm gonna drop a teeth blank and get the plank sack <laughs> New collection log item, of course, and let's go ahead and fill this all the way up. I wonder how many it can hold. Next thing on the list, we're definitely going to be getting the blueprint, saw, obviously the outfit. I'm going to see real quick if that's a collection log slot. Just one. I really hope it is, so that way I'm not wasting my money. Yes, thank God. <laughs> All right. Oh, six mahogany planks. I don't feel like that was worth it. <laughs> All right, on to the next contract. Well, somehow, everybody, I built this level up in my head so long, I skipped straight the hell past it. I don't know how. But we got 1725 total level, 25 more levels, and we can actually get one more exclusive world that we can go to. That's the 1750 worlds. All right. Well, I got a lot more construction to do. And why we did all of that construction, everybody, was so we can make the Mahogany Eagle Lecter. <laughs> of course, I grabbed teak planks. And here we go. Finally able to make this bad boy. And definitely the Eagle one, not the Demon one. The Demon one does a bunch of enchants for some reason. But now, we can finally make the House Tab Teleport. My god, Barrows is going to be so easy. <laughs> there we go. 
I just got myself a spirit seed out of this farm run. Thank and God. Whew. The last one died, by the way, so uh, we're definitely going to protect this one. <laughs> hey, level 75. Well, it's finally gonna happen, everybody. This hasn't happened for so many months, and I'm so happy it finally could. I'm about to be logged out after a six hour log. Not many of you know, <laughs> we just got 76 attack as well. But not many of you know, it's hard for me to stay consistently on the computer because there's so many things I gotta do during my day. And we got a fossil at the end. My gosh, what a very, very nice way to end this trip. I think it's gonna be over in the next minute or two. We got 76 attack, ah, 76 attack, 76 defense, 75 defense, and so many fossils. And I even got an easy clue. Usually I spend my time at Redwoods when I'm editing, but today I just thought we need some combat levels. Oh, this is a little bit weird. It let me go over the six hour mark. Maybe this timer's off or something, but Oh, there it is. <laughs> and here we go with 93 wood cutting. We only got a couple of levels left, about six more to go. All right, everybody, we're finally able to plant this spirit seed. So let's see if it's gonna go ahead and stick around. And we also gotta see what we gotta do to ensure this bad boy. Oh, I think I have to clear out the dead spirit tree in Port Serum. <laughs> All right, never mind. Well, there we go. 66 agility, and we just pretty much started. We only got a couple laps in, and what do you know? We can get to the Cosmic Temple. Finally, we can use the good shortcut. I actually noticed I was super close to a fletching level, so why not grab it while we're here? <laughs> 85 fletching. Oh, and we can make magic longbows. That is actually what we're going to be high elking pretty much from now on. Ah, okay. Yep. I do have to unlock it. And there goes our first lap of the Monkey Madness Agility Course. I don't know what it's called. It's probably Apatol. <laughs> but that's a hard task in the Western Provinces area, and I figured I'd lock that in with you guys. Oh yeah, we hurry up and made all four of the Monkey Talismans as well, so we can finally do Recipe for a Disaster. It has been a long time coming, everybody, but it's finally time that we finished recipe for disaster. We gotta get this out of the way. Get a better upgrade for our gloves and all that. And there's only one more guy after this. <laughs> and after a little bit of talking, he finally taught me the Apatol teleport with 10,000 cooking experience, 10,000 agility experience, and I got all three monkey grigris. So that way I can go to Apatol pretty much whenever I need. <laughs> Level 69 Herblore, everybody, from completing the Legends quest, and it's got quite a bit of dialogue to get through before I even see that quest completion screen. <laughs> but the anti-fire breath potions are going to come in clutch so much. And there it is, everybody, the Legends quest done is complete, and every single one of these XPs were put straight into Herblore. <laughs> Funny enough, the whole reason I did this quest was so I could do Recipe for a Disaster. Just got 64 crafting. It's pretty much the first thing I've done in the morning. <laughs> there we go, Slayer level 65. And we only got 36 Dagonoss left. Oh, I thought that was gonna be a level here, but it was a farming contract completed. <laughs> we finally got it in 87 farming, everybody. And man, we are just not unlocking anything. I swear to God, after you get 85 in a skill, you unlock things like once, maybe twice after that. And there it is, everybody, 19,000 experience in our first spirit tree. That's, that's quite the face on that bad boy. <laughs> but at least now we can use the uh, spirit tree to get to and from anywhere we need to go. It's Spory kill count number 37, and let's see if we can get, ah, unfortunately, no pet. <laughs> Hey, 79 magic in the middle. Well, not even the middle anymore. We're almost at the end of this bronze dragon task. Thank God, because I hate dragon tasks. But you know what? Six more kills and we're done. There we go. Took long enough, I might add, but we're finally done with this dragon task. Hey, level 77 defense. Finally got a slayer task that wasn't dragons. <laughs> it honestly took like skipping three or four times to make that happen though. And here's where we're gonna call it. 
that's the end of the episode and if you guys enjoyed please make sure to leave a like comment or subscribe and you know what before we go before we go I got a couple of things to open up, so let's go ahead and get to it. Beginners never usually uh, amount to anything, but we'll see if we can get one of the two uniques that we are missing. That's a no. <laughs> anything from, oh, no way. I got a medium clue scroll for easy clues. Nothing, unfortunate. And we don't have that much room, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the brimstone chest first. Ooh, okay, worth it, worth it. Not bad. Got, now I gotta run back to the bank and open these medium clues. All right, five medium clues to go. Wish me luck, everybody. Nice, we at least got one unique out of this whole thing. The armor page three. Oh, and a flippin' flippin' hills teleport. <laughs> but if you guys enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe, and I will see you all later.